No, it had to happen. It had to happen. <laughs> it had to happen. Oh, it was, this was eventually going to culminate to this anyway. It was going to happen. I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, uh, replication's flattery to me. It's like, so, I, I mean, I'm copying him in a certain way, but I am the Black Joe Doyle, so it is what it is. Um, I've come, I'm here to uh, talk about the noose and other stuff pertaining to the noose and stuff like that. Uh, and argue for Eastern Orthodoxy from a generic perspective whilst reviewing random films. Um, so let's get it, let's go. Anyway, uh, Sam, I've sent you the link. Uh, if you want to jump on, you can. Uh, <laughs> oh, it had to happen, it had to happen. I had to just steal from him. Um, the, the link is in the chat, Sam, if you want to. Uh, not the chat, sorry. It's in the um, uh, WhatsApp. Yeah, so basically today we're going to respond to um, uh, some random video where, that I did a few years ago. In fact, that was made of me when I was a cop for Soko Films. Um, back when I was an ecumenist myself, an ecumenist dog. Uh, and back when I drunk the cool age of ecumenism. Let's all be together and feel right uh, type of uh, nonsense. Uh, back when I was just an idiot uh, and didn't really know much. Although I was learning. I was learning. That's the thing. I was learning. Uh, I was asking questions and they didn't like it. The the agents upstairs didn't like it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm basically just going to be responding to or reviewing this video. Uh, obviously, the brother Sam Hisson or Ison. I keep calling him Hisson. I don't know why. The brother Sam Ison is supposed to be joining me. But it is what it is. Uh, we'll give him time. Uh, whilst we're doing that, anybody who's got any comments, I'll respond to them straight away. You know how it is. You know how it is, Bridget. Um, yeah, I, I am the Black Jade Oil, um, even though I, I don't really care about his apologetics or anything he has to say because he's a small fox. And uh, there was some video, in fact, in fact, I'm going to show you this. Um, <laughs> uh, there was some video on his channel, which I might respond to, actually, because I, I find it hilarious when East and Orthodox try and make a case for veneration to saints in any sort of way. Um, I'm not a dire fan. I just uh, find this quite hilarious. Uh, so if you see here... Um, why is my stream not showing it? Sorry. If you see here, right, <laughs> what you're going to have is my man's wearing some chips on his head. I don't know. <laughs> Where is this? <laughs> Greetings, primitive humans. I'm with your whole blood. I come to you. <laughs> what the? Wait, what? Okay. That's, uh, yeah, that's that's typically the content of the East North Look. I'll put your block on something. Um, Okay, so yeah, what's the basis for veneration of Saint Mary into Saint of the Saints? So he's going to do this whole argument. He's looking like Snoop Dogg in here, actually. Um, All right, today we're going to do something a little different. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about headpiece. Look at my head, it's my shot. But like, my man's just going for that whole Cesare Borgia look. Like one of he looks like one of the icons in his church. But it's what it is. Um, but yeah, that's that's literally the flow. You give me <laughs> that, that's the flow. <laughs> That's the flow. That's what's going on nowadays. Like, man's, man's wearing some long 
hair looking like somebody's poop. Um, but that, yeah, that intro was hilarious. I remember when I was a Dyer fan, that was one of those intros that would just, that would get, you know, it's sort of eye-catching as well. Um, let me get off of this, actually. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, first of all, the House of Satan, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the House of Satan is everywhere. If you call the House of Satan Christianity solely, what do you then do with atheists, Hindus, Buddhists, um, Satanists? Um, the list goes on. What do you do with all of these other individuals who follow a religion and they deny it's not? What do you do with that? I mean, come in there saying, let the House of Satan be divided. First of all, first of all we're not ha divided against each other. We're not in the same group. There's the humanists that say we're in the same group. And idiots like you who don't know church tradition or even the Bible, uh, who come here and straw man and think numbers 31 means rape because you're retarded. Uh, that, that, that's what you guys think, unfortunately, but that's just not what Christianity teaches at all. But when you have an in-depth understanding of Christianity, uh, you generally come to the conclusion, no, this does not teach veneration of saints or prayer to Mary. So they have to do typological referencing, and that's what Jay Dye does in these stupid videos, because they can't find it here. Um, they can't do it here. They have to play semantics to even get it. Uh, but me, I think God can communicate, um, and he can communicate soundly, in fact, what he wishes for us to do. And I don't think we're as illiterate as people think we are. But, <laughs> I mean, he was, isn't it? Um, so let me play the video, because Sam's coming now anyway. Uh, might as well just run through it. And here's hey, Josh. Hey, Somebody, hey, Josh. Hey, Any hey, message to, uh, to Paperboy, by the way? Well, I'm hoping he'll turn up. If he does, we can, uh, we can have a debate. How about the bait? That's good. How are you, though, Josh? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. You just got here? Yeah. What actually happened to Josh, by the way? Does anybody know? I haven't seen him for like a year, year and a half. Uh, last time I spoke to him, uh, he was acting a damn fool over like Isaiah 53. Uh, and that's, that, that's literally the last time I actually spoke to him. I've not seen him in a while. Um, uh, yeah, I'll speak to you in a bit, Kane. Um, I haven't seen him more, so if anybody knows his whereabouts, let me know. In fact, I want him, I want him on the stream because I do want to do some sort of uh, a Jewish Christian dialogue, not interfaith dialogue like the stupid papers say, but like actual discussion on the topic. Um, I mean, we, we, we were here earlier and then we went to the demonstration. Oh, okay, the okay. I just got here as well. And then we came back. Yeah. Well, he's a family. How are you doing, man? Oh, yeah, man, sorry, I had some technical difficulties, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you only got your phone now, on it? So I was, I was thinking, about, yeah, that was the thing. You'd have to just like, deal with that, man. I, I don't know. I don't my know. No, my phone's set like private mode kind of thing. So I had to remember my passwords and stuff. And um, let's be honest, none of us do that, do we? <laughs> oh, fair. yeah, yeah. That's the thing I don't remember. But I just, I typically have the same password for everything, which is kind of dumb because, I mean, once somebody gets the same password, that's it. All my accounts are <laughs> done. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. Did you, they, they, did you, see you literally intro? just, you literally just started it. Yeah, you didn't see the intro, did you? No, man, I didn't see. <laughs> I didn't see. Ripped off Jay Dyer, man. <laughs> just ripped off Jay Dyer. <laughs> just literally ripped him off. <laughs> oh, look, at, oh, look, at, look, at, look at me with the blonde highlights, like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you with the blonde highlights. Oh man, that. <laughs> This is what I mean. You do look don't good, ask, though. I mean, no homo, no homo. Don't, don't, don't ask what was going on there. <laughs> well, I even, I, even I don't know. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to see me with some clips in my hair. And I, even I don't know why I put clips in my hair, but I did. <laughs> but yeah, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a, let's have a look then. <laughs> oh, stupid bloody mice. Mouse. mice. You, you, you're welcome to the two quid, JC. Off, <laughs> JC! <laughs> there he is. Like the you look cool, bro. <laughs> That's it, man. <laughs> so, I, actually, I asked him to come with me on my hair. I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. no. Bill. That is Ben Bill. Ben Bill. The great oh, himself, uh, Ben Bill. Oh, he's he's a, is he actually in this? Oh, I didn't yeah, realize he was in this video. It's actually interesting because I think he was having a conversation with somebody else, and yet I still outgunned both of you, even while he was there and unable to. Speak. No, but I'm pretty sure this was mainly between me, you, and Michael, though, wasn't it? I think he buggered off yeah, and did yeah, something was. else. I was trying to get Ben to speak to me. Actually, that's the funny thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 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 yeah you were good. you were you were gunning for him back then. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to save a friend, man. Come on, here's what it, here's what it is. I'm relentless yeah. like that. 
Tell me why you go by him. It has taken. Oh, Josh, the Jew. Add me on YouTube. Why you subscribe? Don't subscribe. To JC. Yeah, those are Catholic. We don't like those people. Yeah. <laughs> my guy, listen, this is what I mean. This is what I'm talking about right here. My guy, Jono. Uh, uh, like we, we were a bit more naive at this point. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, but just, just don't. Yeah, don't subscribe. We don't, to we, 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 did, we didn't. We didn't know the things that we do now. Let's put it like that. Yeah. Catholic. I was standing not next to one of the guys from DCI. Yeah. You look cool, though. With with a random chat. Yeah. And he goes, "Well, you don't really, because you're wrong with Catholic." I said, "I didn't do." Yeah. I, I, I wasn't intervening. I said, well, fine, you're right. I oh, my memory's come back to me now. To say, he's a disciple of Christ, I'm a disciple Sorry, again, sorry, again, sorry. My, my, memory's come, my memory's come back now. So so what me and Michael orish, originally approached Bob about here was is the previous time we'd been to Speaker's Corner, Bob really had a crack at like me and Michael especially um, because we had a go at, do you know like that guy, Pastor John, you know, you know him? Oh yeah, I know you're talking about John Sherwood. Yeah, John yeah, Sherwood. yeah, John Sherwood. Yeah, yeah. Know, we, we 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 had a real go at him because um, you know, you know, un unprovoked from like myself and uh, Michael and such. Um, he just started just preaching about how Catholics were heretics, and so we were like, "Oh, it's like that, is it?" So you know, we started having a crack at him, and uh, Bob called us sectarian later in the pub and stuff. And so when we saw him this time, we were like, "Nah, if people are going to be like that to us. We're gonna we're gonna." fire back sort of thing you know what i mean like um i'm just saying my memory's coming back to me now what happened uh, this day no 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 i understand like yeah i mean like, to, to respond to somebody in the chat so get up again i don't know who you are okay so you've got a youtube username that, that wasn't a name you addressed me by so obviously i don't know that name you're saying i'm scared of a real debate and i didn't want to deb you run so you're saying i run away first of all the only people call me blood fire are muslims and and ecumenists i'm not scared to debate anybody uh, I have no fear of debating anybody. That's why I went to Speaker's Corner for four years. And um, you're you're entitled to come up on the stream. I've sent a link in there. If you want to come up and be a big boy, jump up on the stream. But obviously, we're going to respond into this video right now. So you've got to wait a bit. This is, is more like a this, this. This is less of responding and more just us having a laugh. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's more of a laugh, man. Now, I'm not responding, but you know what I mean. Like I'm gonna obviously have my oar in. Uh, and just give my uh, two cents because Bob's going to say some nonsensical nonsense uh, later on. But let's let's keep going. Let's keep no, going. Oh um, no, he is for definite. Yeah, Bob White nonsense. Well, 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 we do not believe yeah. in the same. Oh, the Protestants. The Protestants yeah. said, "Well, no, yeah, you're right." He said, "No, you disagree. You're not." Yeah. Right. And I said, "Why?" Yeah, but let the sectarianists expose themselves. Yeah, and I really isn't sectarianism yeah. to claim that Vatican II, the doctrines of Vatican One, and the doctrines of Trent are completely. Against the doctrines of the Vatican, the, Vatican, the, yeah, the London Baptist Vatican, 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 Vatican II, Vatican II, Vatican II was a pastoral council. No, it was not. <laughs> no, it was not. No, no, <laughs> no, it was a whole ecumenical council in which the Pope of deep deemed infallibly the doctrines of Rome. I mean, that was that was Vatican II in the 1960s. It was a convening of the entire church, like under the, the supposed magisterium, right? And it was deemed infallible by um, certain decrees. It's, it's, it's a decree of the church. It is definitely not just some pastoral. I mean, come off of it, Bob. Come no, no, no. It's like that's also actually an excuse given quite a lot by the likes of Trent Horn, for example, or like Michael yeah. Lofton, you know, like um, so that they don't feel as bad about some of the statements that Vatican II makes. But I just actually want to ask you now, because like at this point, at this point, I was no Bobite particularly or a Cunimist, as you can probably tell, I wasn't. Where were you at? Where were you at at this point? Because you clearly had it in for Roman Catholicism a bit, but you also kind of didn't. Does that make sense? I'm just wondering where you were at. So I, as I told you before, my story was that I started off reading the Bible and that got me the Christian God. So when I read the Bible, of course, and then when I learned more about the uh, arguments pertaining to Eastern Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism, even though I wasn't very great back then, um, I knew that there was clearly a difference. I knew that, that Rome had taught dogmatic things that were not in the Bible. And I knew that was a problem. Uh, so at that moment in time, I was like, I wouldn't say, I would still say I was a Cunist because I thought Catholics were Christian, but... In my mind, I was slowly thinking something's not right here. Um, 
Uh, I didn't like, realize really that that ecumenism within me was the in fact enemy that I had said to be against. <laughs> you, you, yeah. were, you were like you were like only just an ecumenist. You could only just yeah. look at people like me and Michael as Christians, but you kind of weren't really looking at us like Christians then. I know you've told me that, but I, but I thought everyone else would find that interesting because you're at a weird point in that in your kind of walk at this point, aren't you? If you don't, yeah, know. yeah, it was it was kind of that. It was like I knew the Holy Spirit was like telling me look this is not right and um that's the the bible as an authority does not claim these things and that's the most important thing if we hold the bible as our standard for rule and doctrine then it's easy to see that anything that does conform with it goes completely out of whack and that was the issue i had at that time um get up again um uh, first of all i'm not 17 i mean i haven't been 17 for a while but thank you um i'm glad you think i'm younger than i am Take it as a yeah, compliment. Yeah, it is a compliment. Like, seriously, if I was 17 again, trust me, I love it, man. I'll do a lot of things, but yeah. Um, my name's not Bloodfire either. Um, I, I don't know what arguments you're trying to make. You have the link there. Come on the stream, and then I can debunk your stupid Israelitism. If you're a black Hebrew Israelite, know that I've never run from you in my entire life. When I first went to the park, and this was before this video was filmed, I debated Hebrew Israelites. It's on my channel, on my other channel. Uh, called Jono. So you can see that. I, I don't have time for you black Hebrew Israelites and your nonsense, man. Grow up. Oh, you're a Muslim? That's <laughs> even worse then. You don't know what the Bible is then. Well, then jump up, dude. Defend your Islamic nonsense. Come on. I've sent you the link there. I'm going to send it again. Jump up. Defend why this, this prophet you worship, uh, Fondle Children, um, was evidently the, the worst false prophet in mankind when he talked about, obviously, um, the sperm and the ribs attaching from uh, the backbone and creating human life. I, I mean, come on. Uh, prove all of this stuff. Prove to me that the Quran is actually from Allah and not from a demon. Um, come on, jump on. Um, but yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah let's keep going, man. Yeah, but it was a, it wasn't on doctrine. Apparently, apparently, but it wasn't on doctrine. It literally was on doctrine. That's the whole Catholic catechism. Literally doctrine. <laughs> what the church <laughs> teaches about catechesis means teaching is what the church teaches about doctrine. And this, this goes to show that Bob really doesn't know what he's talking about. Go on. He speak, he speak. You know, he is speaking incredibly ignorant here. In fact, uh, here we go. Like that's my old catechism there. I haven't pulled it out for a while, but like, um, but basically, it's like it, in here are the statements of Vatican II in regards to Protestants and like Jews and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, so mm. it clearly was. So if it's added to the catechism, it's doctrine. It's that simple. Like, yeah, I mean, mm. there are some things. There are some things in some of the councils which, uh, like, there are some statements from Vatican I, some statements from Vatican II which are not in the catechisms because they are, they are more pastoral things. But mm. but like the majority of those councils are in are in the catechism, and if they make it into the catechism, their doctrine it's that simple. Yeah, they, they are doctrine. Here's the thing, right? Even the Catholic catechism and the Vatican one as well will state that the the councils must be followed. So from Nicaea all the way up to Trollo, like these councils must be followed, and then further on, if you get to the Council of Florence, and then obviously Trent. So that, that all of those things must be adhered to. Like you can't go against those councils, although there there are councils that the Catholic Church will deny, like Hiera and Elvira and stuff like that, simply because they don't meet their, their form of doctrine. But yeah. <laughs> yeah but like, but like really... to give you an example, to give you an example though of what like something more pastoral would be, it would be like in Vatican II, it is referenced about how the Catholic the, the Catholic faithful are encouraged to pray the rosary each day. But that was as a result of the whole Lady of Fatima thing. And that have, mm. happened after Vatican I. But that wasn't a like decree of the church. It was more of like, we really recommend that you do this. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, but if you don't want to do it, you don't have to kind of thing. So that's an example of like a genuine pastoral thing that the church can put forward. I'm sorry, this reminds me of that meme. Where, <laughs> you know, on the screen, you and Michael, Michael's face just reminds me of that meme. What I've got to get this meme one minute. I have to find there was a meme with like the green goblin. How dare you? Don't you dare uh, throw me into a meme. Don't you dare. Don't no, you it's, it's hilarious. I have to do this. There's a meme with the green goblin, rhino, the rhino, and I think it's uh, another uh, villain. There's a there's a villain meme. And it, it just the way you're both looking into the camera is the oh we got. I'm, I we think got I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm looking at Bob in this scenario. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I was not aware that JC was filming this. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I think my I think 
really? Really? You went there? All right, fine. <laughs> it has to. It has to. That is mud. All, all, is... all, I, all I want to know is, can I be the one on the left? I don't want to be either of the goblins, that's all. <laughs> oh, you don't want to be the goblin? Oh, fair enough. Oh, yeah. So I don't, that's, want, that's to be... I don't want to be the goblin. I don't want to be the yeah. I'll be the vulture. I'd rather be the vulture than the goblin. <laughs> that is uncanny, though. That is, I'm sorry. That is a, just 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 take it in for a second. That is a uh, you got this. I, did, I didn't expect to come on here and get roasted. Like, come on, yeah, man. you're getting roasted, man. It is what it is, man. You shouldn't. <laughs> Uh, oh man, that is quite funny though. I did that anyway. It's pretty sure I pipe up at Bob at this point. Yeah, it was a pastoral council, it wasn't on doctrine, it wasn't passing judgment on doctrine, it was passing judgment on how you so, pastor the church. So, even with the Catholic Catechism, you talk about St. Crabtus on the Bishop of Rome, and I say, tends to the Protestant and the different religion, but would you say it was well, well, no, 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 these, these, these things obviously don't agree, but do do Protestants seek to be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, do Catholics seek to be disciples oh, yeah, of our Lord yeah, Jesus Christ? Yeah, yes, of course. So, like, so, what I'm saying is, we've, we've got that's arbitrary, though, because to be a disciple presupposes. A bunch of commandments, a bunch of teachings, a, a way of life. I mean, what kind yeah, of argument is this? I mean, yeah, first does. of all, so do the Mormons. They seek to be a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, but they don't have that same law. So that, this and, is and, <laughs> and, and Jehovah's Witnesses as well. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> this I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you caught something that Michael said, but it's actually quite true. Um, with each with it with each pope, the, a new catechism is released. So, mm. like. With the ordination of a new pope, there will always be a new catechism published. Um, like I thought, I'd just point that out because that's actually quite true, and that actually confirms, say, that Vatican II, for example, was a genuine ecumenical council because yeah. all the pope because all the popes after Vatican II affirmed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally affirmed that council. This is the hilarious thing. Oh, yeah, by the way, you, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see I've got clips in my hair. Now, I, I don't know what that is. And, I, you know, like, just to uh, poke fun at myself, because there's somebody in the chat just being a troll, which I don't mind. I don't care what you think about me, because that's irrelevant. Um, I'm not talking about you, Sam. I'm talking about a guy in the chat. Uh, but it, this this <laughs> whole jumper, right, uh, it, it was a 2XL. That would that was very loose on me back then. It's no longer loose on me anymore. By the grace of God, <laughs> <laughs> well, all I'm going to say is, all I'm going to say is, you have clips in your hair, and I have blonde hair. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Don't we know would make thing. a great pop band. I'm not gonna lie, we would make a great pop band. It's a pop band that never was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just, we're just, we're just throw, we're just throw Ben in the mix for good measure. <laughs> ben on drums. It could be Jono and the Catholics. Ben on drums, man. Uh. <laughs> well, right. you, you were, you were nearly. You, this was a point where you were kind of considering Eastern Orthodoxy as well. So it would have been an. Yeah. A, p a potential Eastern Orthodox and two Catholics. <laughs> yeah, a potential Eastern Orthodoxy until I found out about that whole heterodox spread to various stuff and the weird told houses. But yeah, uh, let's go. Let's do this because I, I want to really get this. To uh, ascribe to these differences their relative value. Mm. And, and, and the, the differences are not worth fighting about, especially, especially when we have this such a well organized, well funded Dawa initiative. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Like, so we should, we should measure up to our, our opponents. Like, it's always it the common enemy argument. The isn't it? Yeah, it's always the that's the argument he always uses the common common enemy argument, and it just doesn't fundamentally work. Why should we? And this is the question Anthony Rogers asks Bob on the live stream on ecumenism. Why should we be um, aligned with each other theologically, or consider each other to be um, theologically aligned, or to be Christians? I'm talking about each opposing side. Why should we consider each other to be Christians and to be part of the same religion and yet somehow um, uh, share, a, not share a common enemy? For example, his argument is basically that, oh, like, we should put our differences aside uh, and just em embrace an attack on a common enemy. But he wants us also to reject the primary concerns we have for each other's doctrines, um, like prayers to saints, prayers to Mary, Vatican II. Um, he wants us to ignore these things and just simply go after the Dawa initiative. But that's not what Christianity is. And why should we? Why should I um, accept a Catholic um, as a brother in Christ simply for the sake of going after a random name Muslim? It makes no logical sense. Rather, we, we don't even need to do that. I can still, of course, 
align with a Catholic in this view, um, in terms of uh, the the um, Muslims must be um, evangelized too. But yet we have a different initiative, and I believe that the Catholic should be evangelized too. I don't see a problem with that. Why should Never we be do. aligned theologically for that to happen? That doesn't make any sense to me. No, um, do I? I just I just spotted something. Let me just about see it on my neck. I'm not sure if you remember. I used to wear this quite a lot. Oh like, yeah, I remember uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, like um, I still got it to this day because a friend gave it to me who's who's not uh, not with us anymore. So I'll, I'll keep it till the day I die. King but, James like, 1611. Uh, that's all I'm saying. King James 1611. Because <laughs> 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 you know, you know, um, I, I actually added to this rosary when I became a, actually became a Catholic. I've had this since I was like 16 years old or something. And I wasn't even a Christian of any description at that point in my life. I stuck in like a little... Yeah. A little, a little charm of uh, Saint Benedict on it, and there's a little—you can't really see it, but it's like a little blue sort of stone of. Uh, of Let's Mary. full screen that. Oh yeah, you like, can see, see it's that. a little stone, little stone. You can barely, you'll barely be able to make it out, but it's it's basically Mary in it, and uh, that one is Saint <laughs> wow. Benedict, and that one is Saint Take Benedict. Take that cursive in, uh, invocation off of my screen. So <laughs> we are Protestants here. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's a part of our history, though, isn't it? Well, part of my history, anyway. Yeah. Your history ain't mine. Ain't my history. My history's the Bible. Mine, my history involves this bloody thing as well. So you know. <laughs> oh, uh, sola scriptura, mate. Sola scriptura, right? Well, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm obviously sola scriptura now, but at the time, yeah, yeah, I, I know. know. <laughs> and this is also my history you know what i mean i've been reading this actually right this is also my history by the way uh, this yeah. calvin oh you've put yeah. a post-it note in it look he's becoming yes, it's, it's beginning it's beginning <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. i'm just curious did you have a look at chapter uh chapter 21 in book three the one oh, I chapter, yeah, yeah 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 so i'm i'm beginning through that i only just started today because i told you i had to do other things but yeah, I'm getting into that. There are a lot of interesting points he's making in there, and I do want to really get because so, I want to make notes as well and just like really have my mind just let, indulge let, what he's saying. Let me put it like this Cal Calvin's logic in that chapter is solid. It is solid. Yeah. You can disagree with him, but you kind of can't argue with the conclusions that he draws. Does that make sense? Hmm. Hmm. Like, right. like uh, you can disagree with him on it, though. Like, like there's room for disagreement for sure, but the. <laughs> But the logic he uses is very solid. Yeah. I think once we get into like things like preordination, predestination, the preeminence of God, these, these are hard topics. Even Calvin opens it up by saying, yeah, these are hard topics. He doesn't use that, that terminology, but he's, he does say these things are hard to discern. Uh, and sometimes the even enemies of this position don't really understand what they're arguing against. And I, I, that's why I find one of the biggest defeaters, for me personally, for the Armenian position, uh, is, is simply the case that in their position, it would lead to God ever learning, um, really. Uh, whether it be a minutia of detail, God is ever learning something because you're making a decision in real time. God is ever learning whatever decision you're making. He's giving those two decisions. That's fine. That's not a problem. But he's ever learning which decision. So in that moment of time, you can choose A or B. He doesn't know whether you're going to choose A or B. That's the point. Um, yeah. And this, it's this a, for me... He argues he against that a lot, Calvin. He argues against that a lot. Like, he doesn't use the phrase ever learning, but he basically yeah. just says God, either God is sovereign or God isn't. Like, there's just no in between. Exactly. Exactly. Like, um, that's what he does basically say. Anyway... Um, let's, let, see let me just, paper, just, let's see what other papery I get up to. <laughs> there's a lot of papery on here and papery and all sorts of madness. Papers, devils, both of you know, were there. Now you're enlightened by the Lord. I love it. Um, <laughs> Nello, if you want to start your own church of your own flock and want to pontificate on YouTube, the thing you need to do is discredit the real thing. Well, first of all, we're not starting on a church. The church is based upon the Bible because the Bible is the blueprint of the church. What we have is the apostolic tradition telling us what the church is. Uh, and nobody's here stated we tried our own church. That's a meme you guys on your side love to perpetuate. Actually defend your side. Um, if you want Eastern Orthodox, then Jay Dyer does the same thing. <laughs> Look at the ecumenical talks in Russia uh, between the, uh, the papists and your own fathers in Russia. Your, guy, your guy's church is already schismatic. You can't even come here and attack us. Um, and no, we're not protesting anything. In fact, what we're protesting is the errors of Rome and the errors of the East. But we're not protesting Christianity because Christianity has always fundamentally been 
based upon the scriptures. Nobody's denied that. And for hundreds of years of church fathers, you just don't get the papal structure. You don't get Eastern Orthodoxy in any form, way, shape, or form. And that's why I'm going to respond maybe in the future to Jay Dye's video where he butchers the Bible and the fathers, because <laughs> that, that would be funny to respond there's to. There's a few. There's a few of them videos. To be fair, so you'll have a lot to pick from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be spoiled for choice. But <laughs> I'll be a fat kid in a candy store. But I mean, yeah, I won't beat. Right, I am. Right. <laughs> I, feel, I, I, I was about I was about to say it, aren't you already? But anyways, uh <laughs> I mean, this, this, is was, like, this, is, this is this is like a roasting session, this live stream. It's actually quite funny. But uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I want to see because uh, I know I I know I say something to Bob at this moment, but I'm not sure what I say to him anymore. Like I say yeah, something uh, I say something popish to him. <laughs> Some popish nonsense and gold. If, if the whole of England became Catholic, Protestants would suffer for that. And it's unlikely today that if the, the whole of England became Protestant again, that Catholics would suffer for that. But one thing we can be certain of is if the UK became Muslim, we would all suffer for that. And so it's about recognizing what are your actual threats. I mean, just, just, just propose a bit. So, yeah, we would suffer for that because the gospel would not be preached, um, and schismatics and us will be cut. We would have our heads cut off by the Jesuit order, and we would have to go back to Latin. I mean, we would <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so much assumptions in the argument. Oh, like if, if Roman Catholics came, if they became the uppermost, we would suffer. We would suffer greatly. So would the gospel. The true gospel of Christ would not be preached, and therefore people would not know that they would know Mary and I mean, idolatry. I mean, worship. I mean, there um, is a there is a history casing point for this, and it's when you had the time of the Puritans, and then after that, the time of the Catholics in England. You know, John Bunyan, for example, got thrown into prison for preaching the gospel, didn't he? That's when he wrote Pilgrim's Progress. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? So we do have a casing point for it because we had, uh, you know, the years under Oliver Cromwell, where to be fair, you know, like not going to defend, not particularly going to defend Cromwell for this one. But, <clears throat> you know, he rounded up and killed loads of Catholics. But then likewise, when the Catholics got back in power, they did the same to the Protestants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It, it's 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 a history of bloodshed and bloodshed. Then you just have to read things like Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, for example, the Reformation in England by J. H. Mill, the Aubergine. I've got it here amongst my pile of books because I've got a pile of books here. I've had to remove my bookcase, by the way, uh, because it just kept on falling. But it's, it's uh, not predestined this... to fall this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe i don't know but i mean yeah so the reformation in england this one is the first book i've not read this book to be fair i need to get delve into it but that's volume two but i think that just goes into calvin and john knox and stuff like that from what i can remember but i would suggest getting this i mean for anybody uh obviously i think you already ordered it sam but for anybody who wants a deep understanding of the reformation of england like you'll find here quotes from fox's book of martyrs uh this is by jh mill the aubergine should be here yeah J.H. Mill de Aubergine. Um, and it's called the Reformation in England. And what, what you find consistently throughout this book is just Catholics making it really hard for Protestants. John Wycliffe, for example, him his being exiled. Um, and I mean, you're finding a load of stuff as well. Um, John, obviously, the inception. John Knox the... had it quite rough up in Scotland as well, trying to yeah. reform the church up there. Like, um, he was quite yeah. uh, persecuted and all that. Like, he fought through it and he did an amazing job reforming the church in Scotland, but amazing but job. like but like uh, it wasn't like it was easy for him. Yeah, it, it wasn't easy, and that's the thing. But when you actually read through this, you find it, it, it's a consistent thing that the Roman Catholics were, yeah, they were anti-Protestants to the max. And then don't don't even get us started on the Jesuit order, which says literally to slay, flay, kill Protestant women and children. And that's an open order. Although I I don't know, look, I'm not gonna claim to know the veracity of the document. Uh, but it's there, everybody can see it, and I don't deny the history of it. It's just bas basically historic. And if you look at the fruits of what Roman Catholicism, Catholicism was um, during the Reformation, yeah, they did do that. They flayed, slayed Protestants. They did all of that stuff. That's common knowledge. Um, actually, so one, what, of the biggest, what do? one of the biggest fruits, actually, of the Catholics in the Reformation is Luther. And the reason why mm. I say that is because you know, <clears throat> to explain the Reformation, you have obviously Luther, Zwingli, and Calvin. They're the three. They're the three main ones. Um, 
it's fair to say that Swindley and also Calvin had no intention of reforming the church from within. They they just wanted to start again. But Luther was the opposite. Luther Luther really wanted to just reform what he saw as fixable errors in the church. And I think he would have remained in the Catholic Church if the church listened to him. If they actually listened to him and took him seriously, there's a very high chance Luther would have stayed as a Catholic because he was a he was a very watered down Catholic in a lot of ways. He was, yeah. I mean? like, he was, but yeah. the more but the more that the the more that uh, the church kind of you know rejected Luther and didn't listen to him, the more <laughs> the more he bit back. Like. Um, hmm. His 95 thesis, for example, if you look it up, it's it's mainly about the sale of indulgences. <clears throat> he doesn't really have a go at things like the Marian apparitions. He has a go at the current pope, but he doesn't really seem to have a go at the papacy as an idea. Do you know what I mean? Like um, yeah. that sort of thing. But the more that he gets ignored and the more that he kind of gets persecuted, he, that's when he really starts to go gung ho and realize that the church isn't worth saving. That's when he starts to realize. But my yeah. point is, that you, but you can see what I'm trying to say. I'll, I'll, Swindley, yeah. and Cal, Swindley and Calvin very much intended to break off in the church. They intended to do that. That was never. Yeah, that, that was intention. definitely their intention. Yeah. That, so that that was, never Luther's. Never Luther's. What you there. find, what you find amongst the magisterial Protestants, um, although they're they're much later than let's say Luther or something, you you find that it's yeah, it's typical. They wanted to break sort of loose, but they they were still ecumenical and then when you when you get the radical reformers like much later like so the puritans like then you get like proper just anything catholic needs to be burned but like there's this obvious like mid and i think that's what you find like this midsection which is like luther uh swingley um uh even like martin chemnitz to an extent i've not read the entire of his uh have you read his book on the council of trent the examination i have I, I haven't to be very honest yeah, I, I've read some of that because I've got a PDF of it online. I'm gonna to have to send that to you, in fact, if I can from a bloody phone. But yeah, no, it's 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 all right. He does quote the fathers a lot, but yeah, he sort of again he has the same sort of ideas as Luther, but he sort of breaks away from that the, the popish traditions a lot in his writings. Um, I'm gonna wait, Nello. First of all, I've seen something you've commented there. If you want to start, it was, no, that wasn't it. Sorry, I saw something else. We've already seen that one, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, you've already seen that one. That one go <laughs> I'm going to see you now in my old age. Um, let me put this on my book, actually. Yeah, that'll be better. God, I'm, only um, one year, a young, I'm only one year younger than you. Am I going to go see you now next year? <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just going to say this, mate. It's going to be a rough year, mate. Oh, 2025, no. my friend. Yeah, <laughs> Nello seventy seven. When you interpret the Bible, are you infallible? If not, how do you know that you're interpreting correctly? Since you Protestants all disagree, because a disagreement doesn't deny the veracity of the text. If Jesus speaks and says, "Eat my flesh and drink my blood," in John six, and his disciples determine that as following him because he has the he has the words of all life, as Peter says to him in that very same chapter, we don't have to um, infer that um, you have to be somehow infallible to interpret what Jesus is saying. Um, God can communicate. What you say in your church is, is God can, ne by necessity, not communicate. And he's relying upon some papal structure or magisterium if you're a um, Eastern Orthodox. We don't believe that a magisterium determines why it's conduct. A magisterium or a collection of men is just that. It's a collection of men. Men are not infallible. And nobody makes that statement. Even we want to make that statement. But we stake that holistic view of the Bible gets you, so the scripture off. It gets you the doctrines of grace. Faith alone, by grace alone, in Christ alone. It does not get you veneration of the saints, prayers to Mary. That's a holistic view. If you take into account what the scriptures say, you come out with that very specific thing. And the Bible tells us where to, how to pray, for example, Matthew 6, for example. Um, we're told like how to pray and who to pray to. We're not, we're not told uh, by any uh, author of the Catholic epistles or by Jesus Christ himself to pray any other way. And then we've got the Old Testament as our benchmark or canon. So well, you're, you're not pray, you're not told to pray this, are you? So, you know. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say pray the rosary and say Hail Mary a bunch of times. So it doesn't say that at all. Hail do Mary is know, a greeting. Do you actually know how many Hail Marys there are in a rosary? No, not off the top of my head, no. <laughs> 56. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but anyways to add to to add to this one thing you'll notice actually if you look at all the protestant traditions especially the ones that came straight out of the reformation the ones like the presbyterians the dutch reformed the swiss reformed uh the lutherans yeah they had some like 
practice differences and they did believe some things which were slightly different in regards to things like the Lord's Supper, like fricking Martin Luther, fricking heck, uh, <laughs> is means is. But anyways, um, but anyways, uh, the, the one thing that unified them all was the five solars. That's the one thing that unified them all. They fundamentally believed you got saved the same way and that you interpreted the faith the same way. Like um, they just ended mm. up with some slightly different views on things like the Eucharist or like when I say baptism, they don't actually have any different views on what baptism is. It was just more, is it infants? Is it adults? That's more mm. what the difference was. But they didn't. Yeah, that's just the difference. Yeah. But apart from the Lutherans, they're the odd one out. But but yeah. but generally, but generally speaking, all Protestants have always agreed on what baptism does. It was just more who gets it. Is it is it an infant or an adult? But but either which way, the baptism still does the same thing. Yeah, and like the, the assumption being made a lot of the time is there's various de denominations. There's only really ten, because if you take into account, of course, the what certain Protestant churches think, because what the Catholics in Eastern Orthodox do is they will cite the First Baptist Church of this, the Second Baptist, and they will assume that all of a sudden, all of, because these are not in communion with each other, because they're not um, directly in a communion communion with each other, that doesn't mean they share the same doctrine, but. It, Maybe it does. You don't know. Uh, what we find, in fact, is that majority of Protestants agree on the fundamentals that we agree on. That is by faith alone, by grace alone, in Christ alone, and that's like the scriptures are the sole infallible rule of faith. Um, where the difference is, of course, is how one determines things like providence of God, how one determines the Eucharist, um, for example, um, and of course baptism stuff like that. that these are the three things that you'd find um, we'd have differences in. Uh, but generally speaking, Protestants have an agreement about how one should determine what Scripture states um, on on the topics pertaining to grace, salvation by faith alone, uh, through grace alone in Christ alone, and of course, um, so is scriptura. But again, you're assuming Protestant as if it's a um, church. We don't deem Protestantism as a church. No, because again, when you examine the fundamentals of the gospel, which the Bible gives us clear credence to do so, and you take a holistic interpretation of the Bible, well, we're told, yes, by faith alone, through grace alone, in Christ alone. You can't lose your salvation, according to the Bible. That's made evidently clear. Um, first of all, saying that's an assertion, I need your hum hermeneutical principle. Well, where's your hermeneutical principle for prayers to saints? Can you show me that? Or veneration of Mary? Can you show me that? Because all of these things are assumed in the text. Again, you're, you're coming with a presupposition. That's fine. You can do whatever you want. But you're not actually backing up the statements you're making. Uh, secondly, a, hermene uh, sorry, a hermeneutic principle does not decide um, which interpretation is right. It's just a principle. Um, you may have a different hermeneutical principle than I do. Uh, that doesn't mean your interpretation is right. Again, I'm stating that a holistic view of the text uh, of the Bible gets you the hermeneutical principle. That's where it gets you. So if you can find holistically in this book, essentially what you're teaching, then you have right of way. We're not, there's no confusion. The Bible makes it clear who you pray to. OK, and I can show you a bunch of verses which which in which we are told to pray. So in fact, prayer is a form of worship. I mentioned this yesterday. I'll mention it again. Hebrews 13. Prayer is a form of worship. Prayer is only done to God. It's a form of sacrifice, according to Hebrews 13. So again, they, we don't see the sort of rhetoric of traditions according to your church. Stating our need of coming to principle is not backed up by anything uh, factual. To the scriptures again, you have to prove from the scriptures your doctrine. This is the sole infallible rule of faith because it says it is Second Timothy 3 16. All scriptures are God breathed. It's revelation, it is the apostolic tradition inscribed. But also, what you have to recognize is all the reformers because this is a charge placed upon the reformers is like, uh, what was you know, what was their authority for the assertions they made? And the simple answer is the Bible. And I think what they all understood about each other was that, um that's the standard they were all holding to. So famously, there was a meeting between Zwindli and Luther, and they agreed on basically everything bar one thing, which was the Lord's Supper. Luther, Luther basically believed in the real presence, but not in a sacrificial way like the Catholics do. He didn't believe it like that, but he did believe that the real presence was there, and Zwindli thought it was a symbol. But the fit, to be fair to Luther, you might disagree with him, but his assertions were made through scripture. That's the point, and that's something that Zwindli mm. could respect. You know. Mm. Luther wasn't saying that he believed it because he believed it. Like Luther more fell out with Zwingli rather than Zwingli fell out with Luther. But like the thing that Zwingli respected was that Luther made his case from scripture. That, that's what Zwingli respected at the end of the day. Yeah. 
because like you'll find throughout early church that the scripture is deemed as sound. Like for example, there's an individual in the chat, Nello spouting off again about infallible interpretation of scripture. Well, during the Council of Nicaea, um, first of all, Athanasius did not appeal to any infallible interpretation of scripture. He appealed to scriptures. That's what he did against Arius. Arius didn't say, oh, well, where's your hermeneutical infallible principle? No, he appealed to scriptures. So notice how even one of your earliest councils, which if you're an Eastern Orthodox or a Roman Catholic, you have to affirm. Even they only went to scriptures to back up what they claimed. And that's even what Irenaeus says when he says that the scriptures are the ground of pitiful faith. He didn't deny any form of tradition, but he didn't, he didn't claim the, the tradition had the same veracity as that of the Bible. And when he, in fact, when Irenaeus talks about tradition, which he does in Against Heresies chapter 3, um, he, mentions, he then goes on to list what those traditions are. This is important. He lists that basically that there was an Adam and Eve, that Christ truly died and was born again, that Christ truly is God, um, stuff like that. So he, he, he will go through that. And yeah, and he says God is the Father, stuff like that. So yeah, that, that's the assertion being made. If you don't like that, that's fine. But claiming that I have to have an infallible interpretation of scripture in order for it to be true doesn't make any sense when you go to your church because the magisterium is not infallible. For example, um, the Council of Herod in 751, Right. If you know anything about the Council of Herrera and you are an Eastern Orthodox, look up the Council of Herrera. In fact, I'm going to get up on screen. In fact, that's this. This is going to be a lesson for anybody who knows Council Herrera, because your church teaches, and so does the Eastern, Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholic Church. I don't know what church you are, mate, but your churches teach that councils did not err. Um, Council of Herrera of 754. Now I don't know what. Um, so this is uh, the Council of Hiera, right? Um, so this is the Iconoclast Council of Hiera. Um, I hope you can see it on screen. Can you, Sam? Was this? Yeah, I can. Was this before Nicaea two or after Nicaea two? Uh, it was before Nicaea two, uh, from what I know. Yeah, the previous council was a third council of Constantinople. So yeah, it was before Nicaea two, because then Nicaea two went and openly condemned it, and I think on Constant sorry Constantinople two from what I can recall, accepted, again, um, the iconoclasts. So there is iconoclasm in the early church, by the way. But the iconoclast Council of Hiera was a Christian council of 754, mm -hmm. which viewed itself as ecumenical, but was later rejected by the second council of Nicaea. So we're waiting at least a good, what, from what I can see, 20, maybe 30 years afterwards for rejection. Right? Since none of the five ma major patriarchs were presented in Hiera. However, it is preferred over second Nicaea by some council of prophets. Uh, some Protestants. Again, so what's being claimed here is that none of the five major patriarchs were represented here, but yet it was still a council. It was an ecumenical council, and it was still convened regardless. Again, so if, if a collection of men who are deemed infallible, by the way, because that's what your magisterium dictates, get together and anathematize people, and they that's what they did. They anathematized people who accepted um, icons or images. Uh, what is wrong with us doing the same thing? I, again, similar pronouncements on the issue of religious images, and I think um, I'm going to have to make the screen. The, also, also, I guess to put up the whole premise of what the Reformation was about is really this simple. It there's a good, there's two good quotes from Luther. He had a debate with a guy called Johan, Johan Eck, and he said, um, "A simple layman armed with scripture is to be believed by a council or a pope without it." Exactly, um, because councils also, heard. But also, but also, he also said um, at the Diet of Worms, and he said this quite bravely because he, he basically, he thought he had condemned himself to death when he said this. He was asked to announce his writings, and if he didn't, he kind of knew it was basically the chopping block for him. Right. Um, yeah. Like, exactly. like, uh, like um, he said, he said, uh, he said, um, you know, I do not accept the cap the authority of popes of councils for they've contradicted each other. If I'm unless yeah. I'm convinced, uh, and, and this is the thing, they will. Or they will. He yeah. said, "If he's, he said, um, unless I'm convinced by Scripture or clear reason, my conscience is captive to the Word of God." Exactly. And just to finish this off, so three hundred. So sorry, I've got somebody else on screen. Three hundred and thirty-eight members attended the seven fifty-four council. It it's endorsed Constantine V's or iconoclast position. With the bishops, so these were bishops that were declaring it, that the unlawful arts of painting living creatures blaspheme the fundamental doctrine of our salvation, namely the incarnation of Christ. Where did these bishops get this from? Remember, this is at least a good, what? So we're talking at least a good 300 and something bishops in attendance, uh, from what I can remember. Um, where did they get this idea? Remember, this is also 
mentioned in the Synod of Elvira. The Synod of Elvira has the same thing. They deny iconography. And by the way, this was before there was even a, a Nicaea. This is before there was a Nicaea. This is one of the earliest councils, I think, the Synod of Elvira. Um, and yet it's being cited here in this Wikipedia book, which, I mean, Wikipedia is not great on everything, but I'll give it its due. It just it's easier to access. Uh, but it's interesting how a council convened against iconography by a ton of bishops of your church. I mean, yes, 30 years later it was opposed. And yes, then after in Constantinople II, it was then um, uh, iconodulia or the, um, not iconodulia, sorry, iconoclast position was then taken as accepted again. And then it was over. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you'll get this with councils, but yeah. It's clearly stating that Canon 36 states pictures are not to be placed in churches so that they do not become objects of worship and adoration. I mean, I mean, so far, this is the earliest pro prohibition known. So what this is saying is that the earliest prohibition known was the Synod of Alvaro. And this is Hiero. Explain why we should infer that councils have the authority, the infallible authority to determine facts when councils according to your position earth. Also, St. Mark of Ephesus, as you know, as an Eastern Orthodox, if you're a Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox, even if you're a Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox, it doesn't matter. St. Mark of Ephesus, Ephesus sorry, was part of the Synod of Ferrara. So I'm going to get up. The Synod of Ferrara. Um, this is important to know. The Synod of Ferrara or the Council of Ferrara. Um, um, oh, yeah. Council of Florence, Council of Ferrara. Um but there was many councils of Florence. So I'm gonna to have to, yeah. I think this was a later one. Um, yeah, I don't want the later ones. Sorry, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's annoying because yeah, you have to go and uh, search through the whole of it. Uh, Ferrara, Florence. Um, this could be it. I know there was an 11th century one, but yeah. So uh, yeah, it was discussed. Well, discussions were held on the purgatory and the, and the phrase filioque from the Son of the Nicene Creed, which sets forth the doctrine that the Holy Spirit proceeds from both the Father and the Son. The Greeks held that the Spirit proceeds from the Father only and refused to accept the filioque. On January the 10th, 1439, the council was moved from Ferrara to Florence when a plague hit Ferrara. After much discussion, the Greeks agreed to accept the filioque and also the Latin statements of purgatory, Eucharist, and papal primacy. The decree of union between the two groups, which is called something in Latin, Latin was signed on July the 6th, 1439. After their return to Constantinople, many Greeks repudiated the reunion. Meanwhile, the Latins were complete, completed union agreements with certain other Eastern churches. No extant document recalls the closing of the council, which moved to Rome in September of 1433. So you get the gist. During this council, if you are an Eastern Orthodox, the filioque was accepted in the 1400s it was accepted as something to believe in there was only one person that went against this doctrine that was saint mark of ephesus according to your tradition um now if i have saint mark of ephesus here because it, it honestly this information is already mainstream but uh it takes a while to sift through it this is saint mark of ephesus right here um it's apparently a hesychost uh pelagian yeah, so this is it. Who became famous for his rejection of the Council of Ferrara of Florence. So it was him. Remember, we the document tells you that the majority of the Greeks afforded um, the idea that, yeah, the, the filioque is right. And then they went and repudiated it when they went home. They went back home to Greece and they repudiated it. But yet we have one person. So according to the Eastern tradition, one person was right. This one person was infallible in the, amongst a swathe of others who were not right. This is a problem. Historically, this is a problem. And this is an issue one has to deal with with the Eastern Orthodox. Coming back to Roman Catholics, again, if you want a, a hermeneutical standard, I'm not claiming that Wikipedia is correct on everything. In fact, I stated Wikipedia is not great on everything. And if, if, if I'm wrong, prove me I'm wrong. I'm open to being called wrong, um, admitted do, to be do, wrong. Do you want to hear, do, do you want to hear uh, um, one accusation that's just been thrown at us? The bishops what, are the, successive. The bishops are successors of the apostles, and Christ founded the church on the apostles, not the Bible. The apostles gave you the Bible. Protestants interpret the Bible against the apostles. <laughs> oh, man. So what, about, so, what, so, so, so what about all the letters of Paul and Peter and Jude and James that are all in here? 
Yeah. <laughs> All the book of Acts, no, for that matter. Like, like apparently um, they, they can't communicate for themselves. They needed somebody named Saint Mark of Ephesus, hundreds of years later, to communicate for them because, like, obviously the apostles can't do it. This is the issue. Like, the apostles cannot communicate for themselves. They need the Eastern Orthodox to do it. And this is just an assumption. Your church has not existed at that time. Prove it. Prove that they were venerating icons. Prove the the veneration of, of statues. In the way you do fit, I'm not even going to claim that. I'm not even going to straw man your position. Come up and defend your position. I'm not going to straw man it. I'm going to allow you to make a case for your position uh, in the way you deem fit. But I want you to prove that from the earliest documents we have, which is scriptures. If you cannot do that, and you're just going to claim the apostolic, which I believe, by the way, no, nobody denies that. I don't know. Do you deny, Sam, that the apostolic church gave us the Bible? Do you not know that? No, I, no, I don't deny that, no. But yeah, but what we say is that apostolic witness was written down in scripture. Everything that is apostolic tradition is written here. We're given no claim from the early fathers that there are things outside of this other than liturgical practices that are deemed um, infallible or that are that are not infallible. So that's the wrong word. That are equal to this. And we've got, can you show me any document, for example, Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholic? Can you show me any document? From the first century, second century, third century, fourth century, fifth century, which has the writings, sorry, the sayings of the apostles and the prophets outside of the scripture we have here, outside of the New Testament. If you can't do that, then you didn't give us this book. This book came from somewhere. Came from the know, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what? There is one, there is one person who does tell you what, you know, when they appeal to a tradition, there's one person who tells you what those traditions are. Basil the Great. But what are those traditions? It's things like making the sign of the cross. It's things like the church pointing towards the east or like um, how to conduct yourself in in, in uh, the service, et cetera, et cetera. It's those kind of things. It's liturgical stuff. It's got nothing to do with like um, actual doctrinal things. Got nothing to do with mm. it. There's <laughs> nothing to do with it. What, what they do is they meme, they make assumptions, but they, they're unfounded. I mean, we can all meme, right? I could say that the Calvinists gave you the Bible. <laughs> I could say that, for example, like, um, the, the Apostle Paul was carrying around a King James Bible. Uh, and he was, and he was, ca and, he, and he was carrying around uh, Calvin's Institutes, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was holding Calvin's Institutes, and just <laughs> rambling off about predestination. Oh man, no, they honestly think that's an argument. It really isn't. Come on, uh, let's have this, this discussion, this conversation. Stop barking in the chat. Uh, anyway, let's let's continue this video because I'm actually interested. Yeah, let, let, I've been mouthing up a lot. <laughs> same, same here, man. I've been joining in. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I think the Catholic Church has had its balls taken out a long time ago. <laughs> he's not wrong about that. Oh, that made me funny. He's not, yeah. he's not actually wrong about that, though, is he? He's not like, wrong about that. No. Uh, when Bob's right, he's right, and he's right about that one. <laughs> yeah, they've had their balls taken out a while ago. But again, you don't know whether they're going to get their balls back. That's the issue. Because if they decide, you know, I'm going to make a decree that all these Protestants can get flayed alive, if they have the power, yes. It's like even the Quran says about the Muslims uh, that once you've got your hands, like, start to initiate the Sharia. Like, that's literally a rule in the Quran. It's like, yeah, so like, how do we know that under a papal structure or the uh, majesty and the Pope that they won't try to initiate those things? Even if they became very liberal, they might they might start to initiate gay marriage. Um, I don't know. Like, they could do all sorts of stuff, bro. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. You do. You do know um, there are bishop. You do know there are bishops in Germany who are genuinely trying to get that to happen, like gay marriage and stuff. Like, yeah, uh, look it up. Look it up, man. Look it up. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the birthplace of Luther. Are, are, are they taking the mic? Oh, I Luther. I Luther. Yeah. Where's the book? Oh, I Luther, you know. I Luther. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, <hope. laughs> but no, no, but no, like the point is, is like, and these bishops have been putting some pressure on the Catholic Church for a long time to, like, yeah, like, like legalize gay marriage within the Catholic Church and stuff. You should look it up, man. It's like no, they, I'm going to have to. It, <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, those people do exist, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, though, considering where most of the church has been going, especially the Anglican church, Methodist church. I'm going to do a stream on that, by the way, um, on what I call the gospel according to the Nicolaitans, um, because that's literally what they're teaching in the church is Nicolaitanism, because it's not just about calling out, of course, the Orthodox and the um, Catholics. 
I want to go for the Nicolaitans as well. And that, that includes the Church of England. Uh, not every Anglican, but the Church of England. Uh, the yeah, the uh, institutions, Oasis Church in Waterloo. Yeah, the, the institutions. So the, I'm calling out right now on this stream, and I want any representative of that to come and debate me. The Oasis Church in Waterloo. Um, I also want um, the Church of England, the Methodist Church. Um, I think there's another thing called the, uh, the Christian Communion. I want you to jump on as well. Um, and that's it. Um, I think there's another church. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but yeah, that's fair, about to be it. Fair, I want you to guys fair, to come on. To be fair, the Presbyterian Church has gone pretty far down as well. Like, ah, um, uh, no, I'm just saying that one's gone pretty far down as well. Like, like have I got it next to me? Yeah, I do. Um, like, you know, they subscribe to this, the Westminster Confession. Like, and they've practically chucked this thing out the window these days. Yeah, hmm. I mean, like. Um, so yeah, like the, the they've they've gone pretty far gone. The Presbyterians as well. Like, there's, there's obviously going to be. Faithful that was a surprise. <laughs> there's obviously going to be uh, faithful Anglicans and faithful Presbyterians out there, but yeah. the institution, the institutions have fallen pretty far. Yeah, and that's the one thing Eastern Orthodoxy has over us in the fact that yeah, they they generally do not accept any of this uh, chichi man stuff. But then again, the Anglicans in Africa don't accept it either. They, they in their countries were like, bon chichi man, bon fire upon them. Um, I don't know if you know what that means, but I do. <laughs> and that's all that, yeah. I'm just saying, like, bon chichi man, bon fire upon chichi man. Uh, and, yeah, there, there will be fire. And 1 Corinthians 9 says, bon chichi man, there will be fire coming by the chichi man. Uh, that's, that's all we need to know. <laughs> oh, when, we're, when we're off live, you'll have to tell me what that means. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the chat knows what it means. The chat knows what it means, man. <laughs> okay, well, let, let's continue this. Um, by the way, Adam, I'll see you in the chat. Um, I'm going to let you up momentarily. I just need to complete this. It's like a game, so I need to complete this first. And then, yeah, of course, you'll be lit up momentarily. All right, then. Um... Actually, this, this oil stain is not, because I was at a Catholic not, mass not and, guy and, and a guy up. came to harass the church. What? Yeah, today. Whoa, really? That today. <laughs> That's a Lewis. Yeah, it, it came to. It happened today. Somebody came to the, the Catholic church while they were outside having a tea and coffee, and he started harassing them. And it's the second time this guy's talking to this church. So I ended up confronting well, him. I'm quite space. I like this guy. I, <laughs> like, I ended up moving his bike, which is why I'm covered in oil. Yeah, because two weeks ago, Bob, the gospel of theology, you believe that a person should be able to take the communion with the Catholic church. It, it, so long as they're a true disciple of Jesus, yes. I, I would, I, I would want that. Even if they don't agree with everything I want to say. I, I think that each one should honour the sacrament as they best understand it in good conscience. So for the Catholic, they honour it as the real presence of our Lord. For a Protestant, they honour it. <laughs> I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure this is where I had a bone to pick with him. Because th from the Catholic point of view, no, that can't happen. Because yeah. one, you have to be confirmed into the church anyway. That's just the custom. But but secondly, you can't really, obviously, Catholics and Orthodox practice Eucharistic adoration, um, mm. because because they believe it is you know the literal presence of Christ in the Eucharist, and so you can't go up and take it if that's not what you believe what it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, because I'm I'm not sure if you I know you've attended Eastern Orthodoxy. Uh, liturgies, but you like attended Catholic masses. Um, sort of. I sort of crept into the Catholic Church in Lewisham. There's a nice Catholic Church in Lewisham, by the way. Um, not I'm not I'm not promoting it, but it's quite nice. Um, no, they're beautiful while they, while they were doing a service, um, I saw it. But I wasn't they? really interested. Yeah, they, they are beautiful. beautiful. I just saw it as whoredom, so I left. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, fair enough. Um, but anyways, uh, so at one point in the mass. The one bit that just creeps to the front of my mind is that the um, the priest will hold the cup and the bread together, you know, sort of kind of level with his head, roughly. And uh, he'll say, behold, the Lamb of God, you know, behold him who take take it away the sins of the world. You know, uh, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And then the congregation reply, you know, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under thy roof. Oh, speak the word only and my my soul shall be healed. And all of that prayer is aimed at that cup and the bread that the priest is holding. So that's mm. my point. It's, it's Eucharistic adoration. Like it, they believe we, uh, they believe that the Christ is right there in the priest's hands when he's saying those yeah. words. 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. We have a different view already on the, on the um, ecclesiology. The, well, not the ecclesiology, but on the theology in terms of um, the uh, substance, accident, stuff like that. I mean, I was sort of consubstantious in terms of like how I viewed the Eucharist. I thought there was a spiritual change. I don't believe that anymore because, yeah, the Holy Spirit dwells a believer anyway. There's no spiritual change. Uh, but I do believe that the um, Eucharist um, should be something viewed as sacred. And that's interesting. Uh, that's probably interesting to a lot of Catholics were watching. But yeah, I think profaning it with uh, apple juice and some uh, what's it? I mean, no, that's not the Eucharist. It should be <laughs> wine and it should be bread. Uh, and it should not be like Hovis. It should be actual bread. Uh, the like reason why we're loads. doing this, yeah, like proper, proper loaves, like proper baked loaves, like, and we should be able to do this as a sign or, or a form of memorialism. Uh, I would argue that this memorialism should get us in connection with Christ, but not spiritually. We're already connected to Christ. So what are we doing? Uh, we're we're uh, remembering his sacrifice, remembering that time in Luke 22, when the, the apostles were sat at the Lord's Supper, and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Uh, eat my flesh, drink my blood, all of this, inferring who he is. We should remember that, and it should be a sacred experience. Uh, it shouldn't be but, something where you just got a bit of apple juice, you know, a bit of tango and a bit of... Uh, Cheese, mate. That's just mad. Can I ask? I'm just curious of because I'm just more referring to the Protestant traditions now. You obviously got three main views within the Protestant tradition. You have the Lutherans, which is real presence, but they don't practice Eucharistic adoration. That's the key. They don't. Yeah, they don't. Pra they don't. They don't practice that. Um, the sort of Reformed view, the sort of Presbyterian Dutch Reformed view, which is the the real yeah. presence is kind of there but it's there it's there because you because of your faith it's not there because of anything else and then obviously there's more the sort of swiss reform view specifically which came from which was from zwingli which is it's symbolic oh no it's earlier than zwingli did you know that? Oh, no, I know it's, no no oh no i know it's earlier but i'm just saying he popularized it i know it's earlier he just popularized it That's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah but but um but uh all i'm saying is would you class say Say the Lutheran view or the Presbyterian view is like heterodox kind of thing, like not like full on heresy, but kind of heterodox, if you get what I mean. Uh, so, in terms of uh, the uh, so explain the view again because my brain's a bit of a muddle right now. So, 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 the Lutherans do believe in the real presence, they just don't practice Eucharistic adoration, they don't right. worship the bread and the wine, but they do genuinely think Jesus Christ is present in the bread and the wine. They, if you ask them how, they'll just say it's a mystery, like, do you know, what I mean, they don't pretend like they know how. Um, and well, that's sort of Gnostic at best, but the, yeah, the, I mean, the, the reformed ones, the reformed ones will kind of just simply say that you receive Christ in the Eucharist, but it's in value of your faith. So if you have a dead faith and you're just kind of taking the Eucharist just because Christ isn't actually present in the bread or the wine for you. So it's on an individual case rather than rather than like. Uh, so let's put it this way. The, the Lutherans would say that even an unbeliever would have received the body and blood of Christ. Whereas whatever the reform position will say, if you're an unbeliever, that's not actually the body, body and blood of Christ because you don't believe properly. Do you know what I mean? So it's in virtue of your right. faith that that the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't. So, I mean, of course, I can't like I, I'm not going to be at a pinpoint for somebody's salvation. Nobody is like. But uh, what I would say is that at least the Lutheran view is more heterodox. I would say like uh, the um, the Presbyterians have a consubstantiation view which is an error. It's kind of stupid. It's just like praying for the dead. It's kind of stupid. But Christians doing stupid things doesn't mean they're going to hell. Like, that's a... I didn't mean it like that. I was just wondering... I was just wondering if you thought they were like heterodox views kind of thing. But not like I would say it's, uh, But not like damning It's not views. damning. It's just... It's an error, I would say. There's a lot of uh, Christians you'll find. Uh, for example, I would say Arminianism, you know, their view of God, I think, is an error. But... I would say they're going to hell. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, I think these little things, these little nuances aren't important. It's about what you're viewing that bread is. And I think if you're worshipping it, venerating it, as truly the flesh and blood of Christ, then that's an issue. Um, oh, yeah, but none, none that's of That's how you're partaking of it. That. Second. But none of the Protestant traditions do that, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. None of the... And that, that's that's the issue. That's the point of contention. Like, it's how you're viewing the bread and the wine uh, in terms of actually, if it's literally... Christ, flesh and Christ, blood. And we don't view it that way. Although in the early church, you'll find it's represented that way. And that's the important thing. But it's represented so memorially. Look up Stephen Namesh. 
Stephen Namesh has a whole PowerPoint presentation on this, <laughs> explaining through the fathers why they were using typological language to make the inference that it was more so of a um, um, memorialist like thing. And he was arguing for memorialism. Unfortunately, he became a, a Aryan. <laughs> I don't know how. He became an Aryan, unfortunately. But I will say still, Stephen Namesh, I'm going to put it in the chat, Stephen, Stephen N-E-M-E-S. It's, it, sound, it, look, it looks like Nimes, but it's actually Namesh. Uh, if you look at him <laughs> up on transubstantiation and the memorialist view, he has a great PowerPoint on memorialist view because even Aryans can get some things right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he became an Aryan later. It was after the whole transubstantiation thing. I don't know why he became an Aryan. Don't ask me. That doesn't discredit yeah, his uh, view of the Eucharist, though. No, fair enough. Anyway, let's see let's see how where this goes. I'm pretty sure I do have a crack at Bob at this point. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, just wondering, I'm, I'm just wondering I'm if JC's mic is going to pick me up. Just yeah. wonder if JC's mic is going to pick me up, that's all. I'm ecumenical, I'm not wrong. Yeah, I know you're right. And I'm not processing. I've got such a quiet voice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah what's your say? I, I did. I didn't name them, but I'll name them now. Being a, being as uh, they don't actually seem to go to speaker's corner anymore. But basically, I was referencing Hatton. Hatton called me a heretic, and so I said, I said to Bob, if she does it again, I'm just going to challenge her on it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, like that's what I was saying. Because yeah, it was Hatton. I was because I used to wear my ro my friend's rosary at the time, and she spotted that and uh, called me a heretic right on the spot. <laughs> oh yeah, she's based. Hatton has always been based, even though unfortunately her colleague Jay Smith is a the biggest ecum ecumenical fart on the planet. And trust me, like I've been wanting to debate him for a while ever since he called me up and said, "John, you shouldn't do this. This is it's untenable. What you're doing." You're dividing the flock, we should be going up to the ears and ears. And I'm like, oh, sorry, Jake, okay. I'm gonna do what I need to do, bro. <laughs> trying, to do his, trying to do his American accent, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't agree. I'm not great. Oh, my name's Jake Smith. I, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, but she noticed around my neck. Is that a rosary? I went, yeah, it is. Like, gave it to me and she was like, you should wear them so they can leave the heretical. Like, oh, okay. What is those? She doesn't even know what heretical is. I think it's because of the ideology, like, iconoclasm, which is basically... It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I just say iconoclasm? <laughs> In Rome? No. I think you did. I think you did. <laughs> the iconoclasm. I know what I meant, but yeah, I said iconoclasm. There's no iconoclasm in Rome. These guys are hoes, man. I mean, come on. Iconoclasm? Please. Uh, yeah, let me consider. Do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, no, keep going, man. I think so I'm pretty sure you and Bob kind of end up on your own a bit, don't you? And you end up debating yeah, yeah, each yeah. other. So I think yeah, me and Michael that, bug, was... bug, I think me and Michael like bug it off for a bit and then we come back, if I remember right. I think so, yeah. Salam al Basir, yes, apologize, yes, Salam al Basir, Mutaz. Thank you, man. Uh, good to see you, Mutaz. Uh, you're a brother in law, say brother in law, in fact. Just don't go to Coptic Church, my friend, because there's a lot of icons there and you wouldn't like it. Um, uh, but let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, well, yeah. uh, yeah. I think but, but what I'm saying is, you know, like, I don't consider the Roman Catholic, I believe institutions are like. I'm, I'm like that. Yeah. I'm trying to say to Bob now. <laughs> I'm just trying to say to Bob like now. Nah, I'm after the Protestants, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just funny. It's like every, every minute an hour, you don't pay ten pounds to the RSPCA. It's every minute an hour a dog dies. Like, what what kind of stupid argumentation is this? I'm sorry. It, it's so it's it's so emotive. It's like I'm sorry. Sorry, evangelism is everything. The Bible doesn't say go therefore and bat baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, teaching Muslims the doctrines that I've taught you. No, it says. Teaching them, as in all nations. You have to go to all nations to do this. That includes everybody. 
That's why, but evangelism in itself is multifaceted. Like on this channel, I told you the motto yesterday. The motto is everybody gets it. Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhist, um, Seven Day Adventists. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. Um, I, I, it we don't the South, care. the South Park of the of the uh, apologetics <laughs> world. <laughs> this is the South Park of the apologetics world. Everybody gets it. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say certain South Park quotes, but yeah, we gone for everybody. And if you don't like that, and if you're Bob, right, tough. Come to fake. Listen, come defend Bob right here. Come defend that clown right here. I'll embarrass you and Bob. Uh, I, I, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> we got everybody gets it, bro. <laughs> Anyway, let's continue. Did you want to say anything, Sam? No, man, I just find it weird watching this because I just I'm fully aware I'm a papist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, 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 so it's it's weird watching myself back, but knowing like I'm a papist here. Like, do you know what I mean? It just feels weird. I am a papist. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just full on popery, man. This is paper. This is the look of the papist devil until he comes out and he's enlightened <laughs> by the truth. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. Oh, let's go. Cool. What we're trying to do is just say, look, this is our position. Yeah. Like, like, you know, stop, stop. I know I'm not going to stop. You can't. You're going to determine. You can tell I'm no ecumenicalist, though. Do you know what I mean? Do you know, just pause it a sec, pause it a sec. Yeah, that's too much food anyway. What's you going to say? No, pause it a sec. It's just, it's just a funny thing that I always do at Speaker's Corner. So I always take that black bag with me and I always leave it places and then I always have to go and retrieve it. And I love how the camera caught that. I'm, I'm terrible for doing that in Speaker's Corner. I'm terrible for it. Oh, man. I'm amazed, I, am, I am amazed no one has ever stolen it. The amount of times mm. I've had it like a couple of meters away from me and I'm not, I'm don't even realize it. And then I suddenly realize, crap, where's my back? <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> I'm, amazed, I'm amazed no one's nicked it over the years. <laughs> Honestly, I don't like, we, we were not friends at all, were we? I think I was just void of you, to be honest. I don't think, like, this no, is what, like, I couldn't imagine no. interacting with you this way now. I think, yeah, like, well, I well we, you... we were, I think we were like, cold towards each other we didn't hate each other we were just cold do you yeah. know what i mean like I, I like i don't i don't think we hated each other particularly at any point but but we certainly were not on good terms that's so that's that is one way to put it we were definitely not on good terms <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's interesting man that's interesting right, the lord this... works in weird ways really he does man this is the brilliant <laughs> thing right Honestly, it's a brilliant I'm one. That's the only way I'm going to do it. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always been just stuff. I must catch up. If you say something like that, I'm not going to do it. 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 I'm sorry, Jason's mic. Oh, oh, I just, I just remembered what I said there. You can't pick it up on the mic, but I just remembered. I'm tr when I watch it, my memory's coming back to me. But I, yeah. I, when I took my phone out then and I said something to Bob, I said, "I'm not ecumenical." Yeah. Like, like I actually said that just point blank to him. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> like, like um, you can't pick it up on the mic, but I know that's what I said to him. Like, um, yeah, just, tr just try to make, box, just, just, tr just try to make it clear to him. Like, like you know, I'm not, I'm not here to be nasty to you, Bob. But like, I'm gonna, because obviously it was, it was, it was obviously not just me. It was, uh, it was Ben as well. Me and Ben are gonna, yeah. uh, gonna, are gonna do what we're gonna do. Like, just deal with it. Just deal with it, man. That's what I mean. Just deal with it. Uh, let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah, I bugger off at this point. Yeah, you bugger off. I don't really care what Michael says. Um, let's just skip it. Oh, wait. What did I say? Hey, yo, wait. I'm speaking to JC behind the camera. 
going yeah. well. Yeah. We're speaking I about football. Yes, Jono! It's about what's good. My God! I'm not denying that they're not going to stick And I'm not denying that you've got to have a position of conscience on these topics. What I'm saying is, you've got to have them in their relative proportion as to how important they are. And they are not important enough. So, according to who? Right? The, the Bible says what is important. The Bible says, Galatians 1.89, I think it's my favourite chapter because I've been saying it for the last how many months now, or even years, in fact. Uh, if anybody has another gospel, let them be accursed. Like Paul says, you're accursed. Like, what's more important than that, Bob? Uh, this is arbitrary. You're just, you're just chatting nonsense. And honestly, yeah. now I couldn't afford him. I would say to him, look, let's do a time debate, and I will show you from the Bible why you cannot be an ecumenist. Ecumenism is stupid. And Saint Nicholas would have punched you in the face for this doctrine. <laughs> 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 did you did you did you get that did you get that clip I sent you earlier where it goes? Oh um, yes, it's it's literally on my WhatsApp. I, I don't know how to get my WhatsApp on my laptop. It was like it was like yeah. this, you know, that redeem Zuma guy, and it's just his brief history of Christianity. And it's like, you know, this is the council of Nicaea, and it's like, actually, said Arius, Jesus is kind of like God, but he was created at some point. Bro, that's heresy, said Santa Claus, punching him in the face. <laughs> oh, yeah, let, let me play it. Let me play it. Let me play it. Hold on. That was, quite, that was yeah. quite funny. I found it really funny. <laughs> let me play it. Wait. Um... To clarify what Christianity is. Well, he worships Jesus because he's God, says almost everyone. Actually, said some guy named Arius, Jesus is like God, but he's still created by God. There was a time when Jesus didn't exist. Bro, that's heresy, said Santa Claus, punching him in the face. So the Council of Nicaea clarified that Jesus is truly God. Arius got kicked out, and they wrote a statement summarizing the basics of Christianity. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know he's an ecumenist as well, Redeem Zuma, but I will admit that that was quite funny. <laughs> yeah. right, I will admit that. Listen, but, but, listen, Santa yeah, Claus would have punched him in the face. That's what I mean. Santa Claus would have punched Bob in the face. Uh, but anyways, um, I, but also when you say like the Bible, but not just the Bible, like say the Reformed confessions, catechisms, and things like this. One of the things that they absolutely anathematize is the Catholic version of the Mass. They're really mm. clear about it. They're really clear about it. That if you that if you uh, worship in that manner, that you are a curse of God. Like they make it really painfully clear. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like um, so, Protestants have kind of come up with even their own little ana anathemas here and there, like in yeah. the in the confessions and stuff. They're not like official anathemas like you've got in the Council of Trent, but they did set boundaries. And they were like, and they, and they were like, if you celebrate the Popish Mass, like your your uh, that's what they called it, the Popish Mass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the, 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 they are, uh... you know, you're you're profaning the body and blood of Christ, and they reference um, Corinthians to make their point. I mean, it's, it's sheer popish devilry. That's a, that's what John Calvin will say in the Institutes, sheer popish devilry. And that's what they're engaging with. And that's why we cannot align ourselves with the papists and the Easterners who dwell on mountains, because we don't do that stuff. Neither do we believe you need a hermeneutical principle to justify praying to other gods like a whore. Um, and calling people whores, by the way, is biblical, and I can show you that as well. Uh, if anybody's got a good King James in their hand, get, get yourself over to Jeremiah. Uh, you'll see whore over and over again used in there. Um, Adam, but, but, you're, you're looking impatient, bro. You're looking can impatient. I, can, 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 <laughs> I, can I actually add this quick? Can I add this quickly? That um, yeah. Also, it feels like what Bob is doing is he's asking all these churches to throw away all their history as well. So it's like, so yeah. it's like you know, for the for the sort of reformed tradition, you know, the Westminster Confession of Faith, chuck that in the bin. The Reformed Baptist, chuck the, chuck your confession in the bin. The Lutherans, yeah. the Heimberg Catechism, chuck that in the bin as well. Or like the Catholics, chuck your catechism in the bin. All the things mm -hmm. that it tells you to avoid and the sort of anathemas that it does kind of give you, he's just kind of asking them all to just be like, yeah, you know, like chuck the, all this stuff away. Chuck all your history away. Like, no, is he seriously yeah, just, asking Just that? forget it, bro. That, that's literally his religion. Just forget it, bro. Just, the Bible says keep some doctrine, second time, or two. Just forget it, bro. You know, I mean, just just come, just just come to whatever whatever religion I am of the cuddly waddly. That's what I call Bob's religion, by the way, the Bobite cuddly waddly religion. 
because that's basically yeah. it. It's just like, let's all be friends and cuddle, you know what I mean? Just like, come here, bro, you're Catholic, hey. hey. <laughs> forget Jesus, you know what I mean? It's as long as you're Christian, yeah, you know, come here, bro. Hey, hey, forget <laughs> actual Mary, you know what I mean? Like, oh, man, it's just so stupid. Um, anyway, I want to continue this because I want to get to the juicy bits. I mean, I'm just having a pop at Bobby, and I've done that for years, so... Uh, Catholics are heretics, though. It just is the case. You're in error. Uh, because, because their their position on the Marian dogma, of the assumption of our lady. Well, it's not about whether you're convinced by their argument or not. It's about what is factually stated in Scripture. Again, I always refer to Scripture because it's the ground and pillar of our faith. Like, the fact is, uh, again, if you're engaging in worship of saints, if you're engaging, for example, in idolatry of Mary or veneration of Mary, and claiming that's dogma, that's a grave error because that's not that you don't then know the Lord. To have an a uh, um, a epistemological, sorry, epistemological understanding of God. Or well, let's say a theological understanding of God, you must know what he has said via his very special revelation. If what you believe is is uh, contrary to that, that is a grave error. So really, it's not about my arbitrary opinion versus yours. We, we both can be right as long as we sink and by all. No, it isn't. It's about what's fundamentally stated. As Christ says, keep my commandments. Those who believe in Christ will keep his commandments. Of course, one of those commandments is, according to the Old Testament, like don't engage in idolatry. Um, that's very important. And if a church teaches that, they are in error and they should be called out. Whether or not the Catholic adherent, and I, I will say this publicly, whether or not the Catholic adherent knows this, it's important we call this out. Because to much is given, much is required. That's what John, Jesus says in Luke. So we have to call out things that are heterodox in order to uh, call the lambs to a better way, to follow in Christ. If we do not do this and we leave people in error, as Bob is doing, we are not teaching the gospel and we are instead misleading the sheep. And if we're doing that, we are not of Christ. Christ says himself, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Not Mary, not the saints, him. Uh, this is very important. Uh, this discourse with Bob is so stupid because he's just not making an argument. Mm. Name me, there's no, we, it's like going to a Muslim and saying, you know, you believe in God and I do. Is there, so any, per the is there any perfect? <laughs> no. Does every church have errors in it? Yes. Oh, what's no? Oh. <laughs> I knew that was. Oh, man. No, 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 Jordan. You're, is... you're, you're like, you're, you're a little bit of a Bobite at this point in your life. Not, not a full on one, but you're sort of one. Oh, I just said there was no proper church. That's embarrassing. Of course, there are proper church. Well, did you, uh, you either said perfect church or proper church. Perfect, perfect. You just, you said. Well, there is a perfect church because they were the called out ones, the ecclesia. And those who are part of the perfect church will believe in the doctrines of grace, will hold to the truth of his word. Um, do we agree on everything? No. But what denotes perfection is in the gospel. That's the most important thing. Um, so, I mean, yeah. It's, I don't know why it's, it's, I said that. There's someone, up, someone else in the backstage, by the way. Have a look. Oh, is there? Because um, I can't see. I'm sort of watching the video. Uh, ah, Mutaz. Mutaz, brother. How are you doing? How are you doing, Mutaz? Salam al Salam al brother. Yeshua Akbar. Oh, Yeshua Akbar. Uh, yes. Yeah, but by the way, uh, th there's something that I, I, I want to share with you guys. Uh, I found in their book uh, called The catechism of the catholic church in the uh, 841 uh, it says hold on a sec let me read it it says that the church relationship with the muslims uh, mm -hmm. the plan of uh, salvation also include those who are acknowledge the creator in the first place amongst whom are the muslims these profess to hold the faith of abraham and together with us they adore the one merciful god mankind mm -hmm. judge on the last day so basically the uh, according to the to the roman catholic church they believe that they actually worship the same god as the muslims 
Yeah, what yeah, the... this is a Vat- it's, it's a Vatican II statement, so it popped mm. up in the 1960s. Like this uh, the is Catholic, co- yeah, the, the the Catholics used to be yeah. sta- used to be staunch that if you were not a Catholic, you were not saved. It used to be that simple. Yeah, but Vatican like, one, but, but Vat- yeah, but in but in uh, Vatican II, there was there was a document release called Una Tatsa Redetta Grazio, and um, basically uh, in that they sort of. Uh, they they promoted Protestants from being heretics to separate brethren, which was quite kind of them. Um, but, but also, uh, but also, <laughs> they, separate they, brethren. Yeah, no, we got an, <laughs> got, we got got an up, we got an upgrade, guys. That, that's lovely. Of we got a promotion. But, but, that's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But 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 the, in yeah. that same document is that statement that you just read out. Like, um, yeah, I think, yeah but, Catholic, um, I think what the Catholic yeah. Church is trying to do is like appeal to everyone. It's it's actually the start. I kind of trace. Oh. I think ecumenism is, you know, older, older than Vatican II. But I feel like Vatican II was the first time any type of church went in hard on it, like really it hard seems, on it. Yeah, uh, it seems that the conspiracy theory about the Roman Catholic Church actually create uh, created uh, Islam to take control of uh, Jerusalem. It sounds like it's more true than it's if, uh, just a theory. Well, uh, Mutaz, I, I would love to get onto that. I don't really, like, here's the thing. Um, part, I partly don't believe in that because of a lot of historical evidence that seems to suggest it's not the case the, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church even existed during a time of the um, Catholic Yeah, but... Okay, I'm going to finish. Okay, okay. So again, the, the way the, the Catholic Church is ordered is that they'll have councils that affirm different things. Like the the current council that has dominated um, the Vatican II cult is Vatican II. So that's the, that. So currently, the Church is under the Vatican II premit. So that would be those things in the Catholic Catechism. Are those things agreed at Trent? Um, the Council of Florence, Vatican II, Vatican I, stuff like that. Except Vatican I is ignored by Vatican II. But <laughs> let's move that aside. Let's, let's push that aside. Um, what we have there is a different form of religion than you see during the time of, let's say, Muhammad. Although like people like John of Damascus will argue for iconography, I don't believe he's a Roman Catholic in that he held to, for example, the um, Immaculate Conception of Mary. I don't know whether he held to perpetual virginity of Mary. But uh, he, he is... did. To, he did, to be fair, because quite a few mm. of them started to believe that around the four hundreds. You can trace that one back pretty. Yeah, pretty it, do, it doesn't. I, I don't listen. I also believe that as well because even reading John Chrysostom, John Chrysostom makes it clear that Mary was perpetually virgin um, in his homilies. So yeah, like, that was something that starts to crop up. Although you don't find it for three hundred years at least, there must have been an error. But it's, it's yeah, more four hundred. It's more four hundred and onwards. It is. 400, yeah. Oh, yeah, 400, yeah. My bad. Yeah, 400. Thanks for the correction. Well, yeah, right, around that time, right? I, I, I just don't see there being validity for the argument. Sorry, close your eyes, Sam. Close your eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I don't want you to... Yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, say, say what it's safe. Well, keep closing them. Keep closing them. Um, Because I've got to turn the flashing off. Uh, okay, there you go. Um, So, as yeah, I was right. saying, look, I, I don't really see any validity in the claim that the... um. Catholic Church invented Islam. Plus, Islam comes out of Arabia. Um, supposedly, there was this Nestorian by the name of Waraka bin Nafal, who went to, uh, oh, obviously, was and, the um, uncle of his... And uh, his uh, first wife, yeah, Khadija. His first wife, Khadija. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was the, the uncle of the first yeah. wife, Khadija. But we just don't see any, any reference from any Catholic, Roman Catholic at the time, Stating, oh yeah, by the way, we created Islam, and yeah, we worship one God now. So you know what, you you guys. By the way, um, um, by the way, uh, uh, Khadija and uh, Waraka uh, bin bin uh, 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 the, uh, the, these two are, are actually Christians. Uh, but which denomination? Uh, I don't know. But some uh, there's a Jesuit uh, priest. Uh, I believe his, uh, he's a from Spain. Uh, he's a, a Spanish, but uh, I, I believe uh, the moment after he left the Roman Catholic Church, he exposed uh, some secrets, and uh, you know, he got killed. Uh, I believe in the eighties, uh, uh, assassinated. And he told that. Close your eyes, Sam. By the way, close your eyes, Sam. Um, yeah. yeah go on, bro. 
Yeah, and uh, he exposed uh, some some truth that they sent two Roman Catholic. Uh, one is a nun, and the other was a priest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So say it again. Say it again. So it's clear. So yeah, sorry. Uh, do, do you want me to start from the oh, oh, beginning? Or? No, the reason why I had to tell Sam to close his eyes is because there's lights flashing, and obviously Sam has a condition. I'm not going to dox him. He just yeah, he can't. It would interfere with him, so that's why I had to. Close, you had to close it because the light. If I, if I turn it off, because I'm trying to charge my laptop, if I turn it off, it starts flashing again. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, go on. You can you can explain. It. Um, so basically, you said there was a Catholic priest. Start from there. Um, the, yeah, there was a a Catholic uh, a priest. He he was part of the Jesuit and uh, the hijacker, uh, basically. And when he left the Roman Catholic Church, because he exposed some secrets, and I believe uh, that was back in the 70s or the 80s. And when he left, he exposed uh, some secrets, and one of them that actually that uh, the Roman Catholic Church in the in the 6th century, uh, half of the 6th century, they sent a one, one nun and one priest. And uh, that nun turned out to be the first wife of the Prophet Muhammad. The Pope at that time told the, the nun to leave her, her uh, religion and pretend that she was a businesswoman. Because, you know, uh, uh, at that time, the Roman Catholic Church was very rich. So that, so that makes sense why she, she's also I, I, rich. Can I correct you, actually? At the time, the mm. Catholic Church was actually pretty poor because there was no such thing as the Roman Catholic Church. Like uh, the church as a whole was quite poor at that time. Like, um, mm -hmm. like, uh, like uh, uh, as as much as a fun conspiracy theory as it sounds, when you look at the genuine history now of the church, you, the first time the Roman the Roman Catholic Church starts to exist is after the schism, the Great Schism mm -hmm. in the one thousands. Because um, up until that point, the East and the West were united. You know, you had the Sea of Rome, you had the Sea of Constantinople, Alexandria and Antioch, you know, like, um, and they were all, they're all one and the same. They were just known as the Catholic Church, not the Roman Catholic Church, but just the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And the, the Roman Catholic Church doesn't have any power. In fact, the Pope doesn't have any power, really, up until the Great Schism. That's when you start to see the papacy really take form. You know what I mean? Like. As mu I'm just saying, and, uh, as much, as much as yeah, 1000 year, what was it? 1054, wasn't it, Jono? The, the yeah, schism. yeah, Ten, it, was, it was 1055, the schism, in fact. And in 1057, in fact, you get the, um, I think it's the uh, papal, um, what's it called? The papal documentum or something, papum documentum, which basically outlines how the, um, the, the uh, Rome has primacy, and that that primacy affords the Bishop of Rome universal primacy over the entire church. That's when you see start to see its language, because in Gregory, Gregory the Great, you don't see its language. In fact, Gregory the Great in the sixth century, or Pope Gregory the Great, states that um, anybody who calls himself the universal Bishop of the Church is an antichrist. Um, so already, already, there's a distinction between what happens okay. post tenth century and what happens before in the sixth century or the seventh century. Uh and what and what you also have to understand but so is you if you see like say pre the the one thousands someone called say pope something even the orthodox who don't acknowledge the papacy in any way shape or form would still call them that like the mm. the word the term pope was just a term of endearment for the bishop of rome in the same way that uh, the bishop of constantinople was always known as the ecumenical patriarch so, like, um, they all had their own terms of endearment, if you like. The, the yeah. bishop of Ro the bishop of Rome has always been known as the Pope, but that doesn't mean papacy per se. Like, no, it doesn't I mean, mean papacy. It, does, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean uh, Vatican One or Vatican Two or the Council of Trent papacy or any like post um, tenth century papacy. And you can sort of see that from the fact that even the Coptic Church has a Pope because uh, it's just a term that the metropolitans of each sea were given each sea like the roman sea the greek sea the uh the alexandrian sea were given the role of pope uh they had a pope it's just, it's but, just a uh, okay uh, uh, but i i i have a question uh does that mean that uh uh the coptic uh, orthodox uh, christians are going to help um, so when you say, when I say, so what I say is the institution itself, 
typically if it follows the uh, anything against it. So if, if if it follows things that are anti-holy writ, for example, veneration of saints, prayers to other gods, stuff like that. If the institution itself follows these things and teaches them as dogma, then yes, it is a false institution and it must be called out. There is no way we should align ourselves with things that are anti-biblical. But the individual Christian, we can't know their state. We, we can know their standing because they're currently a Coptic, right? But we don't know their state. They can end up leaving. But it's our duty as Christians to affirm what is holy writ because the Bible says in Amen. 2 Timothy 4 to, to keep to sound doctrine. And 2 Timothy, Timothy 3.16, all scriptures are God-breathed. Um, so it's, it's clear. And obviously, First Thessalonians, if anybody goes against these traditions, have no part for, have no part with him. And what's termed the traditions? Typically, it's the Bible um, or the New Testament uh, as afforded, because that's what was deemed to traditions or infallible or could I also revelation. Add, could I also add, it's also, I think, also individual cases, because you can get, like, say, people who are cradle Catholics, and that's all they've ever known. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, um, and I'd like to think that god will have mercy on those people because you never know all they could all they might have is just a love of god and they're just kind of just doing what the church has told them to mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like so i'd like to think god has mercy on those people but Mutza, this, this yeah. video that we're but this video we're reviewing Mutza is uh i'm a papist in this video and it's sorry but the point yeah. is i'm a papist i'm a papist in this video and i'm a proper hardcore one as well and I would say, fact, if you so, are, so, a so I'll ask, so I'll yeah. ask uh, Jono this question: And my standing back then, would you have counted me as a Christian? Like um, looking no. through your lenses now, exactly. So Look, no, no, not not your standing, your state. I don't. Obviously, I know now your state was you're born again, but that's from that's your standing now. Um, whether your standing meets your state, whether you're going to die in a state, I don't know. I don't have infallible knowledge of anything. But I would say if one is a Coptic and one agrees with the veneration of icons, the veneration of saints, the traditions within the Coptic church, which, by the way, uh, I've read a, a book. It's called 2,000 Years of Coptic History. Because right? I wanted to become Coptic myself. Um, and you'll you find within that book, <laughs> you'll, fi yeah, you'll find within that book, in fact, it's, uh, there's a story. In, in Surah 19, you would know this, Mutaz, right? Where Mary goes up to the tree, right? And the, Jesus speaks from the womb. That's a four did that, according to the Coptic tradition, they count that as being true. So the Quran states it's true, and the Coptic tradition holds that that the Gnostic gospel that says it's true is also true. Um, that's not that's not the only reason to not be Coptic, but I would argue if if you oh at, yeah, uh, peace on me the day I was born, the day I, I will die, and the day I will be back to life. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Jesus said it when, when he was a baby. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So like they and he, they have they have another tradition according to their church, which comes from a Gnostic gospel as well, in which Jesus, when he was in Egypt, um, his mother had actually milk well, not milked him, but had actually like breastfed him, and some of that milk fell onto the stones. And that that's those stones were seen to give some form of like sustenance or health to people. That's why nowadays in Egypt, that's there's still this area. I don't know whether you know about it, but there's this area. That's uh, that has some sort wow. of because veneration. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's veneration, and it's not only that. They do teach a form of veneration within their churches, like in terms of icons and imagery and statues as well. So it's important yeah, yeah. to avoid these things. If if one is going to be Eastern, sorry, not Eastern Orthodox, my bad. Um, in the Syriac tradition, the other thing, of course, is um the the um Nestorian view of Christ. I would mm -hmm. argue that if you believe Christ is one nature and not two natures, you give yourself a philosophical contradiction. I wouldn't say you're going to help. Because we can, people can die on a misunderstanding, but there's an issue there. Um, if yeah, Christ yeah. is one will, one nature, and I mentioned this to Amy myself, if, what, so if Christ is one nature, then basically what you're saying is that God within himself, within his being, has human nature. That's a big error. And yet the Syriac and the Alexandrian churches taught this and they still teach this um that's a yeah um i don't know exactly yeah. uh, because you know uh, basically that jesus is like the 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 word of god manifested in the in the flesh and uh, the coptic uh, orthodox uh, church they believe that you know jesus is actually one nature with uh with the father and with his uh humanity but that doesn't that doesn't make sense 
Because if you say that Jesus is, is just one nature, that means that the, the person that was died on the cross was God. That's the, that, that, that doesn't make sense because God is a spirit and uh, Jesus is, is, the, is the body. So when, yeah, yeah, when, when, yeah, exactly. When Jesus was crucified, that was the body, not the spirit. You can't kill a, a, a spirit. So imagine killing a God spirit. You can't. can't. God, God is eternal. Is eternal. Yeah, the invisible things are eternal. It says yeah. the visible things are eternal, so the spirit is eternal. Um, I, I think the best way... way... Hello, mate. I hope you're good. Just uh, let me put my little thing on. Um, I think the best way to do this kind of argument is to nip everything in the bud. It all starts... The, the best way to address anything about going into the thick of all this debate, this father said this, that, the other, is where it all starts, the apostolic church... If I go to Isaiah 28, 10, it says, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So we make doctrine from lots of sources. So if we um, go to... Where... So what, what premise is that based upon? I'm going to argue like Jay Dodd. What premise is that based upon? <laughs> so, so God is the same today as he was yesterday. He is the word no, what, what, what's your worst Dude, what's your her hermeneutical principle? Which you get that's infallible to interpret what doctrine is. He's trying to wind you up. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me slipping, then, mate. There's too many big words. I, I'm, there. Ju I'm just listen. I'm just like showing you how Jay Dyer would argue against you, like, and yeah. Um, so we, it's a risky yeah, we one. See, yeah, we see God's teachings all the way through the Bible. So when we go to this yeah. one, when we go to. I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome, and I will build my church on Peter. And if we go to what it actually says, looking at the original Greek, I see Jesus as referring to two types of rocks and one is related to the other, but they are not the same. Peter Petros, a masculine noun, properly a stone, a pebble, such as a small rock founded along the pathway. Oh yeah, yeah. That was awesome, yeah. Petra, a feminine noun, a mass of connected rock. The question is, what's the point of bringing up the two types of rocks in response to Peter's confession? But if you go a little bit later on in, in this one, Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. <laughs> you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So is, is oh. either of it referencing that is a small pebble now all you need to do is go on precept upon precept line upon line and i'll just give a few because i don't want to be here all day um so uh, basically uh this is this is the the the, the verse that the catholic actually use to confirm that the their the roman catholic church is the only true church but yeah, they didn't true. actually. Well, no, 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 not the only. So it would be church, Matthew yeah, sixteen, because... eighteen. To... One minute, Sam. So it would be Matthew sixteen, eighteen to nineteen. Typically, um, is used to infer that Peter is the rock of the church. Uh, yeah. Just laying out there. Go ahead, Sam. No, I was just saying, yeah. not, not, not that they're the true church. Just simply that Peter's got primacy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all you have to do is look at the examples of Jesus Christ. For no one can lay a foundation other that has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. There's so many references to Jesus Christ being the rock. And if we're to take oh, it sure. line upon line, pre precept upon precept, he's saying Peter is a stumbling block, quoting him as a pebble. And on this chair, on this rock, I shall, on this huge rock, I shall build my church. Yeah, because so it's the confession of his faith. That's just the whole point, because yeah. if you read earlier, like in Matthew 16, he says, what do you say I am? And, and Peter says, responds with, you are Jesus, the son of the, the blessed one. Uh, the son of God, right? That, that's that's the whole confession, the Messiah, yeah. the son of God. And that's the rock of the confession. I think a church yeah. father mentions that. I don't know whether you know that, Sam, but a, a church father actually mentions that that is what the rock of faith is. I think that's Athenagoras. Yeah. He, he he so like it, yeah. early, early, early church fathers actually got to that conclusion. But then there's some who claim that he was, the, the, he did have some form of primacy. Uh, but what Rome affords primacy to is like the, the idea that essentially uh, like, Peter is not only like just primate, he's not only the first uh, amongst all equals. So, uh, according to the um, East North Orthodox tradition, but he actually uh, has primacy over the church, he's infallible. I mean, he, he what he states uh, cannot be gone against, and that he had with this charism of infallibility, 
when he speaks ex cathedra, he can determine different things. All of these are assumptions, by the way. Yeah. Found yeah. They, they, they are assumptions, though. Oh, go on, Adam, you go first. Sorry, mate. I've, got to, I've got to nip out and do some editing in a second, literally. Um, Jesus says, um, you see this temple, I shall destroy it and again build it in three days and raise it up again in three days. And he's talking about himself in third person. So we see examples of Jesus talking in third person. And once you understand that, it, it absolutely nips the whole exactly. the pebble upon pebble going through this succession. It, it, we need to just hammer in on this one point because that's... Oh, yeah, you know, he also does that in John 3.11, right? He also speaks just, about himself in third person. But I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll show you. Just like I yeah. speaks about himself in third person. Let me, let me just read something out to you, which not a lot of people know, in fact. In John 3, and I've got my Bible here, in fact, um, verse 11... Um, which is all the way up here. He says, truly, truly, I say unto you, we speak, this is Jesus speaking, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. That That is the entire third person. John 3.11, literally there. You can, see it, I don't know whether you can see it from the page. That is, that is a big show. That that Jesus that's that actually on, on, makes on, sense. Yeah, land upon land, precept upon precept. Oh, what I'd encourage... Um, any apostolic person after this is to just look at the examples. I've got 15 next to me in the private right. chat. Adam, Adam, just one more thing, yeah? Just one thing. Right. They're not apostolic. They're not apostolic. This is apostolic. Okay, okay. so when we say apostolic, we Amen. mean... Yeah, 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 yeah. Apostles. So don't call yeah. them apostolic. They're not. They're okay, ecclesialists. Yeah, yeah. They're traditionists. Yeah. They're papists mm -hmm. and easterners. I want you to start calling these people what they are. Popish yeah. devils and easterners. That's the term that should, you should use. Popish devils, icon worshippers, icon kisses. <laughs> That's what. You, like, come he, on, like, these he's are been, not, he's, been, he's, he's been reading too much Calvin. Yeah, uh, uh, because I I don't believe that uh, in the in the Bible that you uh, that you you can have uh, statues and uh, pictures of the Lord Jesus because he. he uh, yeah, because we we worship it in in spirit. We we don't worship it in in stone or pictures. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. No. But right, also, guys, I feel I feel. Oh, it's been nice All to right. see you. Right, by the way, Adam. Um, yeah, see you good later, to see you. I'm, I'm in and out, Bran. I'm in and out. See you soon. Right. See you soon. But, no, but no, it's a quick, really quick point. I also don't think though. There's nothing wrong with saying that if you like Pete. In my opinion, that Peter kind of was the rock of the church in a sense, and he was the leader of the apostles in a sense. Because like that still doesn't get you to the papacy. It's like, for example, the Eastern Orthodox will admit that 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 uh, you know Peter was the leader of the apostles and he had some form of primacy, but that didn't get them to the conclusion of the papacy either. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, um, it's like I think in scripture it's pretty obvious that Peter was the leader of the disciples, but it was more of a case of once again, like it was in the early church, a first amongst equals kind of thing, rather than yeah. the, the head superior. Like um, at, the council, at the, ca at the council yeah, of Jerusalem, at the council of Jerusalem, he Peter yeah, is not is, is, yeah he's not the one who Peter is not the one who settles the matter, is it? It's settled between them all. So that's my point. Yeah. Like like yeah, um, so it's the first amongst equal structure. What you got to understand is like Peter, for example, in First Peter five first one, he says he, he calls himself amongst elders. Implying that he has no no primitive distinction, he's not he's not claiming that. Although he is the first to speak, for example, Acts two, he's the first to come out because the guy's got a loud voice, right? And and he's the one that's more abrasive than most, right? Uh, but it, like that's why he's called the Rock. He, he has a bit of strength in him, like, and that's typically the notion we're given from scriptures. By the way, we can make an inference without it being infallible. Uh, to um, Nello, by the way, you can read Harry Potter, for example. And make the inference that Harry was a wizard. <laughs> I'm going to show you how much of a geek I am. Harry was a wizard. That Dumbledore did truly visit him. That Dumbledore took him to Hogwarts. Hogwarts, And then, of course, all sorts of adventures ensued between him, Hermione, and Ron Weasley. Right? You could infer that from the text without needing J.K. Rowling behind you, sniffing your bungle. Right? I, I, I'm <laughs> sick of these stupid papers. To worry about. <laughs> Just, you, forgot, you, forgot, you forgot the most important bit. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. Yes, yes, <laughs> imagine, um, <laughs> imagine if you went back in time and went up to Peter and went, "You're the Pope, Peter." Uh, what, what's You're that? The Pope. <laughs> <laughs> my, my friend, what's that? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
and yeah. also uh by the way guys i i also want to uh, ask you a question about the apocrypha uh was it added or was it actually uh removed like okay. uh, for, yeah yeah so so what i typically say is if you look at the earliest so the, the apocrypha is something hotly debated like i'm not going to claim it isn't um but it is something hotly debated. You, you can find the Apocrypha, for example, in the 1611 um, translation of the Bible. You, it's, it's literally there in the King James, right? But does that By the way, uh, you you also have a, a, a website that actually shows the, the, the dates uh, of the Bible. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was actually going to uh, get yeah. to that. So, yeah, yeah, so you have the Bible canon list. This is it, right? The, what I would say is this. What the Jews have thought of, so what the Jews have thought canon in their time, is what Jesus appeals to. In Matthew 22, I think it's verse 31, Jesus says, have you read, have you not read what God has said, implying that the scriptures are God speaking? You've got to understand, he is appealing to what is written at the time. If the Jews understood that their, their canon was that of what, that which was had at the time, then there's no reason for us to determine there's any other canon or any other le um, letters, right? I'm going to go into against Appion first, right? So this is Josephus against Appion, right? Josephus is a Jew. It says here, this work was written by Josephus, a Jewish aristocrat, right? He he listed the books as 22 books because this matches the Hebrew alphabet, right? This is what we find. All of these books um, are in the Protestant canon. There is no um, Roman Catholic or Orthodox because the, the um, notation here is showing that there's no Roman Catholic or Orthodox um books here they're not placed in this this is our earliest form of a canon list right and there's only 22 books this is josephus against apion 94 ad now i mean the bible says in romans 3 right the jews have been given the oracles of god so if the pharisaic jews had this canon then we don't really need to go any further but let's 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 go further we have Brianios list this is 100 all right again ezra is listed here as ezra's right but we have the Protestant canon. This canon yes. list was discovered within a manuscript that was all, that also contained the Didache, one and two Clement, and letters of Ignatius of Antioch. Notice. Um, by the way, uh, you 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 also have the uh, first and second Samuel and first and second uh, Kings and first second and Chronicles. Uh, are, are these also uh, before in the ninety uh, A.D. Uh, so first, second count Samuel. So ninety four AD. Let's look in there. Yeah. So, okay. So what happens in Samuel is that it's not listed as first and second. What it's listed as is, in fact, all these books mm. are listed as the same. So there is instead of it being Samuel first and second, as you see in your Bibles today, it would mm -hmm. be Samuel. It would just be Samuel. So this these one and two books would just be considered together Samuel. They would just be called Samuel. It's oh, like, okay. the historical it's, view it's, of the it's, books. It's like, oh, for okay. example, it's like, for example, at, during the period of more scholasticism, if you like, when Christians started to work things out a bit more. Um, it's like the book, something like the Book of Romans. That was just one continuous letter. So there was no chapter divisions in it. Uh, and that was yeah. how the early Christians would have read it. It was just one yeah. continuous letter. Like, yeah, um, the Bible but, but, itself but, but, was just a tome. It just, it, there was no chapter divisions. There was no verse numbers. It was just a tome. In yeah, 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 uh, uh, yeah. Uh, be, uh, because the uh, I believe in the Dead Sea uh, Scrolls, uh, it doesn't have uh, numbers to the verses. Hmm, it doesn't and, exactly answer the books. Yeah, as well. yeah. The Moratorium okay. fragment. So we find this, for example. This is a Latin document from the seventh or eighth century, believed to be translated from the Greek, originating in the late second century. It's apparently translating from the Greek in the late second century. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know that for certain, but it's saying. It's By the way. Way. Uh, the Ethiopian uh, Bible uh, was actually found in, in, in the fourth uh, century, by the way, and, it, and it's actually the, the, the same thing that, that we have in, in our Bibles, which is much, right, much earlier than, than the Greek, than the Latin, uh, which is, I, I believe, it was dated in uh, 390 uh, AD. So, hopefully, the scholars will update this and to show the Muslims that we actually do have earlier manuscripts. Let me yeah, show yeah, you yeah. that. But, but also, yeah, yeah, but also, go ahead and show me. Um, one minute, so oh, I'm just want to finish sorry, this. Right. When I finish a thought, then it gets distracted. I'm just like, oh, oh I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. 
so basically what we have here is the new testament right and then we've got some we've got one book of supposedly the old testament the catholics and that's what's found here right this is not of course an entire canon of what is considered the bible today but you can clearly see of course the books in our new testament at least here uh, there's no dispute and the catholics eastern orthodox and protestants have not really disputed about what the new testament is it's just the old testament where we've had disputations um, but yeah, wisdom of Solomon is there, um, so it's early at least. But does that mean that we hold to it as tradition? No, I mean we we have earlier canons than that. The Moratorium <laughs> fragment, um, I've already read that. Um, Melito's list or Melito Cyrus list includes wisdom of Solomon, um, but the, the omitted books are Nehemiah. Remember, so like Nehemiah is Protestant, Esther is Protestant, Lamentations is Protestant. That that's removed from this. Uh, this is the list of the Old Testament books was originally donated denoted, my bad, by Melito of Sardis, but recorded by Eusebius, ecclesiastical history. Melito was a bishop in Sardis, so it's, it's basically just a rough canon list. Uh, but what we find consistently, if you go further on, let's say Athanasius of Alexandria, I can go through all of these lists if people want me to, that's fine. It's all there, you can just look it up, I can send a link in the chat. Uh, uh, yes, sir, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, Yes, please. Uh, please uh, send the link. This yeah, yeah I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it through the um, actual. What I want to do is I'm going to send it through the actual Streamyard private chat. Um, paste. So yeah, I'm going to continue. Um, so yeah, so what we have here is this is clearly a Bible canon list, right? But obviously we have things that are being separated, right? Athanasius in his 39 list, festival letter has cited a majority of the books to be read as that which is inferred in the Catholic canon, uh, except from the Shepherd of Hermes, which I don't think anybody has in their canon, according to Didoke, which is not in the canon. But in the Roman Catholic and East Orthodox canon, we have these books right now. Um, that's Athanasius of Alexandra. He's the one that by necessity gets us um, the uh, language of Trinit Trinitarianism, and yet he has that which is closer to a Protestant canon than an Eastern Orthodox or a Roman Catholic canon. So it's already a problem for those who think that the early church supports their idea of the canon, when we clearly see that the canon, the books that are in our canon are supported by majority, by a majority of the earliest witness of the church, uh, including Athanasius of Alexandria. And then obviously you get on to Jerome, uh, who should be here, yeah, so, um, yeah. Baruch and the uh, other books that are actually uh, in the color of uh, purple was uh, was added uh, by the Catholic Church. So, yeah, what happened is, and I think you can explain this better than me, Sam, but what happened is during the Council of Florence, like the Deuterocanon books or the second books, the, the books deemed secondary, were added into the main... Um, um, scripture, the main body of scripture. For what reason? I, I don't know. I think it's because maybe councils inferred that they were holy writ, but these councils are pretty much late and they're not really reading into the Hebrew truth. That is what the Hebrews actually received. That is the Old Testament they did. Um, and the argument I have from papists and Eastern Orthodox is, oh, well, well, should we trust the church more than the Jews? Well, we don't deny that. We're not trusting Jews. We're trusting that God has infallibly guided this word, which I believe he has. Through spiritual means, and God can do that. I don't see any problem with God doing it. I don't have to trust a group of men for that. That's just, it just is what it is. Just as, as God can guide the scriptures of the New Testament today, God could have done that with the Old Testament. There's no denial about that. Otherwise, otherwise, you're going to have to argue that the Sanhedrin and the, uh, the Talmud should be accepted as authoritative because they're the ones that gave you your scriptures. You see how you have a problem now? Um, yeah, yeah, so you're, you're, basi you. <laughs> you're, you're basically pretty much right. It's like those books are added in Florence, but they're made official canon, like proper authoritative canon in Trent, because yeah. uh, because obviously the uh, Protestants come along, and one of the things that they do challenge quite heavily is purgatory, and um, you can make a case for purgatory with the Book of Maccabees, especially, like so. So th they were added for that reason. They also they also went down the logic of so for example Athanasius um, in the Incarnation you know his book the Incarnation he quotes wisdom right because to be fair there's a pretty blatant prophecy of Jesus in wisdom but the pro but the Protestant view of the Apocrypha is there can be useful almost like historical data in these books it's not like they're like they're they're like you know demonic or anything 
but we mm. just simply say that they're not divinely inspired. That's all. They're it not is. because they don't but, confirm with that, which is our earliest sources, which is the Bible, in fact, that we have today. It doesn't confirm that. But first of all, the truth. You're saying stop fighting Christians with clout. If I wanted clout, do you think I would go against Soko Films, which has like one hundred thousand plus subscribers now? Do you think I would do that? Like honestly, I would, it would fare me better to be an accumulator. See how much views we'd get on this live right now. I don't care about clout. You can Ecum keep ecumenic ecumenicalists are like chicken defending KFC. <laughs> oh, I, love I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's true. They're like chicken KFC. It's so true though, because they're being eaten up by the stupid doctrine. Um, nobody's fight. So what we're doing is essentially calling now, as the Bible says, we're calling out people who are not affirming sound doctrine, and that's what we're called to do. If you don't like it, then then don't affirm the Christianity in any sort of ways. I don't know whether you guys are Christians or not, uh, but if you are Bobites, come up, defend your Bobism biblically. Don't tell me what you believe, because I don't care what you believe. Come up here and defend your Bobism biblically. Show me where we are, we are to align ourselves with heretics who have another gospel, another doctrine about Christ, another Christ, in fact. Show us show us biblically where we can do that. And also pray to saints and pray to Mary. Because the presupposition of ecumenism is that all these individuals are, are churches. So all these individual churches are true churches. And in fact, we should just settle our differences, ignore them, in fact, and just become basically a cumulist and just care about the individual uh, Catholic or the individual Eastern Orthodox in terms of uh, what they do against a um, Muslim or something like that. Um, you're not a Protestant because if you weren't a Protestant, you would be in line with Protestant, the, the Protestant thought. The earliest Protestant thought was, at, at least from what we know, of course, by the Lutherans maybe, but the earliest true Protestant reformed thought view we have is that, yeah, the Catholic Church is the Antichrist and they were not a cumulist. They were not ecumenists. They didn't believe in ecumenicalism. Um, calling yourself a Protestant is just a term anyway. I don't know what church you're part of. Um, so that's irrelevant. Uh, but if you want to defend it, come up. Defend your popery, whatever it is you believe. No, sorry, your ecumenicalism, my bad. Or if you're a papist, defend your popery. Defend everything, man. I'm going to be here. <laughs> come at us. Come at us. Come uh, so yeah, no, I, I've showed you the canon list. Now I want to get back to the video because we've been Dilly dallying on this video for a while. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we've been getting into some fun topics, actually. To be very yeah, fair. we have, we have. To be fair. So, <laughs> if, if every church, church. <laughs> if, if, if every church, this if, church, if every church, if every church has errors in it, then that means who are you to judge? Go back a minute. Go back a minute. Oh, he's, he's got he's got a point. Not... If I believe that every church has errors in it, then who am I to judge? But I don't obviously believe that every no, church. No, no, I think I, I said something to you behind the camera and I'm not sure what I said, but you could just hear me. I'm just wondering what yeah, I said. Yeah, I think I heard you. I thought you actually said something just then, right? It was, I, yeah, I it said was... something papist as well. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> yeah, papist not some... church. If, church. If every church if every church has errors in the church, no. Does every church have errors in it? Yes. Right then. So if, if every church if every church if every church ah, pause it, did you hear that? Church... I no, pointed I, hear I must I must have pointed at you. I just about heard me. I said your his church pointing at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was funny for me at that moment in time. Yeah. That's what I mean. Oh. And you ended up coming part of my church. So it is. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Gone uh, full, no, gone full, gone bloody full circle. Can't believe it. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <all> right. <laughs> has errors in it, and that means who are you to judge? That Deal is. with your own fellowship first. I'm not that saying is. that. I'm saying I'm not after. Don't go your life, no, sorry, I'm sorry, JC, Come on. I'm not anathematizing <laughs> the Catholics. I'm not saying you're going yeah. to. Hell. I am saying you're going to hell. If you do not believe in Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. Now, do I know your state? So you're coming. If your standing is you're in the Roman Catholic Church, you are on your way to hell. It's just is what it is. If you are watching this and you hear my voice, leave the Catholic Church. It's as simple as that. If you're on the other side of Alaska and you've never heard this, then I don't know. But currently, if you're watching this, you're condemned already because you've heard the truth and not kept it. So that, that is it for me. Uh, and part of my evangelistic effort, as the Bible says, uh, I've mentioned many times, Second Timothy 4 2, uh, First Thessalonians, I've mentioned all over the Bible, we're told to keep some doctrine. If you don't affirm you've got, that, then you've got errors in your theology. You need to repent and seek the Lord Jesus Christ and seek his word. Have his word in your heart. The Bible says to the law and to the testimony, if they don't have, if they don't, um, have our words or they don't have Lord's words, then they don't have any light in them. Um, 
I think that's Psalms 80 on the top of my head. Sorry, not Psalms 80 on the top of my head. My bad. It's on here on my list of quotes. But yeah, you can look it up. Um, what was you going to say? No, I was just simply going to say, just leave the church. I mean, I'm living proof of that. I'm watching this and I'm a papist in this video. <laughs> yeah. I'm a papist. Like, like, I'm a, I'm a, and I'm a proper, and I, and I pro, I'm a proper staunch one as well. Yeah, like, like, uh, like, like uh, we had you and me, like, well, uh, technically you, me and Ben. But we, you know, we had, um, you know, some fiery debates on, say, Discord or, say, in the more of the corner of Speaker's Corner rather than on camera. Like, yeah, and I'll destroy like, both of y'all, man. Yeah, he likes to think. <laughs> he, like, he likes I to think, guys. I'll destroy both of y'all, man. It, it, it was just so easy to destroy both of y'all, and that's why you were Calvinist right now, my son. Because <laughs> <laughs> of that destruction. It was, it, it, it was predestined. <laughs> <laughs> it was predestined, bro. That's just yeah, that's just my pre excuse for it. That's just my excuse for everything now. It was predestined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. true. Oh, all right, let's go. Oh, we're yeah. talking about the institution I'm, of the dog. I'm saying, look, you, I get you, you. I'm not saying you don't have to be in solid scripture to go to heaven. You got it, yeah. Yeah. I'm saying you do not have to be in solid scripture to get to heaven. Yeah. I don't oh, believe yeah. that. Yeah. But your church, let it play, let it play you, for a minute. Let it play for yeah. a minute. Let it play for a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I have to be in Douglas to be saved, and that's the whole... And I agree with you that I, I disagree But they have authority. With the church on that. I disagree with the Catholic Church. And, and that's where the yeah. problem lies. But what, I'm I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is, the, this forum, Speaker's Corner, is not the forum to, 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 to fight those things out. Go to the pub, have a meal, and talk to one another away from the camera. Oh, yes, of course, Bob. Let's go and talk away from the camera where people can see that there's evident, there's evident differences between true Christianity and the false one you've amalgamated. And also... And he won't just, even do it there, though. He won't even do it there, though. That's he won't even do it there. He keeps, run, he keeps running. Bob, if you're watching this, you've been running from me since, like, 2020, mate. I mean, you've been running from this topic since 2020. Uh, and I hope all the Bob that's watching know that. Uh, but just to correct myself briefly, so, first of all, Again, when it comes to soul scripture, again, if you are affirming God's word is primacy, and this is where I have to correct myself because I had that, that issue before. Then, And if you know, because again, knowledge, the Bible says in Luke 12, for example, to much is given, much is required. If you have read the scriptures have you, and you have knowledge of it, and yet you, you choose to consider the magisterium or the papacy to be above it or to be equal to it in terms of um, authority, then there is a fundamental issue there. Um, then you are leading yourself to hell. Because again, the presuppositions within the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox hierarchy is that they have a tradition which is equal to scripture, like the three-legged stool within Roman Catholicism, let's say, or the magisterium um, within Eastern Orthodoxy, that, that gives them these other binding authorities, such as, let's say, um, of course, prayers to saints, prayers to Mary, stuff like that. All this stuff they're afforded within their church, right? So if you're not affirming what is holy writ, and you're instead running to other traditions, I would argue you don't have any light in you. As I mentioned, to the law and to the testimony, if anybody doesn't affirm the word of God, they don't have his light in them. This is God breathed. This is God speaking. So, yes, you must believe in Solar Scripture to be the Christian. So um, the by the way, I... Uh, yeah. yeah, go on. Go on, uh, go on. Uh, okay. Uh, so, 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 basically, the uh, Oriental Orthodox uh, Christians are heretics. Like the yes. Roman Catholics, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 they're all heretics, bro. Oh, well, okay. Well, but, but when we say this, we're obviously more specifically on about the institution. It's not right. fair for us to judge the soul of the person sat in the pews. But the one thing we can judge, though, is like uh, the hierarchies within said churches. That's the one thing that we can do. Because they yeah, actually well, know. They actually know what's going on. They're aware of it. Like, but Yeah, the, I've the, mentioned... The, the, the average yeah, person bro. in the pew... No, don't judge them. And I've oh, mentioned okay. multiple times. I've mentioned multiple times that if you're watching this stream and you are true Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox, whatever, if you're part of these churches and in agreement with what they're doing, we can have that discussion. Right now, I don't think you're Christian. Your standing before me is that you're not a Christian. You're not affirming the truth of Christ. That is it. You're not affirming the gospel. You're in rebellion against the gospel. And that's what I would say. But it's the individual who I don't know. They could be anywhere. They could be in Alaska, Timbuktu, or wherever who has never heard the gospel, I, I don't know. I just don't know. And I can't make that assertion. But I would rather people watching this understand that, yeah, um, these, these are issues. And we, Church of England, Methodist, yes. And we call out those institutions too. 
Well, what except from Calvinist? Cal 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 Calvinist <laughs> isn't Calvinist isn't really a denomination, though. This yeah, it's not a denomination. It's not a denomination, though. You get, and, you, get um, you get you get Calvinistic Methodists or even Calvinistic Church Anglicans, in other words. Yeah, it's a theological like, presupposition. It's not a church. Um, Calvinism. It's not people ain't going, I'm going to the Calvinist church today, boys. No, no, that, no it's reformed yeah. theology. That's what it is. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, I, I myself as a new believer, uh, I can't uh, visit th these uh, churches uh, at all. You can't visit these churches. I mean, I've visited them. There's nothing wrong with visiting them. It's like you're visiting a mosque. If you visit a mosque, if you pray inside that mosque, yeah, it's something wrong. But if you're just visiting them, there's no problem. There, there, um, it's like there's there's, oh. a, there's a real difference between being like a tourist, if you like, and then praying in the places. It's like, it's like for example, when we went to Westminster Cathedral, uh, last, you know, Saturday just gone. While I was waiting for you guys, I went inside just to have a look because I was like, I just, I just wanted to remind myself how beautiful that cathedral actually is on the inside. Like I love the architecture and stuff. It's beautiful. Doesn't mean I'm going to pray in there. Devil. Papers. No, I'm just, <laughs> but you know what I mean, though, isn't it? You know what I mean, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking to myself, though, I'd love to colonize this building and turn it into like a reformed church, though. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of awesome. But uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, but, I, mean, uh, with, um, I would say, like, to visit these churches, I wouldn't go against somebody. I would say, but of course, I would never turn people away from reading church fathers, reading the Bible. But I would say, let the Bible be your presupposition always, as you know, Mutas, and as you know, Sam. Let the Bible be your presupposition in all things, because it is the word of God. It's our earliest apostolic witness. And when you do that, you, you can't get it wrong, because when they start praying the saints, or when you've got John of Damascus saying, oh, boy, yeah, by the way, icons were venerated so early, and yet there's only two sources he points to, and both of them don't say anybody was venerating the saints. Um, yeah, also, I mean, like, uh, but, uh, but yeah. also read, but also read the church fathers for what they are. Like one of my best yeah. examples is is Ignatius, because one thing I used to use as a proof text for the authority of bishops was um, his letter to the Smyrnans when, because he has a, he, he says obey the bishop, obey the bishop, obey the bishop. But there was one line especially I used to home in on, which is where Ignatius says where where your bishop is. So he says your, not a. He says where your bishop is, Christ is. Hang on, yeah. though. Who was the who was the bishop of Smyrna? Polycarp was, wasn't he? So so and it's pretty obvious that they were friends. The two of them were friends because he writes a letter specifically to Polycarp. So it, so all he's saying is, is just obey Polycarp. This guy's going to lead you into the truth. That's all mm. Ignatius is doing. He's not he's not trying to say that, like, bishops are like sacramental and all this. He's not trying to make that argument. He's just simply saying, follow Polycarp. That's it. <laughs> So the church fathers are in hell. I mean, it depends. I mean, first of all, what church father are you referring to? Uh, I mean, first of all, you could read their sources, but are you claiming all of them are against sort of scripture? Are you claiming all of them are against reformed doctrine? Are you making that claim and that assumption? Because you're going to have to back it up. Um, I could turn, just I could because turn they didn't say sort of scripture and start holding up the King James Bible as I would today, um, that does not necessarily mean they didn't believe in it. And they did believe in faith alone. In, for example, in in um, I think it's kind of King James. Brown's New letter. King James. New King James. Exactly. Ah, uh, no, James. no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the King James Bible. There's only one King James Bible, my friend. There's only one exactly. Bible. There's only three thousand, bro. <laughs> That's what I mean. Who finds me a New King James? New for what, bro? <laughs> we got the Bible, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Let me finish. Let me finish. What I was going to say. I was going to say. Look, like in response to this, um, like first of all, depends which church hall you're affirming. Do you believe that Augustine was in hell? Or are you a? It looks like you may be Eastern Orthodox. So, do you believe that pre-double predestination is an heresy? Um, do you believe that all the, for example, the iconoclast councils, for example, convened by bishops in your church? Because I've shown that on the stream. You can go back if you want to watch it. The iconoclast councils are Cairo and Elvira. Do you believe that these people in hell? You, because according to your church, if you're an Eastern Orthodox, venerating icons. If you do not venerate icons, sorry, then you're anathema. If you, if you deem it fully and of the devil, devil, you're anathema. So you're going to hell, according to your church, for venerating, sorry, for refusing to venerate icons. And yet, images the from the Elvira, uh, yeah, statues. The of El, exactly. Mm. The Synod of Elvira, though, in 309, this is before the Council of Nicaea, states that these things are heretical, they're of the Antichrist. So, wow. I mean, according to you, I mean, I could show you on the screen if you want me to. Like, it's literally here. Like, 
Um, I think I actually quit off. Do you know what I find actually amazing? Because this is only something I've discovered today. But like the Eastern Orthodox uh, reject original sin. And yet Augustine was one of the, like, not the first person to write about original sin, but he was the first person to expound it. That's what he was. He was the first guy to write, like, literally an entire book about it. Like, mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, and <clears throat> and yet, so yeah. he holds he holds a position they don't even believe in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, uh, I mean, I wanna, uh, yeah, I, 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 what was he going to say quickly? Because I just want to show you yeah, yeah. a lot of, of, of Elvira, but just to prove yeah, yeah. that this is just this like uh, council. five uh, seconds uh, only. Uh, I want to uh, respond to a comment by Rory, the uh, Sir Hitty. He, he says, We, the church, what are you on about? Yeah, uh, the, like uh, Rory's, on our, Rory's on our yeah, side, by the way. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, uh, because he, he's a, a new uh, believer uh, like me. Uh, Brother Rory, uh, the church, according to, to, to the Bible, yes, is, is the body of or, or is the group of the believers. But we are talking, we are not uh, talking uh, about this church. We are talking about the Catholic church. We are talking about the Orthodox church. You know what I'm saying? So that's all. Yeah, uh, please, John, you know, go ahead. Uh, yeah, 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 of course. We're talking about specific institutions. We're not talking about the, the, the true church because it's the ecclesia, it's the called out ones. Um, so I'm going to continue. Look, um, Synod of Elvira. So, although like there, there are historical sources that claim, oh, it may have not happened, I mean, there, there's no proof to claim that it may have not happened. Uh, but we have here Synod held at Elvira in the Roman province of Hispania Betio. Um, as there is Hispania Betio, I don't know what that is. Uh, but it's a Roman province in southern Spain. Its date has not been exactly determined, but it's believed to be in the first quarter of the fourth century. So approximately, according to the dating historians, 305 to 3 to 6. It was one of the three councils together with the Synod of Ailes, 314, the Synod of Ancria, uh, which was another ecclesiastical council, the first approached the character of general councils and prepared the way for the first ecumenical council, which of course would be, I think, 325 Nicaea, which, uh, of course, Athanasius of Alexandria, Arius, you know, whatever stuff, right? Um, so if you look at the canons of the council of Elvira, remember, this is 305, the dating, um, and I'm going to look for the icon state. So here's, here's what it is. Canon 36 says, it has seemed good that images should not be in churches, so that what is venerated and worshipped be not painted on walls. It allegedly forbids in churches, uh, according to Philip Schaff, Schaff, you know, sorry, it allegedly forbids pictures in churches. It's my bad. And it, this just goes on a spill about it, but it's been quoted by Protestants as an argument against image worship because it's one of the earliest councils. And Philip Schaff, of course, is the one who gets us the, um, the uh, he's a Protestant theologian, but he's the one who basically translates the church fathers, essentially, into the English um, from their original language. But yeah, Canon 36, of this council, which is 305, um, says specifically that pictures should not be in churches in case they're venerated. And then you've got Hiera saying that it's, it's of the Antichrist. I mean, imagine, wow. <laughs> this is 306. So why is it people are still to this day affording the, the uh, pictures worship and um, having pictures of a Romanized Mary and Cesare Borgia, so, or who they call Jesus, yeah. and all this stuff, if it's not there in the early Christian centuries. So uh, basically, this is this is in the third uh, century. Interesting. No, and uh, it's even do, before do you, Nicaea. Do, do you know, uh, yeah. Uh, do, do you know uh, what's also uh, even more uh, funnier is that in the uh, 18th uh, century, they created the doctrine uh, that that you can actually ask Mary to pray uh, for you, which is a later, very, very, very later, uh, you know, uh, doctrine that was actually created. I believe that there was a, an, an old guy, he, he used to be Catholic, and he made a, a one-hour video exposing the, the doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church that sal uh, salvation is by works, not by faith, which is actually completely go opposite of what Jesus actually uh, taught. Exactly. And if you read this, look, this is a subtle precedent on us, the, the beneath our projection. So this is supposedly the earliest prayer to Mary, the subtle precedent. Um, it, so it says here, consent, I don't know what I'm doing. Beneath our protection, ancient Greek. 
So this is apparently the earliest prayer to Mary we have. It's an ancient Christian hymn and prayer. It's not Christian or ancient. It's one of the oldest known Marian prayers among the most ancient preserved hymns to the Blessed Virgin. Papyrus 470 containing a substantial portion of the prayer was dated initially to the third or fourth century. However, later scholars promote, proposed a much later dating, even as far as the ninth century. So like, I, I believe, of course, what the later scholarship states today, this is a ninth century prayer, because I don't believe according to even when you get to Tertullian prayer, he says to pray to God. Irenaeus says to pray to God, and you don't, you don't pray to angels. I've got a whole list of quotes from these church fathers that, that are before Nicaea that states you pray to God. Um, so I don't I don't believe in early dating for the subject precedent, but oftentimes Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholics, and the Oriental Orthodox will argue this is a early prayer, the subtum precedent. Um, but we don't have any proof of it, really. But I'm, I'm just, I'm just showing that because that's an argument they make. Do, um, do you know one of the one of the reasons why it is one of the reasons it is easy to argue against the Catholic Church is because of how scholastic they are. They like they like to have everything written down. And um, <laughs> but what but what but what's interesting is, say things like as you said, it was in the. Am I right in saying you said it was in the 18th century they started praying to Mary or at least made it a doctrine anyway? That's kind mm -hmm. of true. That is kind of true, but they they were practicing it hundreds and hundreds of years before that. But it took wow. until then, but but it, but it but it took until then for them to to actually make it doctrine, make it dogma. It's the same mm -hmm. with the papacy. The the, the the Vatican I papacy had been being practiced like that for a really long time. Obviously, post schism, I'm century. obviously on, I'm, I'm obviously on yeah. about. But but um, that was the first time they actually put it into on pen to paper, if you like, and made it doctrine. So, I would like, argue uh, from the ninth century we sort of see pres. I mean, you could argue for for Augustine. By the way, I would argue they, from like the yeah. ninth century. What one minute, Mutas? I would argue from the ninth century. That's when we truly see a form forms of prayer to saints really taking hold, and that's why you have the subtum president and stuff like that as an early you, you, you even see the papacy um, start to take form around the ninth century as well, because I mean, the whole schism happens because the the, the bishop of Rome adds the filioque to the creed. Yeah. But he basically, but he basically says, "I'm not taking it back," doesn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, uh, so, so yeah, you kind of see those those seeds being sown, kind of like ninth century ish. But, but like, um, but more the point is, is because like with the with the Eastern Orthodox, they rely on just tradition, but more a mystical kind of tradition. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, they're not. Yeah, they don't really, they, they don't really write. They they don't really write things down. Whereas whereas yeah. the Catholics all the Catholics always have. And so that's why it makes it easier for the Catholics to trace things. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, so, so why didn't you, like, say that the Pope was infallible until Vatican I? Why didn't you, like, write down the Marian dogmas until Vatican I, et cetera, et cetera? Like, why were these things? Why did it take this long? Like, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, um, uh, by the way, Mutaz, what was you going to say? Uh, I want to continue with this video because it's been, I've been up and up. What was you going to say, Mutaz? Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, it, you know, uh, I, I I was actually reading the catechism of, of the of the Catholic uh, Church, and they they say that Mary, the Church is holy, the Most Holy God is her author, Christ, her bridegroom, gave Himself up to make the, her holy. The Spirit of holiness gives her life, since she still includes sinners. She is the sinless one made up of sinners. Her holiness shines in the saints. In Mary, she is already all holy. So basically, uh, I mean, the, 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 these guys, they, they're trying to put Mary as the same level of uh, Jesus, as a mediatrix instead of uh, Jesus, which is absolutely... So basically, they are literally replacing Jesus Christ yeah. with with uh, Mary. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Not, so important. Not, now you see why we have to do this. It's just the case. And Bob, this is a uh, this is uh, secondary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is uh, like bro, like uh, this is you know these guys are going completely opposite what it actually says in the in the in the Bible. They even have the, their own Bible. Uh, it's the Jesuit Bible. They are replacing even verses. They are corrupting so many verses, so many uh, chapters. I mean, if you look at the history of the King James Bible. They even, uh, the Roman Catholic Church uh, warned the English uh, people in the Britain 
that if they if they try to translate the Bible to to their language to English uh, language, they will send their army and they will kill everyone. Yes, that, yes, uh, John, that's actually did happen. And guess what? The the British uh, won the war and they translated the Bible to to English. Now we have the King James in in our hands, and there were people trying to kill them for it. Can you believe it? Yeah. Because there's my, there's, yeah. there's my Jesuit Bible, by the way. I just found it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, man. No, it's from from my paper days. But but um, but yeah, like at the end of at the end of the day, it's it's like I, like I say the, the the way you got a view well, not got a view, but so the Catholic polemic against what you would say because I I memorized this one. Obviously, we would say, I'm going to say one thing that you we'll all agree with, but the other thing we won't agree with, you know, Christ is the new Adam, because that, that's what, um, you know, Adam Adam fell, Adam sinned, and so therefore we needed to be redeemed. The second Adam. Adam. Yes. Um, I know this where, and and, and, uh, and uh, so by, so for the Catholic logic, Mary by definition is the new Eve. And so mm. they they look at her as the new Ark of the Covenant, and so for that reason, that's why she's immaculately conceived. She has no stain of original sin. Right, Hebrews she, 6 literally she, states that Jesus is the Ark of the Covenant. That's why he is. Like, all of the objects within the Ark, Adam's star, for example, the manna, for example, that's the bread of Jesus Christ. Like, all of this stuff is afforded to Christ, the Lord, the Torah. Jesus Christ is literally the Lord. That's, that's, he's the affirmation of that, which is holy writ, because he is the Lord. He affirms the Lord. He says, I did not come to... Um, destroy the law to but to fulfill it in fact um and that's what yeah. he does in his flesh and because oh, like yeah, that ark of the covenant uh, directed as christ and also mary's not the ark of the covenant for one thing and one thing only and that one thing uh, is nice. like, one, one minute one minute moves us um, okay, sorry. That, that's that's ark of the covenant is like that ark of the covenant according to first samuel uh and second samuel as well if you look at it but specifically first samuel the ark of the covenant was able to destroy nations and make it sick um mary's not afforded any of that because she has no charism of validity she is not god she cannot destroy nations neither can she punish nations she she merely bore christ in her womb um romans yeah. 16 look if you want to jump on we can talk about church vandals and bastards especially you bastards who have painted your churches with romanized depictions of people who don't exist like that's not jesus christ in your church dude that's not mary in your church mary did not look like that jesus did not look like that I'm sorry to be, listen. Even your earliest, even the earliest depictions of Christ we've got show him having curly hair. What do you do with that? He doesn't have long Cesare Borgia flowing hair. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that guy was a homosexual, uh, by the way, and 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 they were using his his looks as a way to picture what the the, the Lord Jesus Christ looked it was, like. It was and it's yeah, Michael, Michelangelo's lover. Yeah, I've heard this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is so offensive. This is why I started to even remove all the pictures that, that I had that kind of look like uh, Jesus. Now, I'm not even trying to look uh, any kind of a picture, to be honest with you. But anyway, uh, just one question, and that's it, so, so we can continue the, the video. Uh, Juno. Yeah. Do you have do you have the 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 book the Catholic in, uh, Encyclopedia of the second uh, edition? Uh, Catholic Encyclopedia is that what you're referring to? You said no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because because uh, oh, that okay. one, yeah, yeah. Because uh, that book actually will, will tell you that uh, Mary is their mediatrix, by the way. But oh, yeah, now, yeah. It's the Catholic I have Catholic. it. Yeah, I have this. I've got it. I've got it online, but I haven't got it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because uh, they they have so many uh, editions that that they actually removed it. Uh, by the way, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because they 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 got busted. But anyway, let's continue. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm just bowing down to an image of Saint John the Apostle. <laughs> bowing down to an image. Oh wow, Saint John the Divine. You paper, you 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 papist. Uh, I nearly swore then. You paint this devil. <laughs> I've reverted it again. Yes, sue me. <laughs> no, this is just, I, I, honestly, I just got this at a charity shop. It's just a picture. I, I just like it. I mean, you can have icons as just pictures, but it's when you saw it, 
like crowding them in your house and putting candles to them. That's when I think, honestly, dude, you need to grow up. <laughs> well, well, it's so, like, well, it's like, well, it's like in my bedroom. I'm not in my bedroom, but in my bedroom is mine, mine of Peter. Like, it's still up on the ball. There's just yeah. a picture of Peter. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's that simple to me now. Yeah, it's that right. simple. Anyway, let's let's continue because I want to get this over and done with. Oh ah, no, okay. You and Bob going at it. Yeah, that, that sounded wrong though. <laughs> That's a, 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 I said going a at it, not getting. No homo, dude. Bro, like, yeah, <laughs> bro, bro, what, what's going on? Where did I call you a heretic? May I just point out, you don't have to believe any Mary's doctrines. You have to believe the doctrine. There is not one dogma that this is what the Catholic Catechism is saying. Which Catholic? It's not what I'm saying. It's what your church is saying. Which Catholic? Let's wrap it up. Guys, guys, guys. But this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Why not have? Why not? I only want to make just one comment. I just want to make one comment. Destruction! Look at Mike Gonzalez there. He can't even bloody comment. Just, just, just one comment. So I remember hearing this and thinking, "No, Michael, you're wrong." So either Michael is it was ignorant in this scenario, or he's just straight up lying. Yeah. You do have to believe the Marian dogmas. That's why they're called dogmas. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're called like, dogmas, dude. <laughs> like, like, like the Catholics make a distinction between dogmas and doctrines. You, 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 you have to believe dogmas to be a Catholic. The doctrines, you can kind of half get a pass on them, like, to some degree, but you do not get a pass on the dogmas. You don't get a pass on them. No, that, that which is afforded dogma, according to Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, is worthy of an anathema if you don't believe in it. So you're not a part of the church. And that's what I actually looked up and saw. And I was like, what is this? Because this is not biblical. Uh, nobody should believe it. Um, so if, if I believe that Mary was bodily assumed, which is insane and really unfounded, if I have to believe that to be saved, what kind of gospel is that? And that's the question I'd ask the Catholics, because that's not the gospel in the Bible. The gospel of the Bible tells us you're saved through Christ, uh, not by your own works, not by your own deeds, not before going for the mass or, oblig or obligatory prayers to Mary or whatever, it, especially not any any uh, dogmas. And that's where it really started to click in my head that this is not a church. It's not a true church. Uh, Michael Gonzalez obviously can't, he can't fathom those arguments. And even, even to this day, even to this day, you're going to see on my channel, if you look, me and Michael Gonzalez are going at it because he's making stupid arguments yet again. <laughs> yet again. Yeah. I might play that. That's funny. No, I, I literally rinsed him. He, he came it, to Sarah with the most stupid result. He's brought it to me, in fact, about, oh, the... You worship a German man. You worship yeah. a German man. I didn't know Jesus was a German. <laughs> 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 they just seriously have this like um switch in their brain which just says Luther <laughs> every time they meet us because for some reason they think we're Lutherans. Funny. Um anyway, I need to play the rest of this because yeah, Michael. No, but I just wanted to point that oh, one out because that was that was a like I say, he's either ignorant in that scenario or he's straight up lying. Like, do you know what I mean? I, I believe he's straight up lying because again, even at that point, it was like well, you don't know what the catechism says. Catechism. Bro, he's bro, what, 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 what are you achieving right now? What are you achieving right now? Recently believes in bro. What are you achieving right now? What are you achieving right now? Let okay, let him answer and then let him answer and then we we'll wrap it up. Correct. Correct. Achieving the truth, Bob. Why do you shop and get out of the way? I'm not saying to be a thing because each folk brings out a new catechism. So which catechism? What are you achieving? Right Which Catholic? The Catechism of Vatican II, so it doesn't really matter. Told you <laughs> I think you're it's looking to, to correct him by the the these, these conversations, conversations will okay. never end. Okay. Yes, they will they never end. They always change. This from is Vatican II to now. That's how okay. it's been. This is how the devil wins, guys. And they made those yeah. This is how the devil wins. Our Lord said, "A house divided against itself will fall." And we rescind them. We're not part of the same house, though. Do you know? Do you notice how JC is like pointing at him? <laughs> yeah, but, but but the funny thing is, even JC agrees that he's anathema because he one is a humanist, which is anathema, and also because he believes in evolution, which is something within the Catholic Church that's not deep, uh, even though there are certain aspects. I, 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 I said just post Vatican II, there are statements affirming that view. I don't know. So, uh, I it's, more, it, like, as, it, it's, it's more, but... it's more like in Catholicism, you must believe Adam and Eve are real people. That's yeah, yeah, the that's line the that, that, yeah, that's, that's the line they. That's the line they draw. And like, he doesn't. If, he if, believes that he believes that it's just a story, it's an allegory. But and he said that multiple times. But if it's allegorical, and according to the Catholic Church, it's just, like you have to believe that to be a, a Catholic. According to their traditions, you wouldn't be a Roman Catholic either. You would be anathema, just the same way as I am. And that's the point of contention. 
Bob can say what he wants about not attacking the church or, or going against the church or saying a house against uh, divided against itself cannot stand, but we're not part of the same house. The Bible says, for example, Jesus says himself, anybody who enters this fold, the sheepfold another way is a thief and a beggar. These people are entering another way. They're entering through Mary. Mary, you can't enter in through Mary. You have to enter in through Jesus Christ. There's only one name in which a man must be saved, and that's through the name of Jesus Christ. But Amen. also, this is the presupposition of what we find in the Bible. Again, everything within the Bible is presupposition connected to who Jesus is. If you don't have this as your presupposition, already you're failed. Right? As um, I think it's uh, Cornelius Van Til would mention in his book, The Defense of the Faith. And in fact, I'm going to read out a bit, actually, because I've got it here. Um, so so sorry, the... the I'm going to uh, mute us, mute us, because I don't want to have to sorry. say it. I just, yeah, um, yeah. Just, yeah, let me land my plane. So I, I just want to read this. I just have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, sorry. no, I hear you, I hear you. I, there's, no, uh, there's no issue with having questions. I just need to complete this. So um, in Roman Catholic apologetics, the natural mind is not challenged to make his every thought captive and obedience to Christ. The natural mind is merely asked to add wisdom and the work of Christ to that which man is in of himself. The result of this Roman Catholic compromise is twofold. Negatively, it results in a failure to show the natural man the internal inconsistency and futility of his effort to find meaning in life. For if Roman Catholic apologies, apologetics were to demonstrate to the natural man the futility of his position, it would at the same time demonstrate the futility of its own position. If by any means of this philosophy, of his philosophy and natural theology, the Roman Catholic apologist proves the existence of God, then he proves the existence of a God such as proved by Aristotle, a God who is nothing more than an abstract universal principle of being, a God who, instead of giving meaning to universe, is itself in need of contingency of this universe. So again, you know, he, he goes on to talk about natural theology, but the whole point he's stating is that you must have, you must have this special revelation to have an understanding of what God is in the first place. So this, if this is your presupposition of how to affirm sound doctrine, then you're not going to go wrong. That's the whole point Cornelius Van Til and other reformers are stating. Cornelius Van Til wasn't a reformer, I'm just stating. Um, that's the whole point. When we afford the scriptures their, their primacy, we don't have any reason to believe that the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches are part of the household of God. I mean, they're very clear to anybody watching who's a bobby. Come and defend your bobbery. Um, <laughs> yeah, go on, Mutas. Go on. Yeah, uh, uh, I just want to ask, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, does the, the the Bible was was actually has had uh, 66 books or was it uh, 80 books? Um, no, it was 66 oh, never, books. Never, never, ever 80. <laughs> it's never been 80 books Ooh. or 81 books. It's, it's always been 66 books. Although there's been, as I said before, the canon of scripture has been hotly debated throughout history. What we say, though, is what Jerome says in the 4th century and what Athanasius says is that there are things like Hebrew truth. And the Bible says in Romans 3, uh, if you read it, Romans 3, which I'm going to get up actually on here, um, in, not on here, sorry, in my Bible, which I've got here. Romans 3, uh, that's chapter 9, what am I on about? Yeah. So Romans chapter 3, what advantage then has the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So unto the Jews were committed the oracles of God. There's no denial about that. Uh, if unto the Jew were committed the oracles of God, then we need not go any further. Um, what Jesus affirmed as scripture, what the apostles called God breathed, was, the, was what the Jews had at that time. And that would have been, of course, the um, 22 or 39 books of the Old Testament. Not the um, seven books or the how many so books other churches of eight later added because of a mm. misunderstanding of what was to be read versus what was to be uh, what is holy writ. There was a misunderstanding in the early church about what was to be read and what was holy writ. Uh, I could go, right, there's channels, for example, there's a channel called Born Again RN. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard of him, bro, but he, he goes into the canon extensively. He does it more than me. Like, he has, he's had debates with Trent Horn on this. Heard of Trent Horn, Mutas? Oh, what? Have you heard of Trent Horn? Trent Horn, uh, Trent Horn the uh, council or the council yeah. of uh, no, Trent no, Horn? No, it's, it's, no, it's a Catholic apologist. His it's, name it's is Trent Catholic. Horn. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I know him. Yeah, so there's been a debate between, obviously, um, Steve Christie or Born Again RN, that's his uh, YouTube name, uh, between Trent Horn um, on the... Uh, on basically the scriptures. 
And if you watch his videos, he literally will go through the scriptures, proving, of course, that yeah, you know, um, prayer to saints, for example, was an abomination. And he even has a talk recently with an individual. I can't remember his name. But he had a recent. He had a talk recently with another, another individual on his channel about the canon. But I would suggest going through his videos because he has a lot of healthy I, videos on this topic. J uh, James we'll White here. isn't bad. James White isn't very bad in regards to the canon. Actually, I give. I'm not it, his biggest fan, but I give him his credit on that. He isn't bad. I mean, yeah, of course, James White as well would be another one to go to, or James Jimmy White. Um, Go to him for the canon. I would suggest, though, uh, take James White with a grain of salt. He's not the best at it, to be honest. I don't think he's the best. Uh, no, he's but, not. Yeah. No, he's not. But he's, but it, you know, he isn't bad at it. To be fair, I'm not he really trying to endorse it. him. I'm not trying to endorse him. To be honest, I'm not really James White's biggest fan. Yeah, and you just have to try to pin James White canon, um, all of that stuff. Uh, Ignore this guy. I don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> ignore, ignore, ignore this guy. I, don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't say he's not a Christian. I would just say just, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. you mean uh, Pastor uh, Stephen? Yeah, there's something yeah. wrong with him, man. Uh, yeah. This, this guy is my favorite, bro. I mean, this, I, I, don't, I don't deny what he says. I mean, he's got a lot of truth in him. Just he's a bit. This wacky. guy he's is just, he's is, just uh, more awesome. He's just, he's just more yeah. extreme. That's all. He is a bit extreme on some things. Exactly. Yeah. That that's why that, that's why I, I want to see Christians that are more uh, extreme. Like we we need to show that, uh, the people that we actually believe in in, in our Bible. You know what I'm saying? That we are not. No, 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 no. I mean, but I mean extreme in a bad way. Like like yeah. um like for example, he's on record as you know he was up once asked what should homosexuals do, and he just goes kill themselves. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, like, like he, he's endor you know, he's endorsing them to kill themselves, sort of thing. So, like, yeah, he's on some issues, he is a, a bit too extreme. There's definitely yeah. truth in the guy, there's definitely truth in the guy, granted, but he Ooh. needs to take a chill pill basically sometimes. Yeah, I mean, telling way. gays that they should kill themselves is not the way to go. As much as Chichi Ooh. Man, look, look bun fire upon That's... Chichi Man, but. Like at the end of the day, like you, you don't kill yourselves, man. Like find Jesus. <laughs> you shouldn't kill yourself. But but but, it, but it's like he yeah, he believes he be but he believes also that it's because homosexuals can't repent. He believes that, but it's like it. Paul completely contradicts that in Corinthians. So oh you know yeah I mean? yeah that's oh. that's a lie. Yeah, yeah. homosexuals can yeah. repent. Um, so so yeah, I'm just saying I'm just saying there's definitely truth in the guy, but he is a bit extreme in some regards, but extreme in the bad way of saying it. Oh, okay. yeah, he is. I'm gonna run so I'm gonna run through the rest of this video now, um, because I'm obviously destroying Michael Gonzalez. I'm gonna destroy Sam is and, I, and I know I know I jump in as well yeah. at some point, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Christendom has just fallen just in the West please because of this kind of sectarianism. Saying. Well, please don't them has saying. fallen in the West because of this kind of sectarianism. I mean, which, which is, is unbiblical. Which is unbiblical. <laughs> which, is unbiblical which is unbiblical. The reality is we are never, ever going to agree. Let us accept that truth. Yeah. The Protestants will never agree with the Catholics. The Catholics will never agree I with agree. the Protestants. Yeah, we accept that truth. That's why we consider you heretics. Anyway. So let's work <laughs> things that we do agree the upon. The Bible says that we want to What agree. do we agree upon? One we agree upon, 19. Do we agree upon Christ Bob? is the Saviour. Yeah. We agree upon yeah. that we should worship God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. We agree upon that people need to know about our Lord Jesus Christ. There are lots of people out here that and don't that the know. the only gospel of Christ no, saves, which is what Rome know, doesn't believe in. They don't know. They don't know. Oh, boom. I mean, I just said it there, but it's the truth, yeah. Um, although I'm still ecumenical, yeah, that's it's just you're a true. Weird, you're a weird kind of ecumenicalist at this point. I think you're yeah. kind of coming to your senses a little bit, aren't you? But you haven't quite hit. It hasn't quite hit home yet, but it's Yeah, starting. it's because, right. For me, I was going to the pub with these guys. I was like friends with them, so I didn't. For me, it was like I was battling with my emotions. Like, like, should I really say this? Um, but when I started to notice that Bob was misinterpreting the way what I was saying, and maybe I didn't make it very clear as well, which is to be fair. Uh, but when I started to notice, that, I really noticed that he was honestly an enemy of the gospel, and Bob is an enemy of the gospel, um, and that's just very true. Bob is an enemy of the gospel. He's a heretic. He's a heretic. He needs to repent, and if he doesn't repent, then May the Lord deal with him, because in my opinion, he's more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe. But in, in my opinion, like, um, 
if he does not repent of his actions, in my honesty, he's very dangerous. In my opinion, he's very dangerous. Not in the sense that he's doing anything good for the kingdom, but in the sense that he's misleading people to a heterodox belief that will get a lot of people sent to hell if they believe in this. Bobitism is a dangerous heresy. Um, it blurs we need, them we need, we need a council. Leaders. We need a council to officially condemn Bobism as a heresy. That's what we need. Yeah. <laughs> the anti Bobite heresy. Sorry, the, the, sorry, the, the anti Bobite council. I mean, they already did that with Origin. I mean, he still hasn't learned. He's still an annihilationist. But we already we already condemned him and his father Origin so many years ago in the fifth council. Or the fourth, was yeah, it fourth? True. No, it's the fifth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just play the rest of this because uh, all he's doing is to, have you noticed Bob always does this because I think he's narcissistic or at least mentally ill in some respect. Echo um, chamber, bro. Always, echo chamber, yeah, he you know always I mean? does that. He always has the camera, he has to speak to the camera to get his voice out because it's all about him, it's not about conversing with me. He doesn't care what I think, to be honest. It's about him, he has to have the final say. It's Pope Bob. And anybody else can get one stuffed up. You get me? This is muscular Christianity, bro, where we just don't care about the gospel. I mean, yeah, anyway. Cringe. I mean. <laughs> we know what the gospel is. And, and this kind of sectarian argument, you're yeah. spending minutes, hours, arguing with one another. Who's speaking to the Jew? Who's speaking to the Muslim? Who's speaking to the neo-pagan atheist? <laughs> that, is funny. that was oh, that funny. Dude. Oh, that yeah, dude. Baby. I love Jamie. He's, he's a funny guy. Uh, who's speaking to the neo pagan? I, I mean, the problem is we have. That's the thing. So that's not really an argument. Um, and yeah, we don't believe in the same gospel, so it doesn't really matter. If somebody's taking something wrong, they're taking them to help. Um, don't come home to Rome. Come home to Jesus. <laughs> who's speaking to the Hindu and the Sikh yeah. while you're all fighting one another? Yeah. Oh, but, but, hold on, hold on. I know I keep stopping this, but while my man spent the last six years in Speaker's Corner doing no evangelism, and yet me, Amy, other, uh, other apologists have gone outside of the park, done evangelism to different groups. He's still speaking to the same Sunni Muslims over and over again and getting nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, David, how many times have you spoken to Siraj? For example, even David. David spoke to Siraj about 30 times. David spoke to Siraj more than I've had hot dinners, and I've had a lot of hot dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Never patch yeah, but, but, but like uh, but like also how yeah. it's like it could it could be a meme at this point, but how many times has Bob debated Hashim? How many times has yeah. that happened? Like yeah. you know, he thinks that's the gospel. The gospel is to go and preach to Hashim, baptizing him in the name of Father Son of the Spirit. It's ridiculous. Sectarian, yeah. go and have your sectarian arguments other days of the week, but on Sundays at the corner. Go and speak to the non-Christian. Uh, no, uh, because you are non-Christians. That's the whole point. That's what we're doing. So you told us to go and speak to non-Christians. That's what we're doing. We're speaking to people like you who believe in the heresy of uh, ecumenism, um, the heresy of Rome and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what we're doing, bro. I mean, and who are you to dictate? Like, the one Ben was right, actually. If Ben, if you're watching, Ben was right. This guy believes he's his own pope. Um, and I, honestly, I don't believe anybody following Bob in this sense, I'm sorry, you've got to find Christianity. You've got to see the Bible, man. Come on, man. Come on, this is just ridiculous. Let's continue. Yes. Uh, well, that's a I'm not that saying don't. I'm just saying be wise when you have these conversations. Is it unbiblical to call you to be wise? Well, Bob, as no. I said before, 1 Corinthians 11, 19 said there must be heresies amongst you. So I'm not against there being churches that are heretical. I'm just saying. And my point is that if ever... Oh, that's a crap argument. <laughs> Oh, oh no. cringe. <laughs> uh, I mean, so first of all, let me just go, let me just debunk myself real quickly, man. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to debunk myself. Um if I'm debating myself, I'll destroy myself because that's that's the type of guy I am. I could I, I could, don't even I, let I, I could debunk, get away with it. I I, yeah. I could debunk the younger version of me to be fair, so you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like we could all do that though. When I was seven, I said some stupid stuff. Wait, <laughs> Where's 1 Corinthians 7? Sorry, 1 Corinthians 11, 19, I think I mentioned in this verse. So, in fact, let me get up on the screen. Ugh, it takes so much longer to just get up on the thing. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 19. Because nowadays I'm so used to just using my Bible. Um, NIV is a crap translation. I'm sorry. Any, any of you guys got NIV, man? Bin it. Just get, just get a KJV, man. <laughs> Uh, I'll do or, new, new King James version just for or, or new, or, or, yeah. or new King James. <laughs> no, 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 no. The mm. new, the new uh, King James is not that really good. 
Yeah, it's not. It's not good. I'm only doing it for the illiterates out here. <coughs> no, I'm joking. I'm, tr- I'm joking. So much. <laughs> uh, okay, for there must be factions among you. So let's read from the, the so first verse seventeen. Now, in given these instructions, I hope you can see it on. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can see it. Um, um, now, in given these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it, for there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognised among you. Now, this is important, those who are approved. If it was the case that there must be factions amongst us, and therefore we're all Christians, the very next line wouldn't say that those who are approved among you may be recognised among re- Sorry, maybe recognize amongst you. It's evidently clear that there were individuals who were who had division in the in the Corinthian church. There were some who, who believed that fornication and adultery was acceptable, and that was the factions. The, obviously, the other faction was the um, the the followers of Cephas, um, the followers of Apollos. Again, but it was about those who are following sound doctrine. That's why it says that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Approved by who? Approved by the church, the church proper, the the apostolic witness. Um, again, but the, the, the factions were not the Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox Church. They were not the Oriental Orthodox Church. So the context that I applied to Bob does not apply here. The Roman Catholic it, a church is a different religion. The Eastern Orthodox Church is a different religion. Uh, and as the Bible says, in fact, let's get up. Second Timothy 4, verse 2. I think it's Second Timothy off the top of my head, it may be second to be four, verse two. I've got a list of um, four, verse two. What am I doing? Three, full chapter. Come on. Uh, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the kingdom of the living and dead at his appearing and as, sorry, and his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long, long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and will, they, and will turn their ears away from the truth, Bob, and will t- be turned aside to fables, Bob. <laughs> 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 Paul, Paul <laughs> preempted <laughs> Bob. <laughs> yeah, literally talks about th- this whole verse is about Bob. Like, this is what Bob is supposed to do. He's not doing it. So this is against Bob. This is contra Bob. Again, they will not endure sound doctrine, but we are to preach sound doctrine. We are to convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. They were teaching their doctrine. So we are to do that. We're to rebuke as well. Rebuke, exhort. Um, nowhere in the Bible does it say don't don't argue at Hyde Park amongst each other in case the Muslims see it and they might, you know, decide, you know, Christianity is not for me, brother, because I can't see any. <laughs> wow, but, 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 but also, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> but also, I'm just not being funny, but the Muslims are not stupid. Like, yeah, like they, 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 they know that there are differences between Roman Catholics, Protestants and Orthodox that can't be reconciled. They're fully aware of this. They're not stupid. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you ever saw that debate between uh, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician and Bob in regards to it was kind of in regards to the Trinity, sort of. And um, Bob yeah, you know, uses, yeah. the, uses the essence energy distinction. Um, of uh, the Orthodox Church, and Jake very rightly points out he w- that Bob is only speaking for the Orthodox in that scenario. Yeah, you know, like like he uh, Jake very rightly points that out. Like uh, you know, there's there's no harm in Jake doing that. Like um, so th- th- my point is, yeah, the Muslims are not stupid. They're fully aware of these of these differences, and they know these differences can't be reconciled. Yeah, they know that. They know these differences can't be reconciled, and that's the thing. Like. Like Hashim knows it, Mansoor knows it, and they just want to sweep it under the rug as if it's they want to hide it like it's a dirty nappy, like they're ashamed of it. It's like, no, it's there. Um, deal with it or get dealt with. And that's what's happened to the Christians at Speaker's Corner. Uh, but now I, I, I suggest any Muslim watching, um, you've heard these arguments, go and use them. Uh, the reason why I would I would say that is because I want you honestly, if you know anything about what we stated here, to use it. Like, don't shy away from using this. Again, these are issues that they have to deal with. And they won't, if they won't deal with it from our side, then you can use this. Again, I'm saying this because not because I agree with Muslims. I want to side with Muslims. I don't care about all that stuff. Like, Muhammad did not exist. Um, the Allah of Islam is not the true God of Christianity because he's not the true God of anything. He didn't exist. Um, and he doesn't exist. Um, so at the end of the day, like, uh, how I see it, though, like, if anything, I'm fine with you guys using this information and using it 
to your advantage. The issue is, of course, a house of, of divided against itself cannot stand. And what I've noticed is that the Muslims will not use this argument because either they're not intelligent enough to do so or because they don't want to. Because <laughs> they know but, themselves but, it benefits but them. What the, what the, yeah. what, but what, maybe what they've gotten used to is the, the Christians there using their sort of hodgepodge kind of tactic of just mixing all the denominations together. Hmm. Like, like, me and my at least at least as far as i'm aware when when me and ben were going there regularly as catholics we were one of the few who strictly argued from the catholic point of view do you know what i mean yeah. we wouldn't use any protestant arguments any orthodox arguments we all we argued strictly from the catholic view and like like i don't think there are many christians in speaker's corner who actually do that who actually really stand to their own tradition if you like i don't think there are many who actually do that you're just going to find people like John Sherwood, for example. He's 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 sound on his tradition. He doesn't argue for anything else. Uh, or others as well as that individual in that video um, where you and Bob obviously um, tried to debate him and ignored you. So <laughs> you yeah. remember that video, right? Yeah, that yeah, point, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think we should be very careful to talk about these uh uh, issues because you know maybe the the Muslims will use it as a, an ammunition to against us. You know what I'm saying? So what um, the, the, the whole the whole point mutas one minute Sam. So the whole point mutas is so what? Uh, first of all, it's not ammunition against us. If you are a true Christian, you stand upon the word of God. Um, if you're firing shots at me about praying to Mary, that means nothing to me. I don't care about that stuff because I, I'll just tell you they're not Christians. Um, and if you believe that there's schisms within Christianity, I'll say to you there's schisms with each ideology and religion on the planet. You're not going to find one religion or ideology that doesn't have differences of views. But I'll simply say these differences of views are the difference between what is um, told to us about what the, what the scriptures tell us about what the church is and what the institutions are practicing and claiming the church is. Those differences are fundamentally important. Um, so, no, I, I think there's right cause, in fact, for questioning these Catholics, also because it's the gospel. We are told to correct, as I've read on the screen, it's on the screen, as far as the preacher word, in season, out season. Um, as it says before, uh, preach the word, be ready in in season, out season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching of ears, they'll heap up for themselves teachers. So what, what they're doing is they're heaping up for themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, who will give them nice things to hear. And that's what individuals in this chat are doing as well. They, or not not go, in this uh, video. Also, minute, also minute, John, minute, no, minute, no, minute, no, minute, no, minute, no, minute, go to... Right, minute, let, me, let, me finish my, let me finish my point and then you can learn it. Because <laughs> right. Right. I'm like that, unfortunately. You're going to learn this about me. If I don't finish my point, you know, I become very irritated. And I have sorry, to say my sorry, point. Sorry, right. sorry, buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, as it says, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering teaching. In order to do so, in order to rebuke anybody, I don't know whether you know what a word rebuke means. It means to, um, in fact, I'll get up on the screen. Um, uh, let me get rebuke up on the screen for anybody who doesn't understand this word. Because I know I know, like, English is not some people's first language. That's fine. I'm not here to criticize. Um, at the end of the day, let's get rebuke up on the screen. Um, paste. Um I hope you can see that. So it says to speak angry at to someone because you disapprove of what they have said or done. That's the that's the mirror, that's the Oxford dictionary. Um it's not it's not the greatest. To criticize sharply, I would say that's that's I would say that's the greatest actually. Um to criticize sharply is the greatest meaning for that. If, if I criticize sharply an Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholic or an ecumenist, I'm doing the right thing according to the Bible. So if you disagree with that, you disagree with me with the Bible, mate. That's the that's the whole point. Can, can I actually see. add to can I add to your ammunition? Go to Titus three, starting verse ten. Uh, okay, let me go back to the Bible. Titus three. Okay. Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition. Um, and go to, to verse read? 11 as well. Go to verse 11 as well. Verse 10 and yes. 11. So it's verse 10 and 11. So reject the divisive man of the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Well, there you go, Bob. 
There, there you go, ecumenists. There you go, people who say, we shouldn't do this in the park, you know, we, we should just keep it together because, no, it says rejected advice of man of this first and second admonition, knowing that such persons walked and sinning, being self-condemned. So, right, all you Catholics, you Protestants, you Bob Whites, you're self-condemned, man. Uh, if you've heard this word and you've ignored it, you're self-condemned, you're condemning yourself. Literally um, the scripture says so. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Amen. This is what I'm talking about. This is a Catholic bash, yes. You're welcome to the party, man. Catholic Bash 2024, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, anyway, okay, go, back so... I, go back because I know I come back and have a crack at you for something in, in this video. I know I do. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it on screen, by the way? Because it's always... Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, it is. Church has errors in it. If you accept that every church has errors in it, then Catholics go to your Catholic fellowships and correct those errors. Yeah. Protestants go to your Protestant churches and correct those errors. Yeah. Orthodox go to your Orthodox churches and correct those errors. Remove the plank from remove the plank from your own uh, eye I, first before? before you try to take the speck of dust out of your brother's eye. Perfect. And every sectarianist and every Mormons are not Christians. Yeah. <laughs> Who's speaking to the Mormons? Where are the Mormons? Where are they? They, 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 they don't come back. He's a heretic. JC is a heretic. Uh, I've, I've, I've excommunicated him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a heretic. So, so, guys, all yeah, I'm yeah. saying is, and I'm saying this to everyone who watches this video, I right? Know. Right? I'm not saying that these aren't important issues. I'm not saying don't have the conversation. I'm not saying don't come to... No, you literally said don't have the conversation and these aren't important issues earlier on. And I can replay it. Like, that's, that's literally your point. Don't have the conversation. Uh, you're telling us to go and have it in the park or somewhere away from people as if it's some like like dirty nappy or dirty diaper. We should just keep it away in case people smell it. Like, no, I don't, I don't do that. I'm sorry. It if the truth, yeah, exactly. If the truth is in, you don't need to do this stuff. But for me, like the Bible says, always be willing to give a defense for the hopes that's in you. Now, we've read Titus 3 10 and 11. Okay, why are you not adhering to these things? Well, because you don't have the gospel in you. That's why. I'm just counselling you to be wise about the when and the how. And and the when and the how is not here. Who gave you the authority to be counsel with me, bro? Yeah, my fault. Yeah, <laughs> in private, the other six days of the week, away from the public eye. That's when you go and have these debates. Away, right? and away, man, go and evangelise the lost. And go and sort out your own churches first. Protestants, go and sort out the nationalism in your churches and the fact that you make an idol of the nation. Catholics. What, 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 wait, what Protestants make an idol of the nation? Which I don't know. Really I actually people. don't know what he's on about there. I don't, I don't know what he's on about either. What? Like, I guess he could be he could be referring to, because there is quite a lot of nationalism in some of the Protestant churches in America. He could be kind of referencing that. But, like, but like yeah, it's just like, the difference is in the in the Protestant tradition, we don't claim up that our churches are infallible. This is the difference. Like, like, um, I thought of like a little argument for sola scriptura in a way, and I've, maybe I'll run it past you now. It'd be like yeah. if I if I go to in my in my in our tradition, if one of our ministers, pastors, bishops, whatever freaking tradition you belong to, if they say something dodgy or something heretical, in a way that doesn't matter, because we have the Bible to fall back on. Do you know what I mean? And and we have the Bible to be able to go, no, you are wrong and you are wrong for X, Y and Z reason, rather than we have to appeal to some sort of magisterium or to some sort of mystical tradition. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not like it is OK if one of our leaders goes AWOL. But more, more what I'm trying to say is it's not actually the end of the world for us because our our churches are not built on the leaders. They're built on the Bible. That's the point. Yeah, it's the whole thing of Semper Reformande. Have you heard of Semper Reformande? So yeah. um, Semper Reformande is always reforming. But how can you always be reforming um, if if the scriptures are not your foundation? Because um, that was the whole cry of the Reformation. Um, like, I think Legoda Ministries has it here. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's a whole article on this. I'm not going to go through it. But the phrase Ecclesia Reformata or Semper Reformata, the church reformed, always reforming. Has been used so often as to make a motto a slogan. People have used it to support a surprising rate of theological disease programs and put like, they, they have, there's no doubt about this. But it just means the church is always reforming. Um, and that's the point, is that if if the church always reforms, what does that mean? That means that 
we're always ever getting closer to this and always willing to get closer to this, getting closer to the scriptures, the truth of the scriptures and the, what lies within it. Um, but you can't do that contextually within the ecclesiastical uh, or ecclesialism because the problem with ecclesialism is that you're under the body of the magisterium or the papacy in some cases, or both in the case of Rome, right? So you're under that system, right? And if the Pope goes AWOL, what are you going to do? Uh, if, he, if he starts praying in mosques, or kissing Qurans as he's done before. J John Paul the mm -hmm. second. Shout out my man. Shout out my man, John Paul II. Uh, Pope Francis mm -hmm. praying in mosque as well. Um, shout out Pope, Fra <laughs> Pope Francis. If, if they do that, there's nothing you can really do. You just have to call him into a Pope. Or you can cope and become a set of cantists and think of the empty, empty chair um, and dream of past times of Roman Catholicism. Or just accept that it's all defunct and actually become reformed. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Gone. No, 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 just, no, just saying like that's that's the biggest point though is our traditions are not we're not built off um off men we are built off the bible like like me being a calvinist i get accused of well you're following john calvin well guess what john calvin was following the bible yeah i just i just happen to agree with the lines that he drew but his authority was the bible it's that simple yeah like, exactly you know, you couldn't yeah. disagree with John Calvin and be a Calvinist. That's how deep it is. Right? <laughs> like people think you, if you disagree with John Calvin at one point, that's it. Calvinism's gone, bro. Right? But like, hold on. Right? I could I can agree with Luther and still believe he was a massive heretic when it came to everything else. And I do agree with Luther about faith and all. Yes, I do. I don't have any problem with de denying that. And even yeah. in view of predestination, but I, I deny. I denounce like that nonsense about the Jews. Uh, in some cases, he was right to be fair, but the the other stuff. And, and that whole um, veneration and stuff like that. I, I denounce that, especially if you're the Eucharist. But it's uh, it's it's relevant. So the whole the whole foundation of our belief is this. So we don't have to rely upon an extant tradition or Pope Luther or Pope Calvin. We don't have to do that. Like, we've got the Bible. No, exactly. uh, what are you going to say? Like, with okay. Yeah, uh, I, I was. I, yeah. I was just. Uh, yeah, uh, I was just going to say like uh, our. Tradition should be based on the on the Bible alone. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I I truly actually believe that. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna have to go. It, it was really nice uh, live stream uh, because right now it's like 1 a.m. So uh, uh, hopefully, guys, uh, see you later in the next live stream or maybe in my channel uh, one day. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. Yes. Uh, Salam al Masih. Uh, alaykum. Alayna, huh? make, make, uh, Mutaz, make a channel. You have got a wealth of knowledge on these topics. Yeah. We, need more, we need more. I do have a channel, by the way. Oh, you do have a channel. Well, if you do, yeah. Then, yeah. All right, like, where's your channel? Like, oh. you subscribe to it. I don't mind subscribing to that. Uh, if you do have yeah. a channel. Because obviously, just give me a sec. Just give me a sec. I'm going to send you guys okay. the link. Uh, I still haven't made the videos, but I did like two live stream. Uh, so it's not much, but. Uh, in the future, you've got to, you you will got to see start it. somewhere, mate. You've got to start somewhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me in a private chat, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No problem. Hmm. You guys will gonna have loads, loads of knowledge. It's unbelievable. Nice. I like that. Um, so I'm gonna actually put it on the screen. Uh, yeah. Don't let me down, Mutaz. Um, I'm going to subscribe to you. Don't become a Bobite or a Roman Catholic anytime soon. Otherwise, I'm on to No, no. I, I, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I actually I did my research about the Roman Catholic Church and, and the history of it. Uh, I, you know, one of the most evil things that they did was the purgatory. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they kept the scriptures away from the people for about like 500 years. Is that longer true? than that, bro? <laughs> longer than that, yeah. Longer than that, yeah. Yeah. So th th this is evil, uh, to be honest with you. Like, uh, I am a, a believer. Like, how could you forbid me something that God didn't actually forbid it? Like, mm. I, I have the right to actually to read the Bible because I'm a believer. You know what I'm saying? So uh, anyway, they created so many. Uh, uh, doctrines and dogma like the in, uh, indulge, uh, indulgences like uh, indulgence uh, I believe that, that uh, that's called where yeah, you have no, to pay. indulgences yeah yeah exactly where, where you have to pay money for your sins so you can uh, secure a place in in, in in heaven 
that is literally not biblical you know what i'm saying but yeah. anyway um i will absolutely not, not not become a catholic but i do have respect for the orthodox church but i don't think uh it's the perfect church you know what i'm saying um but anyway uh thank you guys so much uh you guys give me a a a glimpse of what uh of how to be very careful uh about the uh in the in the christian world you know what i'm saying so anyway guys uh i'm gonna have to go and i will say salam al masih alayna wa alaykum which means peace of christ to you and to everyone else and yeah. hopefully you guys see you uh in the next live stream or any live stream that you guys want Okay, so we have Nate Way of the Nazarene here. Um, so chaps, the Protestant church is not built on scripture, scripture alone. I wish it was. It is built on the scripture alone. That was the whole cry of the Reformation, scripture alone. By the way, nobody during the Reformation believed in your nonsense of uh, the Unitarian God. This is Josh, by the way. Um, I don't know whether you know Josh. He's gone to the park before. I've debated him multiple times at the park. Um, yeah, he's he's a Unitarian base. He's an Aryan. Um, yeah, Josh. Like, oh. Nobody believed in Aryans. Oh, I think I know. I think I know him actually. I think I might have talked to him once or twice actually. Yeah, yeah. Like, Aryanism is a a an Aryan thing. called Josh. Just kind of rings a bell. I don't know why. It just does. Yeah, he's he, he used to be in the army. I think. Um, that's his, I'm, I hope I'm not doxing you, but yeah. Um, we should get closer to the truth, and we have done with the scriptures. That the scriptures clearly teach a trinitarian God. The teachers, the script, sorry, the scriptures teach that Jesus Christ is God. Um, we have to go back to what scriptures teach. Um, yeah, and John Calvin did only follow the Bible. I mean, you've got a quote of that, haven't you, um, bro? On John Calvin stating he's only following the Bible, right? Wasn't that something? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, it's in his it's in his charge of novelty about how he talks about. Um, how the Roman Catholics are incredulous towards the Word of God. Like, mm -hmm. um, like when he writes the Institutes, he kind of starts, there are kind of three, three premises he starts with. One, one is that uh, he's obviously trying to defend the Reformation against the Catholics, that's pretty obvious. Um, secondly is his view of God, so he starts with the premise that God is all sovereign. And then thirdly is that the Bible is his ultimate source of authority. Like he does quote church fathers, but his whole point of doing that is just to prove that what he's saying isn't new. That's his whole mm. point. Like, of, So when he quotes people like Augustine, he even say quotes Aquinas and people like that. Where, when he quotes these people, he's just simply trying to say, look, what I'm saying ain't new. So he's just trying and he's more using it as like an argument against the Catholics. Basically, he's picking out people that he knows. Roman Catholics respect and who are canonized saints. That's what he's doing. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Just just to make the point that like, well, if I'm a heretic for believing this, then so is this guy. <laughs> that yeah. that's that, that's that's all Calvin's doing when he when he quotes people like Augustine. That's that that's all I, he's doing. Yeah, I I don't know about you, Sam, but I find a straw man of like, oh, Calvinists only follow John Calvin to be just incredulous because it's the theological presupposition that's been dealt with. It's not Calvin. Calvin's just making great claims about a theological presupposition. Um, that's it. It's what is what is we're agreeing with, or a Calvinist would would agree with, or a Reformed would agree with what Calvin is saying in terms of theology. Um, the term Calvinism comes later by uh, probably, as you would know, the enemies of Calvin or something like that. And yeah, it's yeah, yeah. As, as it was a like name. a slang. It was like a slang kind of thing. They were, they were, they were known as just reformed. That was it. Yeah, yeah, just reformed. <laughs> so, right, reform, reform theology just presupposes a theological assumption about the text. That is it. Like nobody's following John Calvin. Nobody believes John Calvin is the Pope, and that, that everything he says is an inerrant because that's not how theology works here. Uh, like, for example, the London Baptist Confession of Faith is not inerrant. Um, the Westminster Confession is not in, sorry, not inerrant. It's, it is errant, uh, but it's not inerrant. It's not without error. Like, there are errors, or there can be errors, but the Bible, the scriptures are inerrant. They are the word of God. They're without error. Um, and I challenge anybody to come up and debate that, because I don't mind debating this stuff, man. Yeah, yeah um, it's like... It's it's like churches can be built on confessions. And actually, I don't think that's a bad practice. But also these churches, the laity are not bound to every single statement in said confessions. They're not bound to it. Like, it's just more of a, a kind of 
a guideline for the church. That's all. It's just like a guideline just to say this is kind of roughly where we stand. And there's nothing wrong with that. But they're not bound to that. They're bound to the scripture first and foremost. Yeah, bound to scripture first and foremost. And it's, it's the right to private judgment in a lot of ways is a good thing, um, I, I suggest, because then obviously tr truly her heresies or heretical individuals would be manifest because they'll be tried by the word of scripture also. Um, and if they can't deal with what is evidently clear, holistically interpretation, uh, sorry, the holistic interpretation of the church or the holistic interpretation of the Bible given by the church, then they have free reign to leave it. For example, if um, let's say the um, Church of England teaches gay marriage, right? If they're willing to to come and debate me on scripture, why we should we should engage in that practice, and we find holistic teaching in the Bible which teaches otherwise, then of course my understanding will have favour over theirs. Um, and if they disagree with my notion, then I have the right to leave that church, and I have no I'm not bound upon that that church's teachings. Whereas the Eastern Orthodox Roman Catholic, you're bound upon their teachings. Lest if you leave the church, you become basically heretic or schismatic. But, um, but, but also a, another key difference is, is that some of the things in, say, the Orthodox tradition or the Catholic magisterium are there based on the you know, supposed apostolic authority of the churches. In other words, pardon me, they made these statements without the use of scripture. So this is the Westminster Confession in my hand. I'm not sure if you can see, but the point is every statement this confession makes is backed up by scripture you can disagree with it in terms of you think that they are using the wrong scriptures or whatever but more the point is these confessions were not written on a whim kind of thing they they didn't say the things that they said in all these confessions because they thought it sounded good do you know what i mean like they yeah. they all the confessions and statements of faith that the protestants came up with are all scriptural based all of them are you can disagree with them of course that's and that's fine but but they weren't but we're not appealing if you like, the only uh, tradition we're appealing to is the Bible. When we wrote, when the Protestants wrote the, that's it. Exactly. All right, let's let's continue because I want to finish. Go and video. sort out the excesses of Marian devotion before you try to induce Protestants to accept it. Every church can correct itself. Every church should correct itself. And churches and Christians who are arguing against one another are not being good disciples of Jesus. Because Jesus said, remove the plank from your own eye first. Have you done it in your own fellowships first? Have you corrected the errors in your own fellowship first? It'd be fair to say, it was like literally last week. In fact, JC will remember this. There was a guy who was over there, Sandy Dower jumped in, didn't he? Saying, shouting out the Catholics are not Christians. It was me and Michael here confronted him when we were trying to say. I'm referring to John Sherwood, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Catholics are not Christians. I've never said Catholics are Christians. I don't believe in a. No, no, no. I don't believe any teaching as Christians. I believe they are Christians. There's a difference. When I said earlier, you wanted to convert them. I don't know why. You said earlier, you wanted to convert them. You said earlier, you wanted to convert them. I've had all the same answers. No, I wasn't saying that. It wasn't about Christians. You said Christians. Ah, no. Just pause it for a sec. There's things that you because the week before i came the week before and i heard you say that the roman catholic church was not christian obviously you were trying to distinguish at this point you were trying to distinguish between the institution and the people but i wasn't having that as far yeah, as, I was, having having I, was, I was as far as i was concerned if you were calling the institution heretical you're calling everything heretical in that church do you know what i mean i wasn't having that <laughs> I don't know, like, it's because, like, when I use the term heretical, I'm right, just simply stating that the practices within it are in error, and that's it's not a good practice. But as for the individual salvation of an individual within the Roman Catholic Church, I'm not privy to that knowledge, and I wouldn't claim that knowledge. But I, I wouldn't use that as an excuse either. As far as I'm concerned, you, if you are remaining in Roman Catholicism, and you've heard what we've stated, you've you've seen the biblical proofs on board show. For example, Sherwood Pruitt, it was a, um, it was a um, frequent of this channel, right? Sherald Pruitt, uh, I don't know whether you're a man or woman, I don't know, you've got a picture of a fox, but you've continuously been on this channel, you've claimed to be a Roman Catholic, so there's far more judgment for you than just the individual lay Catholic. I would say that you and your current standing are a heretic and you need to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, as for the individual in the Roman Catholic Church, they're in error, they, they would be a heretic as well, but in the sense of their salvation, I don't know. But I do know this, as long as you continue in that state, and die in that state. Yes, 
don't damnation is assured. Um, because again, but I don't know the hearts of all men, I'm not claiming to know the hearts of all men, but yeah, the Roman Catholic Church is demonic. Um, you venerate the saints worshiping Mary, uh, these are demonic practices, and we must believe in the gospel to be saved. Um, uh, sorry, or how can a church be Roman universal? Uh, I mean, it's just dumb, yeah, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. a good point, actually. Yeah, <laughs> there, are, there are things that Catholics and Protestants can learn from one another. There are things that Catholics are right, praying to saints, bro. No, no. It's fair to say that in lots of Catholic fellowships, that the, 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 the saving grace of the gospel can be missed. That's well, a fair comment. I don't, I, I'm, I'm saying <laughs> you just literally admitted what we're saying. So, what, what Bob basically said there, and if you agree with him, Cheryl, then you must agree with that statement. So, do you believe that? the saving grace of the gospel is devoid in the catholic church do you honestly believe that Cheryl? um do you like honestly you said you agree with bob in fact i'm gonna get your comment i agree with bob with what he just said he's right do you agree with bob on this statement that the saving grace of the gospel is missed in the catholic church because that's an error right that that's an anathema by saint paul the first apostle who jesus chose in acts 9 right to be an apostle who says his revelations of Jesus Christ, Galatians 1. C come on. Come on. Are you going to answer this, Cheryl? Um, mm -hmm. No, because Bob White's never do. <laughs> yeah, they never do. They never answer those questions. This is the thing. Uh, I mean, you die in your state, then, honestly, it's, it's a bad time for you, my friend. Someone who loves the Catholic Church. You know, and I'm no enemy of the Catholic Church. But it's also fair to say yeah. that, that Protestants have a lot of inconsistencies in their thinking. You know, solo scriptura, solo scriptura isn't even solo, isn't even in scripture. You know, but here we are. To be in here we are. Though, trinity, you have to say trinity in scripture. Here we are. No, no, I'm not talking about the word. I'm talking about the doctrine. The doctrine. The, the actual doctrine. The doctrine. The doctrine. The doctrine. He, he was actually unwilling to debate that topic as well because he's kept saying, "Show me where it says solo scriptura in the Bible." And I say, "No, it's it's inferred. It's an inference of the Bible because of the nature." Of the the nature of Bible because it is fiatness that's God breathed, and because of the nature the apostles afforded were afforded, we can infer that yes, the apostolic witness that is the New Testament, it because of its nature it has primacy over everything else, and because the Old Testament according to because again like the we we understand of course that not all the letters of Paul were written down when he said um, all Scripture is God breathed, but. So what was inscribed? That would have been the Old Testament, right? So yeah, they would say to us, well, the Old Testament was inscribed, right? Uh, allow me to just finish my thought. No, sorry. Um, the Old Testament was inscribed, right? Uh, and well, yes. So then the Old Testament is God breathed. So by nature, it has primacy over anything else. And then the New Testament, because the apostles, for example, Peter says in First Peter that Paul was inspired. Um, Paul, by necessity, is, is inspired. He says himself that he is speaking of Revelation, First Corinthians fourteen. Um, like Peter's writings are inspired. We don't deny this. Nobody denies it. The early church calls them holy writ. Um, because of this statement, because the apostolic witness is written down, it therefore becomes our pillar and rule and ground and standard for all that's holy. Or the, oh, Sorry, for, for, for faith and doctrine, my bad. So really, we don't have anything else. Because we don't have anything else, we shouldn't really infer to anything else. Plus, we don't claim that the apostolic witness was simply written down from the very first moment that Paul was able to write something down, or that the Gospels were able to, sorry, the Gospel writers were able to write stuff down. What we claim, though, is that apostolic tradition, whole fold, that everything there, including by word or by epistle, as um, Paul says in First Thessalonians, all of that was written down in this Bible. Um, all of it. We don't have any proof of anything else from the apostles or of Jesus Christ himself or the prophets outside of Scripture. So, therefore, this has primacy of everything else. Go on, sir. The um, but also you can you can because obviously there are um doctrines which Christians believe in, uh, which are more inferred in the Bible rather than explicit, which is fine because you can still make a coherent case for them. But what I'd argue is you can make the argument for sola scriptura, or at least the classical way of understanding sola scriptura, um, uh, from the Bible rather than the sort of scripture slash tradition argument. Yeah, I mean, because it does say in the Bible that the church is the pillar and foundation of all truth, but you've got to establish what is that and what that was to the earliest apostles and such wasn't any uh, wasn't tradition outside of themselves. It was the tr tradition of the scriptures at the end of the day. So, yeah. like, um, but there were things around them also which were useful. That's the other thing. 
they got to learn as Protestants, we don't deny tradition. Just simply say tradition coincides with the Bible. But I've also got a little quote from Calvin here. This is more of a, a sermon of his, but he just simply uh, that, you know, because um, he preached in Geneva uh, and he just simply says this. The word the word of God is sufficient for all and it contains within it everything that uh, you need to know about God. But also God in his all sovereign knowledge has given you everything you uh, need to know as well. There's nothing more that God wants you to know or anything else he wants you to infer other than what he's put in this text. Hmm. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, good. It's the, it's the ontological nature of it because it's God breathed, it has primacy over everything else. Yeah, brilliant quote, brilliant quote. Um, Cheryl, so you're saying I'm not getting barked down by John, but yeah, you're watching my streams. You've been watching my streams from, I think, the first stream that I made. You've been watching this for quite a while, actually, in fact. Uh, I don't know whether it's out of curiosity or anything, <laughs> but you, you're, you're afraid to come up here? Come on, man. Um, I'll even give you five minutes to speak. You're not going to be able to respond to everything I'm saying. You're not going to be able to address what I'm saying. And you'll probably do more insulting than I do. Like You've seen on these streams that people have jumped on and they've sworn at me. Uh, they've insulted Amy. They've uh, they've done very various things. And all I'm doing is reading the word of God, going through scripture, um, and showing, yeah, how doctrinally consistent, you, in, sorry, inconsistent you guys are and your church is. Um, so you either come up here or you don't. But if you're going to bark in the comments, then I'm not going to take you seriously, unfortunately. Um, uh, again, let me play the rest of it because I think we've only got a few a minute left. Uh, point is, whilst you're all fighting one another, yeah. who's, speaking, speaking, to the who's speaking to the atheists? Who's speaking to the pagans? <laughs> who's speaking to the Jehovah's Witnesses? No one. How long have we been talking? How long have you been filming, JC? About three, four years now. <laughs> three, four years. Now, how long have you been filming this? Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Uh, 13 minutes. 13, 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Plus the 10 minutes that came before. Well, well Solar Scriptura is in the scriptures. Right. One Timothy 3, go, and, two, go and have that debate yeah, that another day of the week. Scripture. One Timothy 3, 6. Go and have that debate another day of the week. Go and have that debate another day of the week. It doesn't say Solar Scriptura. Go and have that debate another day of the week. The principle is there. Right, I'm going to walk away, JC. Okay, that's it. I'm going to walk away. That's it. Because we're just fueling the fire and sectarian. But yeah, I know yeah. what happened, but I'm I'm now starting to remember what happened now. You, me, and Michael really got into it about Roman Catholicism when he cuts the camera here. Like yeah, really, really yeah. got into it. I think we started I think we started out talking about Sola Scriptura, if I remember correctly, because mm -hmm. you would obviously just reference it. I'm pretty sure that's where we started. But then yeah. we did move on to the Marian dogmas and um I do remember Michael saying some things, like I don't explicitly remember what they were, but I I'm pretty sure, didn't I, right in front of you, say to Michael he was wrong or something? Like, I'm pretty sure I corrected him right in front of you, if I remember right. I, 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 I don't I don't know, because like, my memory's a bit short, but you probably did, yeah. Uh, that's that's fine, anyway. Um, sink the cross, I'm walking away. I mean, yeah, that's Bob's motto. I'm walking away. I'm going away. And he ran to the Darwa girls. In fact, just, just a quick recap to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to give people a laugh here of what happened when I actually did confront Bob on this, I actually woke up, stopped drinking the Kool-Aid and actually, like, in fact, all you have to do is type in Soko Films uh, John or I think you can type in John or Bob. Um, uh, yeah. Well, oh, literally literally interrupted in fact, my, my, sorry, the Project's London has it better anyway, so I'm just going to go through uh, I was going to say, because JC's mics are really not the best, are they? They're really not the best. Um, I'm going to have to go down. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can see, put on a bit of weight. <laughs> I'm just crossing myself right now. Uh, oh, man. It's getting better, though. I did, I did run quite a long time. So, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not gonna dox where I live, but I did run quite a long time. I run for about 40 minutes. So, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I don't want to be too skinny, though. Um where is it? Because uh, I've got a bunch of... Yeah, there we go. Um, a quick conversation with you. I don't want to have a conversation with you, brother. You don't want to have a conversation with me? Why not? The things you've been saying on, on, uh, on, the, commenta on the commentary, I don't think it's uncalled for. So you, it's, 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 do you, you think I'm wrong in what I'm saying? Anything personal that you the question asks, do you think I'm wrong in what I'm saying? You tell me directly by messaging me directly. 
I'm, 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 I'm talking to you right now. That's how I am. So you're running away from this conversation. So you've been a Muslim about it. So you've been a Muslim about it. Jumping that video, go. Yeah. We, 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 Amy was just like, Go and jump in the video. Yeah, I'm not willing to have a conversation sorry, I'm about a communism because there's I'm a lot of stuff you said about Pause it, though. Pause it. I know, so, so, I, I know, I know, I know you got quite a lot. Of, I know you got quite a lot of crap on it, for. I know you, you, you got quite a lot of crap for like just jumping in like that, but at the end of the day, right? It's Bob. You kind of have to, like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's just no other way to do it with him. Like, there's no other way. He, like, I've known him for the last four years. He just he, he will ramble off, or he will do a Q and A. If I jump in during a Q and A, I look bad. If I jump in during the debate, I look bad somehow. I don't think I look bad at all. If I don't care about interrupting this conversation, and I will do no, it again to be honest. But cause I'm I, not trying I, to say you yeah. looked bad. I'm not trying to say you looked bad, yeah. but there's no other way to do it, is there? Like, like yeah. you know, it, like you've got to corner him. It's that simple. You just got to corner him. And yeah, just go do, for it. You have to. He's like he's like a hamster. You have to corner him. And you know, this was the times when I stopped taking him as seriously. Like if you notice, I found it hard to communicate around him because I was I was just so I was a fan to be honest. You were a fanboy. Fan You're a fanboy. Kind of <laughs> but now I'm just like, look, I see through your BS, bro. You, <laughs> you ain't gonna do this today. We ain't gonna do. I actually want to debate him. And if Bob, if you're willing to. We can do a time debate on this channel anytime, and I will destroy you and ecumenism. Look, make you look like a fool. Send you packing to wherever you uh, want to go. Uh, and any Bob White wants to come and defend Bob, you can do that as well. Because yeah, no Bob. But also, can we can we put it can we put it another way as well? It's almost like a debate invitation as well. It'd be more like Bob if you genuinely think you have the true gospel. The true gospel is easy to defend. It's that simple. Because yeah. so, like. Um, one thing that has become clear to me over time, like with my journey being a Roman Catholic and now being reformed, but one thing I've come to realize is that the true gospel is actually quite easy to defend. It's not actually very hard. Like, um, so if you really think that you have the true gospel, come and tell me and John or like anyone else, anyone else. It was like, you know, all them years no, ago. No, no, ben no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Sam, not anybody else, just me. No, no, no. I mean, no, I'm just I'm I was about to say, say all them I'm years ago. Serious. All them years ago. This is no. real right now. Not like I, I'm sorry. I know you, Bob. Not anybody else knows you, but I know you. I know the comments you've made about Unitarians in the pub, about the fact that they may be saved. I know you are you're into some Aryan heresy nonsense. So come bring it, bring it, bro. Like, uh, no, I've also mean like all them years ago when Ben made that video. And yeah. and I'm just going to put this out there. What was Bob's response? Oh, you might have hurt my ability to do evangelism now. That was all you cared about. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's evangelism to who? You don't have the gospel. Uh, but yeah, I, <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm laughing so much, but it's, it's just funny. I'm not going to watch the whole video. I'm just going to skip it part. I did say here, do you want to have a conversation another time? Um, and if he said to me yes, then I would have happily walked away. That's the funny conversation. Why are you running, bro? Why are you running? I'm, yeah. are you running I'm literally having a conversation. Why, but why are you running? What I was saying? I'm, I apologize. Multiple times I've tried to get you on camera. Have, gonna, a, discussion focus, have a discussion about yeah. ecumenism. Just like we have a discussion about ecumenism. And multiple times you've run him, away. What his I'm saying, sin falls on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My sin, apparently. So it's the Catholic Church. Listen, the Catholic Church teaches that Mary is the mediatrix of all graces. The Catholic Church teaches that you can pray to Mary and receive forgiveness for your sins. Even is that later, okay? Is that an interpolation? Do you think hadiths, it's okay to say these churches right? that pray to no, other gods are okay? I gotta be so fair, you're like got the shotgun in him, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was just like, look, I don't care, bro. Because I just know his, his demeanor. Once you know somebody's demeanor, it's really it's so easy to go after them. Like, and yeah, I just know his demeanor. I know he wasn't gonna actually defend anything. Uh it's not a personal thing, first of all. I mean, what personal thing? He doesn't have the gospel. I mean, if anything, that is personal to me because if you're denying the gospel of saving grace and teaching another gospel, that's heresy. Remember what Saint Nick did to um, uh, Arius, um, Sam? Play the clip. Play the clip. Play the clip. Let's let's see. This is history, by the way. It's Saint Nicholas. This is Father Christmas. Let's let's see. Let's see. Uh, for you there, Roman Sits King. Just for you, bro. Um, let's get this. To clarify what Christianity is. Well, we worship Jesus because he's God, says almost everyone. Actually, said some guy named Arius, Jesus is like God, but he's still created by God. There was a time when Jesus didn't exist. Bro, that's heresy, said Santa Claus, punching him in the face. So the Council of Nicaea <laughs> that Jesus is truly God. 
Arius got kicked out, and they wrote a statement summarizing the basics of Christianity. Yeah, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm Saint Nick, and that boy is Arius. I mean, <laughs> that's the passion I have. I'm not going to actually punch him, by the way. Right? This is not a threat. No, but, we're, uh, not endorsing, we're, we're not. We're not endorsing <laughs> violence. We're more. We're more. <laughs> in, we're endorsing. We're endorsing theological violence. <laughs> yeah, theological violence. I'm going to give him the hardest theological beatdown on the planet, bro. Because I don't. I don't care. I, I don't care. And it's going to be real. Um, but Santa Claus definitely did the right thing. Uh, so do you agree with Santa Claus, um, Roman six? Can, do, you, do you agree with Santa Claus punching Arius out because he teaches stupid Unitarianism? If you agree with that, then you should have a problem with what I'm doing. I'm doing less than that to Bob. I'm just hounding him with the gospel <laughs> and the truth, which he doesn't like. De um, definitely not Callum said, uh, big up Santa. <laughs> big up Santa. This is why I love Santa. He goes through his arm, man. Big up Santa. Do, he, he do, big up Santa. Bob is living for, no, he isn't. I don't care about Bob. Like, you know what shoes we made? Like, come on. Uh, could care less about Bob. Uh, this is not about it's Bob. This is about we, yeah, it's like, can we put this out there? This isn't about, this is just about, because at the end of the day, the gospel, the genuine gospel is saving grace. You get some people like John Sherwood who go down there, right? You get a few people like that. But generally speaking, the gospel of genuine saving grace is not being preached down there. That's just the, the cold, hard truth. And that's the bit oh, that we actually care about. I mean, the closest we get is John Sherwood, because um, he actually does preach the gospel. I'm not going to lie. Um, and he gets attacked left, right, and center. But in terms of the majority of Christians there, no, there's not a majority of Christians there. It just isn't the case. Like, Christians are a minority. I I'm talking minority of minorities. Um, there's but there's maybe, if we don't go down there, one or two, I'm going to be honest, of what I've but seen, who are, who are continuous attendees. I'm not talking about, because I don't go all the time, but yeah, you know what I mean? But, but like when we went when we went on Sunday, how yeah. many people there? How many people there who were, if you like, quote unquote Christian, were actually preaching the proper gospel? How many people were actually oh, doing yeah. that? Shalini was shouting swear words down from the ladder, cussing up Mohammed. Um, <laughs> yeah, Shalini was cussing up Mohammed. Um, David was um, chatting to a Unitarian guy, um, not giving him the gospel. Um, who else was there? Khan was not giving anybody the gospel, doesn't know the gospel yet. He ran from um, us, he ran from us, like yeah, he ran straight, up, us. straight up ran. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna upload that video by the way, because obviously Amy has the, the phone with the footage, but I'm gonna upload all of that footage because I'm gonna turn it into a compilation by the way of Bob White's running, and it's just gonna be <laughs> maybe, um, maybe about it should be about at least 40 minutes long, um, from what I've got, and it's just gonna be different footage of Bob White's running, and then of course, I'll upload your debates with. Sam, but so. yours and yours as well. But like the point yeah. is, is like he just straight up run. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, but I feel like maybe you know maybe God forgive me if I'm if I'm judging badly here. But but genuinely, I feel like if you just run like that, you know what you're defending is undefensible and it's heresy. Exactly. Like, Look, the Bible says the. In fact, let's get this quote up. The Bible says here. Where are you going, by the way? Uh, I want to show you because this, this is, this is just gospel right here. Share this tab. Can you see that? The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Yes, but the, the righteous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. That's the tagline of this channel. The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. If you're righteous, you're bold to defend your faith. Even if you fail, even if you fall, even if you uh, make a mistake, you are righteous to defend it. And that's all I've ever been. No, like, yes, there's been times where I've sworn on camera. Yes, there's been times that I've done stupid stuff or even times I've been a communist. But nobody can state that I didn't have a further in faith for Christ. I just didn't know Christ as, as fully as I know him now. And that's the difference. We're always growing in knowledge of Christ as long as we are in the scriptures. But those who do not have the gospel, they flee, they run because they're wicked in their hearts. And that's the thing. I've already spoken to this individual, Khan. I spoke to him more than a few months ago, in fact. And he said he needed to study this stuff. And then, what, a few months after that, he comes back as an ecumenist, saying he's Catholic. I was like, okay, um, for people like that, leave them to it. They're Bob Whites. Um, and stay. <laughs> Lord, may the Lord lead him out of the Bobbery, though. Um, I believe you are a church vandal. Well, that's your belief. You also believe in prayers to saints, so I could care less what you believe. That's irrelevant. Uh, what church? What, what church are you talking about? 
Uh, oh, is the chosen one. Uh, well, Christians are chosen by the Lord. Then we are the elect. Um, not because of, not because of anything we've done, but because of what He has done. Uh, because of what He done at the cross of Calvary. Uh, by faith you're saved, not by any works. And faith is a gift of God. Um, one, sorry, Ephesians two eight to ten. Um, so when you truly have the gospel, you, you understand that. Yeah, you can't lose your salvation. You can't lose that which God has gifted you as a gift. Your faith itself is a gift, um, and that Christ, if He has you, you cannot be truly lost. Um, Bob doesn't believe that. But Bob believes in churches that believe that you can lose your salvation. Um, which is something, even if you just take the Bible outside of it, psychologically, if you're teaching yourself that Christ is wrong, then you're not affording yourself the wealth of scriptures and your candlestick will be taken from you. Um, again, what does that candlestick mean? Oh. He's, also, he's, also, he's also defending churches which which do things like this. So forgive me for saying this prayer out loud, but still. Um, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send our sighs, mourning and weeping this veil of tears. Turn then, O oh gracious advocate, so they call her an advocate, um, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O oh clement, O oh loving, O oh sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O oh Holy Mother, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Wow. Heresy. Absolute heresy. Absolute disgusting heresy, man. Uh, this Bob is what you guys pray to. Bob defends that stuff. Like. <laughs> yeah, Bob's Just... defending that. Bob does not have faith in the gospel. Bob has faith in Bob. Because Bob is the god of Bobbery. And uh, he may not pray to Mary. I don't know whether he does or not. Maybe he does the whole Mary, in fact. I've heard some sources claim he does. But I believe he definitely, he prays, he definitely prays the saints, that's for sure. He does, he does he do de that. He definitely does. And if you if you do that, then you don't have faith in Christ because where's the faith? He's the, the, the Bible says in, in the Hebrews 7 25 that Christ is our mediator, he's our intercessor, and he ever lives to make intercession for us. First Timothy 2 5 says there's one God and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. He's the only one we have to pray to or afford prayer to. If I'm gonna pray to somebody else. That, does, that defeats the purpose. If I'm going to pray for somebody else and they've asked me to pray for them, um, I'm entitled to do that. I'm entitled also to pray for somebody else as, as I wish. But I'm never entitled to pray to anyone else. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pray to George. Oh, by the way, George, could you, uh, could you um, ask God a word for me? Like, no. Rather, I can, if I'm in the same vicinity as George, say to him, look, pray for me, bro. Or I could say to Sam, as I have done, pray for me, bro. Because we're in the same location. But the angels or uh, and the saints in heaven are before the throne of God. They're afforded a greater glory than us, but they also are before the throne of God. Their location has changed. Hence, we I can't just walk up to Mary and say, hey, Mary, you know, give us a word from God. No, I can't do that. And there's, there's no need to do that because the, the Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 8, makes intercession for us. The, the Lord God makes intercession for us. And Jesus himself says in John 12, um, anything you ask in my name, I will do. Jesus tells us how to pray in Matthew 6. I don't see any reason to pray to Mary or the saints. I can just go directly to the source, the wellspring of life. That is Jesus Christ. But also more of a more of like almost a philosophical point. But if the saints can actually hear our prayers in heaven, then you're ascribing to them omnipresence. You know, one of the attributes of God, something which they don't possess, like not even the angels possess that. Like, um, mm. do you know what I mean? So it makes no sense that the saints can he actually hear us. Like, because it does say in Revelations how they are praying for us. But I don't think they're actually aware of what is going on with us. They're just praying for the earth. Do you get, do you get what I'm just trying to say there? Oh, you're there, John. I think he's, has he cut out just a little bit? We shall wait for him to return. <laughs> but no, um, I guess one that's one thing to think about, though, is if the saints can hear our prayers, they actually have a property of uh, omnipresence that they, they would be able to hear us. And that genuinely, genuinely makes no sense. 
and I know that one. Yeah, definitely not Callum. I used to pray it as a um, as a Roman Catholic. <laughs> I used to pray the Hail Holy Queen. Um, even Mohammed said you can touch. Wonder what's happened to John. Is he like cut out? Possibly. Never had to do a stream on my own before, so it's cool. But anyways, um, one thing I will comment on though quickly is that um, because obviously, uh, does Bob have faith? Well, it depends. What does he have faith in? Does he have faith in his in his righteousness, or does he have faith also in the righteousness of Christ? Like it says in Romans four, when uh, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father? has found it according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he should have something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now that now to him who works, the wages are not counted as but as debt. So the point is, is that um, you must always put or trust your righteousness in Christ and not in yourself. Sorry, Amy came back, so I had to bloody... Yeah. Um, what was that? Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. She came back, so I had to really uh, go and open That's the right. door. Um, uh, John Blake, Jason Blake, only Christ can weigh his heart, bro. I mean, first of all, like, so in the Egyptian tradition, there's the idea of the chimera who rips the heart of a man if he's done bad deeds and. The other side is if the so what happens is what will happen is your heart is taken out by the um the Anubis or Anubis, one of the gods of the Egyptian tale, right? And it's weighed on a scale. And if um uh if the stones or whatever placed on the scale outweigh your heart, then essentially when your heart is heavy, it's going to be chucked to the chimera. But if it's if it's if it's measured equal. Then essentially you would be taken up to heaven, and that's it. Um, that's what you're suggesting, bro. I don't say that, right? Christ tells us to judge in his word. For example, Matthew 8, uh, 18, for example. I'm gonna go to Matthew 18 right now. Um get off, dude. What are we doing? Uh Matthew 18. <laughs> Jesus tells us to judge, and this is the most important thing. Uh, people oftentimes, when they don't know Jesus, they don't know what he says. Uh, and they'll make bold assumptions about who Jesus is. Jesus just, just, just didn't say, oh, you know what, I'll judge, bro, so do whatever you want. Because that just opens the doorway for open theism, homosexuality in the church, all sorts of stuff. If you have Bob's gospel, that's what you have. But if you have the true gospel, you have Jesus warning us. Um, I'm going to get up right now. It's here. Okay, so this is 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, I hope this is sharing. Yeah, it is. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone, which I've done. If he hears you, you have gained a brother. But if he will not hear, if you will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established, which we did. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Who are the church, bro? Who are the church? If you're a Bobite, who are the church? <laughs> is that, uh, that's a good question. If you, but if he refuses like to hear, if he refuses to even hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Again, like we have to tell it to the church. And again, if it doesn't conform to this, then obviously we shouldn't we shouldn't accept it. We have to call out each other when we're sinning. And I think one of the biggest sins is not accept the gospel of Jesus Christ or to denigrate the gospel of Jesus Christ. To have another gospel is a sin. That's the issue at hand. If you have another gospel, then you're accursed. That's according to Galatians 1.89. And I've mentioned this multiple times, but you Bob Whites keep bringing up the same arguments. You're like a broken record. Read your Bibles. Don't come to me. Read your Bibles. I'm not, Bob's not going to tell you to do that. Bob's not going to tell you to read your Bible. He's going to quote the Bible at you. Read your Bibles. All throughout scripture, we find Jesus rebuking the apostles. We find the apostles rebuking each other when they got and come out of land and telling us to keep the sound doctrine. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you could be a Roman Catholic at that point. But if you still are, then you're obviously sinning against the, the Lord Jesus Christ and you don't have his light in you. Um, the difference between not approving of something and being vocal and judging someone's heart and their salvation, whereas Christ, well, that's what Paul does, doesn't he? 
Does he judge and, people's salvation? And yeah. also John and also John, but in his epistles, not the gospel. You know, like in the second epistle, it's there's a part where it says, you know, beware of deceivers. It's in uh, the second epistle of a uh, second epistle of John in verse seven, because there's only one chapter in it. For mm -hmm. Uh, many deceivers have gone out into the world and they do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourself that we do not uh, lose those things we've worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine that Christ uh, does not have God, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ as both the father and the son if anyone comes to you and does um does not bring this doctrine do not receive him into your house nor greet him for mm. if he greets him he shall share in his evil deeds yeah in other yeah, words really in other words deceivers beware <laughs> is what john is saying <laughs> yeah. pretty much what john is saying right deceivers beware and that's what we should be doing if we are truly christian jason blake if you're truly a christian then you have to call out sin. It is required of you. It is not that it's not you who gets to say, but it's the scriptures. And if you truly affirm what Christ is saying and believe in Christ, then you should affirm the, affirm the scriptures and you should uh, allow the scriptures to dictate your every move and every being. Uh, the scriptures should not be secondary in your thinking just because you like Bob. Who cares about Bob if he's denying the scriptures? To me, I treat Bob as a tax collector and a heathen. A heathen and a tax collector must be evangelized to that's a fact. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that it's my job anymore. I've done what I need to do. In fact, I, I've decided to move away from him. But if the Lord uses somebody else to evangelize him, then may he so do it. But for me, my goal is that you individuals uh, that are Catholics, that are ecumenical, that you will truly seek after Christ, read his scriptures, and come to saving faith through him and not through anything else. And you will despise anything that goes against Christ. When you have that vervent seal for Christ, Right, right, as Christ says to the layered scenes, remember your first love. I think it's the layered scenes. Yes, yeah, remember your first love. Right, remember who truly saved you. When you when you do that, you'll come to the conclusion that these churches are heretical. They're not teaching that, and they're misleading people as well. And we're not talking about individual people. I'm not here to attack individual people. That's not about it. But it's about the church themselves. Um, this is another gospel, and it is dangerous because it doesn't affirm Christ. If you truly believe that Christ died for your sins on the cross of Calvary and that nobody else did, and he truly did suffer in his body for you, then I don't see how you can justify ignoring his word. That just doesn't make any sense. There's no equality in that. Uh, I'm, I'm preaching, but I have to with certain people. But it's like, um, it's like, uh, what's his name? Peter. So in other words, the Pope. Pete, Peter in Acts 2 says the following. Uh, then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is that you and your children and all who are uh, afar off, many of you will, many of you will come to the Lord our God and you will be called. Mm. So like there is only one way, there is only one way to salvation and that's Jesus Christ. But Peter makes that pretty, pretty, pretty clear. <laughs> now, now, I want what I want you guys to do, and thanks for that, Sam. What I want you to do is go on Bob's channel. The reason why I'm telling this, go and look on his channel. See if he ever mentions this. See, uh, see if he has that vervent love of Christ that we do, and you're going to find that he doesn't. He doesn't he? Doesn't preach about Christ and the necessity of Him. Um, oftentimes, he will often he will preach about the church, the Benedict option. That's I was about gospel. to say, he loves that Benedict <laughs> option, doesn't he? He loves the Benedict option. I call, I, I call it, I, I'm going to say it on camera, but <laughs> I, I, you know what I'm going to say? You know what it is? I call it the Benedict option. because I, I, <laughs> I I'm sorry. I apologize for swearing, but I just I just had to say it because I, it just, it, it's so crap. It's just so crap. It's, 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 no, it's, it's a terrible it's, one. But also, but also, his main thing is attacking Islam. But, but, I just want to put this out there. No matter how good Bob might be at attacking Islam, he it does not give him a pass on the gospel at all. It just doesn't. Doesn't matter how good of a polemicist he is, you know, it just it doesn't give you a pass. It just doesn't. 
Right, you give me all right for me, give me a crappy preacher any day from like um Africa who can barely speak English but at least knows the gospel than Bob. I'm sorry. Like if if, if it's because I've seen a lot of like even down, down at Stratford, right? I've seen a lot of people like will lose debates and stuff like that, and yet they have a zeal for Christ, they love the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have the gospel. I would rather they preach than this clown ever speak, to be honest, because he's taking them to hell. What's the point? Like, stop looking for favorable debaters. Start looking for Jesus. Start reading his word. You have it here. The reason why you have it here, ladies and gentlemen, and you Catholics as well, is because of us Protestants. Protestants gave you the Bible. And, and that's actually historically true. <laughs> the reason why you can have a copy of the Bible is because of us. Uh, that's just we, were the ones, we, we were the ones who translated it and got threatened to be killed for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally got threatened. Uh, and some, and some were, like Tyndale, though. Like. Yeah, Tyndale was it? Was it Wycliffe? Was Wycliffe killed? Was I'm it? not too sure. I don't know much about Wycliffe, but I know Tyndale was. Like, like, like don't get me wrong. Tyndale's translation isn't the best, but the mm. point more stands that he was killed for just simply translating the Bible. That was it. That was his crime. Like, like, what did he do wrong? <laughs> exactly. What did he do wrong? Right. For example, like I, I want to mention also as well, right, for Nui Greek. Uh, so, yeah, Sam Shemin Bob, these are guys are great at debating Muslims, but doesn't mean they're safe. For example, I've seen T-Jump. I don't know if you've heard of T-Jump, um, Sam. Uh, Atheist, right? Yeah. I've seen him debate Muslims, and he's great at it. Like He literally schools them on many different points. That doesn't mean I agree with what he's saying on certain points, but he has a rhetoric where he's able to control the debate, and he's able to destroy Muslims at certain points. But that doesn't mean that he's a Christian. That doesn't mean I should fall behind him or believe what he's saying. Uh, this is not go out and attack Muslims, bro. This is not like Islam is secondary to the whole plan of salvation from God. That plan is that everything, everything that is anathema to Christ, like is a sin. Everything we must be there, ready to call out sin. We must be there to preach the gospel of Christ, um, even amongst ourselves. When we do err, uh, when we do fall, we are to lift each other up. We are to encourage. We are to rebuke in sound doctrine, even amongst each other. So, how much more outside of the church should we be there to? Uh, uh, be with open arms, willing to receive anybody into saving grace. And that includes, of course, preaching to the Roman Catholics, preaching to the Orthodox, preaching to the um, the ecumenicals, anybody. Again, if you don't have this gospel, this is likely you're not going to be saved. And we, that needs to be made certain. Um, God let the house of Satan be the uh, Selah, there's no house of Satan, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, go Can on. I just actually say this? Because this is what... Um, really made me understand what the gospel was and it was two passages in the book of Romans but when you put them together and it's in Romans 1 in verse 18 for a start it says for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who uh, who uh, suppress the truth in unrighteousness because they know of God is manifest in them and for God has shown it in them we have all fallen short of the glory of God it's that simple and I'm going to say something which is going to sound really harsh, and I mean this even about you and me, John. God can send you to hell, and He'd be completely just in doing so. God, like, um, like, um, God doesn't have to give you salvation, but there's a way He's going to give you salvation. There's a way, isn't there? Mm. And like, mm. and that way is, uh, and that way is through uh, Jesus Christ. So, if you then in Romans eight. Where is the golden chain of redemption? There it is. And we know that all things work together for good. And those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. I'm sorry for the sound like slightly like a Calvinist, but still um, for his purpose. For who he, Calvinist you, to me, he, he, also, <laughs> he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, uh, whom he predestined, he also called, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. God mm. doesn't have, God does not have to save you. God would be completely just in sending you to hell, but there is a way for you to be saved, and that is the message of the gospel. Like we, as Christians, we genuinely do not think our, our works will save us, and that's when you really realize that you're a Christian. And that was, to be honest, when I realized that, that's when I realized I truly became a Christian. Because in say the Roman Catholic system, I'm sorry if I'm ranting on a bit, John. But but um, in yeah, the no, Roman no, Catholic, 
Yeah. But in the Roman Catholic system, what I came to realize was I was relying on those Marian prayers, the rosary, going to mass, my penance, confession, blah, blah, blah. I was relying on all of that. And actually, it kind of causes you a bit of anxiety, to be honest, because you always kind of wonder, did I do this or did I do that? Did I confess that mm. sin in confession? I'm not so sure if I did. But like, and but it's true. If you rely on your own works, you will you you do not understand what the gospel of saving grace truly is. To understand what the gospel of saving grace really is, is that God has saved you under nothing that you have done. It's a free gift, a free gift to any of those who who I would obviously say that God has called. But but the more the point is, is it's a free gift. That's how that's how all Christians view it, regardless of what presupposition you might have. Sorry, John. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ironic how your story kind of mirrors Luther's in the case that, yeah, he used to do like penance, extreme forms of like self-flagellation as well, where he'd whip himself. One thing he used to do was he, that he used to uh, punish himself by sweeping each step or cleaning each step, uh, from what I can remember, of because um, he used to be part of a monastery and he used to do that stuff as well for, for penance. And he's so paranoid about his own sins. And when he found out what the gospel actually was, um, he was elated. He was he was excited. He was ecstatic, and, and you can see this throughout all his, his writings on the Book of Galatians, his commentary on the Book of Galatians. How excited he was to actually um, get the truth of the gospel out. It's like the, the, Christ says himself in Matthew eleven: "My yoke is easy, my burden is light." Your, your burden is not oh, like maybe if I don't do penance here or there, then maybe I won't be saved. Um, but maybe if I don't attend mass because it's obligatory, maybe I won't be saved. Um, there's no maybe I won't be saved. If you truly have the gospel, you will be saved. There's guarantee of salvation, and that's what you don't have. You don't have the wholesome love of Christ. Um, if you don't, if you believe you can lose your salvation, then what you're, what you're telling me is that you don't trust that Christ can truly save you, and that's an issue of your heart. Like instead, believe that Christ can truly save you, and if you believe that Christ yeah. can truly save you, then there's no yeah. way of you losing that. Doesn't matter what you do, because Christ is your Father now. That means like, like He cares for you. You're in His household. As, like Christ says himself, a servant doesn't live in the house forever. Remember the Old Testament? A servant is supposed to be, in the, a Hebrew servant would be in the house for like seven years and they'll be let go of. But a son remains in the house forever. If you become, in, in according to the Old Testament, you can become a Hebrew resident. Uh, and you, if you're a servant, you can, you can become a Hebrew resident, uh, resident. You'll be treated as a Hebrew resident. You have the same rights as a Hebrew resident. So that means that they can't they can't just willfully attack you. They can't let you go. They have to give you wages. All of this stuff, right? So same with the house of God, right? They can't. Like, God can't just let you go. You've become a resident of His household. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, but I, I guess. Um, but I guess also it's like I've noticed this in me, and and this is to the glory of God. I'm not. I'm not. This is nothing I've done. But I've noticed that now when I say I'm on, say, these streams with you or anyone else or when we are in Speaker's Corner, I'm a lot more joyful about what I'm what I talk about, but also more enthusiastic about it, because I guess I know in my heart of hearts, God has saved me. I know in my heart of hearts that's happened. Like, whereas whereas as a Roman Catholic, you don't have that assurance at all. Like, do you know what I mean? And it's actually quite yeah quite depressing to be honest when you don't have it's a depressing shit. reality it's, it's sad and it's just it's devoid of christ's love you can have like, like fair enough you can have this extrinsic view of christ's justice but where's christ's love where he, where is his open hands willing to save you like the whole christ redeemer statue where is that like because ultimately you don't have that you you have to constantly work yourself into a sweat to get to Christ of the Bible. Um, Jason Blake, um, I miss came from Speaker's Corner, proper line. Yeah, he is. And that's why he doesn't believe in a and he's a Calvinist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a bit, yeah. He is a bit. He wouldn't call himself the name, uh, but he definitely is Christian. He is 100% Christian. And he denies prayer to saints. He denies prayers to Mary. He doesn't believe you're Christian if you don't believe in what saved, always saved. That, that's that's what he believes. And he uh, that's just the truth. Like, you cannot lose your salvation according to him. And he's hardened on it. Um, and I'm glad he is. He's, he's truly a brother in the Lord. So if, my friend, if you believe that he is a lion, understand where that comes from. That comes from Christ. Um, and Cain was, Cain was, and he still is a lion for the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm glad that he's a brother in Christ as well. Um, I pray pray for him. Everybody pray for him. Pray that he will, will return um, to speak his corner. But, I mean, if he doesn't, then that's his choice. Um it just is the way it is, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say on that point. Uh, any more comments? I might go in a bit because it's been like four. No, hours. no, I think we've we've. we've... Uh, bro, 
but I guess uh, <laughs> you're quite out a bit there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, no, we've we've said quite a lot tonight, but I guess my at least parting comment would be, um, kind of just echoing what I just said, is that um, you know, Catholics and Orthodox or ecumenicals, you know, come and understand what God has truly done for you. Like, I think it's it's such a harsh reality to realize that actually you don't deserve saving at all. You don't actually deserve it because that's what grace is. So people seem to misunderstand this. But when you really look up what grace is, grace is unmerited favor. It means you didn't deserve it in the first place. And um, you, when you truly realize how amazing the grace of God truly is and what he's actually done for you and the fact that you can have assurance that, yes, I will, you know, go to heaven, etc., that's when you realize how amazing God actually is. When you're when you're stuck in like the Roman Catholic system or the Eastern Orthodox system. Hmm. Um, I know that comment's quite funny. But um <laughs> but, uh, I mean, sorry, sorry, but, Sam. I just it's just so stupid. I just I just have to comment very quickly. Like very few it. people are black in the original Jews. I mean you, you come at the right time, brother. If you want to jump on this stream, let's have a laugh. This is hilarious, actually. But yeah, go on, continue your thought. But no, no, no just, I guess all I'm just trying to say is, uh, you know, maybe you can echo what I'm trying to say, I, I guess. But when you when you truly understand what the gospel is truly about, it's such yeah. it's such a liberating thing. It yeah. really is a liberating thing. Like um, there's no more worries of whether you might, you know, might be saved, might not. There's, n there's none of that stuff. You You have a complete rest and assurance on what happened on the cross. And nothing can move. Yeah. yeah, amen, amen, bro. I'm, I'm sorry for that, man. I just it's all right. That's actually quite funny. That's actually quite funny. That's actually quite funny. It's just the funniest comment. <laughs> it's just the funniest comment of the this is the funniest comment of the week, in fact. We've done two streams. I think this is the funniest comment of the stream, actually. Shark keys, you've got to jump on. This is just some hilarious content, man. Like, man said British black, people, black, black people. people are right, it? <laughs> oh, Who's that? Oh, yeah. British people are black and are the original Jews. That's, oh, my. <laughs> oh, flips it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know Jason Blake, but yeah. Um, sure, it's just a meme. In fact, we've got to put this as a meme. Somebody, somebody just screenshot this right now. Make it a meme. British people are black and the original Jews. <laughs> oh, because it's StreamYard, I can't screenshot it because I'm actually on my phone. Oh, well, seriously, you can't screen. I, I, yeah, I tried to. I tried to then, but it just said uh, StreamYard won't allow it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shark oh, Keys, very quickly, you can join and defend. I don't know what you believe, man. I, I, I don't know what. <laughs> Honestly, I just want you to join for a laugh because this is some madness you're preaching. Uh, I said, I'm going to leave this, the comment up there because this is, it, it's just weird. I don't know. What's your comment on this, son? Do you want my do you want my honest thoughts or my less honest thoughts? <laughs> honest thoughts. I, I don't care about your less honest thoughts. Man. It, it, honest it, thoughts. It, 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 it's retarded. <laughs> yeah, it retarded there, there you go. That's my honest thoughts. <laughs> I mean, first of all, like we look at all the paintings, all the archaeological evidence of who was in England, the pics. Um, the fact that they're called the Angles, England is called Ingoland for a reason because it comes from the Angles, who are German people living in Europe at the time. Um, the out of Africa theory honestly has been debunked, so I'm not going to go there. But uh, the fact that Homo heidelbergensis, Homo heidelbergensis, look this up, uh, a fossilized skeleton is supposed to be fired by a scientist. I'm not claiming that science is right, right about everything, but I'm just claiming, like, if you do like extant biblical study and something. Uh, Homo heidelbergensis is apparently found in Europe um, and it's earlier than the, the, the dating given for the out of Africa theory or the earliest African fossil. Um, so yeah, we have Europeans, um, they have skin colors that were European. Um, in essence, they were whites, they did not look black. Um, black is a term, uh, it's a buzzword really because my ethnicity is not black. My ethnicity would be the um, 
it would just be more than they can die. Why? I feel like I feel like a place now commenting because I'm a white guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you can comment, bro. Look, listen, it's a free country, bro. You're gonna as, as long as you're not racist and say you monkeys didn't come from here. <laughs> you know? No, I would never say something like that. But it's just like you know. What I mean? yeah, man. <laughs> no, I know some dudes who would actually say that. You know, have you heard of Ralph or White Reaction? That's what his name no, is. No, no, I haven't. No. Indian guy used to go to Speaker's Corner. You would have seen him uh, as some KKK influences. He was he was, he was funny when he was at the park. Ralph. Yeah, great hair, Indian guy, bit chubby. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember him now. God, that was a while ago. Yeah, he's literally gone now. I don't know what happened to that girl, that clone. Uh, but he used to hang out with Jamie, and yeah, he he definitely would just openly say that you monkeys weren't from here. Um, uh, sharp keys are you muslim are you an atheist what are you because i've sent the link if you're not come up um yeah well, obviously, obviously if sharp keys doesn't come up within the next what three minutes because i'm tired it's like 12 15 then we're just going to call it a day because uh yeah um but yeah any any what happened to ben bill so do you want me to say or I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll just, I'm not going to say just, that no, you can say no it. got, no it's my it's my place because he's my mate but just simply he just had a change of priorities, basically. Just didn't really want to go to Speaker's Corner anymore. Just didn't want to do apologetics anymore. Like, obviously, I know the more private details, but those are not for me to disclose. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's not for like, me. Like, 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 um, but the point is, is like, yeah, you know, he just doesn't want to do it anymore. It's that simple. I'm a black British Jew. <laughs> yeah, okay. So... Uh... <laughs> You're a black British Jew. Um, you know that doesn't make any logical. I mean, I mean, come on. In this day and age, of course, we have a mixture of haplotypes. Fine, but again, so are you religiously Jew or are you ethnically Jew? Because there's no such thing as a British Jew ethnically. You're either Jewish. I mean, look, you could be half half British, I, I, I guess, or you could be a British citizen of Jewish descent, but. It's like for me, it's like, for example, I'm I'm black British technically, because uh, I was born here, but my nationality stems from like Jamaica, Ireland, stuff like that, and yeah, uh, generally speaking, I would be a mix. Um, it's just it, it's weird to claim I'm a black British Jew. Are you are, are you religiously Jew then? So you affirm the Torah? Um, are you do uh, agree with the Talmud? Are you Hasidic Jew? What are you, bro? You have to let me know. I'm nice and simple. I'm just, I'm just three court, three quarters Welsh, one court, one quarter English. <laughs> I, I'm just Sam, man. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just Sam. Yeah, yeah, nice just, and just, I'm just Sam. Nice and simple. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm a mixed breed, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm like a half course, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, that's actually. I like how you just said that, and yet a lot of like genuinely racist people use that as like a, a racial slang kind of thing. Yeah, it yeah. still is a racial slang, in fact. Um, uh, well, it's, it, my mother got called it a lot when she was younger because she's proper, like, you know, mixed race. Uh, it is a racial term, to be fair. I'm a black Hebrew. Uh, so so you're a BHI, you're black Hebrew, is right? Do you want to jump on this stream or not? What's going on? Because I've sent you a link, like, five times now. You're not jumping on. Um, what you have to do is uh, copy and then paste the link uh, but if you don't that, do that in the next three minutes, I, just, I said three minutes ages ago, but yeah, three minutes. If you don't do it, then I'm going to have to call it quits. Um, Sila, if you want to jump on the stream, instead of spouting off that we have three gods, I don't know why you Muslims still, to this day, to this day, think we have three gods when we told you have one. Your own Quran says we have one God. So 29, 46 says we have one God. It says literally the Christians have one God. So why are you saying we have three? Nowhere does the Quran say we have three gods. It says say, say not three. What does that imply? Nobody knows, because uh, Allah didn't know the Trinity. How is it loving for three gods to take the... Oh, come on, man. We've already done this. Uh, Simon Patterson. Um, okay, so he's put gay stuff on there. Yeah, he's he's opened up gay porn. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, banned. Okay, so there was some guy that basically... What, what happened there? What happened yeah, there? So on my side, there was a guy who wanted to show um, porn, right? You will not convert by it. So basically, um, in StreamYard, for anybody who doesn't know, um, you can I can basically see the control panel. So I know who goes up and who, who 
who doesn't? Um, and this person basically had on his screen open a bit of the old gay stuff. <laughs> okay, Simon Patterson, you're banned for life because um, nobody wants to watch that, dude. Uh, oh, right. man. The internet <laughs> really is so weird and wonderful no, place. Sam, do you know what I remember? What that guy said in in um, Leicester Square. Do you remember what that guy said? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah repeat, 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 repeat. What you want me to repeat it? Yeah, just repeat it, bro. Right, uh, you, you, you don't you don't want to get your donut glazed by another man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, the thing bro, is, he, it, said, he said that without any prompting from anyone. You just came out with it. That was the best part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, but you don't want to get your donut glazed by now. Oh, oh, it's so nasty. But it, uh, but it, yeah, no, on. I'm just saying that that was that was genuinely the best part was he said it without any prompting from anyone, didn't he? He just he just yeah. randomly just said it. <laughs> that was the best part. Just, it? <laughs> you don't want to get your do donut glazed by no man. And that was a Christian, by the way. I mean, you shouldn't anyway. You should not get your donut glazed by another man. Sharp keys. If you're watching this sort of gay stuff, my friend, I'll, I'll call you to repentance because Jews would have had you killed according to the Old Testament. Um, Leviticus, for example, 18. Um, the Lord calls these things abom abominations. And at the end of the chapter, um, these things are worthy of death. So you would have been stung to death by watching this gay stuff and engaging in this gay stuff, my friend. You can't, you can't be doing that, man. Uh, what is an R1B haplogroup? group? I don't have time for that, man. I know what you're trying to say. Um, it's you ethno-nationalists with your nonsense. I had to deal with this with uh, bloody stupid Ralph. I don't care. White supremacy is a lie, just like black supremacy is a lie. It's all a lie. Get over it. There's neither Jew, nor Greek, nor black, nor white, for we're all one in Christ. I kind of butchered what, the scriptures what, there, but yeah. What, 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 why do people try and make race an issue? It's like, they're like just a... Just a what's his name uh morgan morgan freeman said it brilliantly once he was, he was asked by an interviewer he's like how do we stop racism you just go stop talking about it <laughs> stop talking about it yeah yeah uh, like, why, it's, no exactly but also it's just like why why do why do people have to make stuff a race issue i just don't, don't, don't get it no I don't, I don't like it when uh specific blacks make race like a, a defining thing for example but like, have you heard of like these individuals who go into like Hollywood and like change the the ethnicity of certain um, medieval characters? Like, what is it? Catherine of Aragon is now a black woman. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no, that. she was she was white, man. Just deal with it. <laughs> uh, well, it was like it was like um, what was it? You, I'm not sure if there's any anyone who's particularly a video gamer, but there was that video game, uh, The Witcher. And that got a load of that got a load of uh, BS because it was um, because there wasn't one like sort of black character in the whole game. But the point was, it was based in Poland. <laughs> you get what I mean? It's based oh, in Poland. Really cool. So, like, it's it's not really going to have any black people in it, is it? You get what I mean? <laughs> you got backlash. But not only one black character based in Poland. I mean, oh man, that that makes me laugh. I can imagine just the outrage if somebody comes up and says it's based in Poland, guys. What, what do you expect? Uh, it's like it's like it's just like doing a game. It's like doing a game for Nigeria or Cambodia and just having a ton of white dudes walking around. Yeah, exactly. The machine goes in. I'm going to shoot you down now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's just like why can't you just represent things accurately as as they were kind of thing? Do you know what I mean? Like why can't you do that? Yeah, just represent them accurately. Like I don't mind watching a film full. Of, in fact, there's some great programs of video games that just have white people in them, and it's fine. Uh, yeah. there's, there's but as long as it's but as long as it's accurate to it, isn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it would be weird if you made a game that was, say, set in Africa and then all the characters were white or something. That would be weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, you yeah, get what I'm trying. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would, it would. It would be weird. Now, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, heretics in the chat. I don't know. Well, not a lot. There's uh, God bless, saved by grace. Uh, there's a few people in the chat now, but we're probably going to end it because it's been like four hours. Um, yeah. Uh, Jake, Jake, Jake Green, just read Amos. Um, in fact, let me just get that up on the screen just to uh, respond to Jake quickly. Uh, <laughs> say by grace, say it said, be like having a white Martin Luther King. 
I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream. <laughs> Who are some brats? Oh no, man. Oh, yeah. My four little children. <laughs> my four little white children. <laughs> my four white children. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't work contextually either. It's like my four little white children with papers. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. destroys that speech altogether, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um there's a there's a line in Amos. I don't know why I've forgotten that line in Amos. Um uh, uh, yeah, the words punish you for iniquity, da, 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 blowing streams and stuff like that. Does anybody do you know that line in um, Amos where it says about three days? Um, no, I'm gonna be very honest. The book of Amos is not one I'm very well read on, to be very, I'm just be honest about that one. Oh, it was in the video. My bad. Let me play that video actually. It's on our channel. Um, it was in that video we did of Siraj. Um, let me get up because that not, yeah not, that'll, not, be, that'll not, be my point. Not freaking Siraj, like yeah, freaking Siraj, man. Uh, it was the George R. Binks one. Um, yeah, that was Siraj waste man. He said this prophecy is in Old Testament. Show me that prophecy, false prophecy of Jesus. He prophesied according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter twenty-four. <laughs> he said. Jesus gave false prophecy and false signs. He said what? He said, as is prophecy. Can I ask, who's a Star Wars fan then? Uh, it's me. I, I just I just looked at Siraj and I knew he was Jar Jar Binks. Like, he literally Mate, is Jar Jar Binks. No, based. I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, even, even I thought of it. Like, we're, we're like Jedi storming. And you got you got to take that into account, even though Jedi is a religion that I don't subscribe to. It's dumb. But anyway, we're like Jedi's. When we go into Hyde Park, we're like Jedi's, bro. Trust me, we've taken down the um the Sith and the Sith have dominated for so long. But yeah, just remember that. But yeah. Show me that prophecy <laughs> from Old Testament. All right, good, thank you. So now he is done. I will never ever speak <laughs> <in> <laughs> <a> <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you very much. Show Are you done right now? Prophecy. Are you done right now? New Testament into the Old Testament. Are you Sorry. done right now? Show okay, good. Now. now. Yeah, so this is it. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may have, live in his presence. So it's kind of a nod to the resurrection because it says on the third day, he will restore us. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. And that's what Christ does when he reconciles us. Through the cross, of course, he takes on the, our punishment of sin and death so that we don't have to and reconciles us to the Father and restores us that we may live in his presence. So yeah, there's the, there's the quote, Hosea 6, 1 to 2. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, it's hilarious, but yeah. Um, yeah, Bob is Palpatine, I don't care. Bob is literally Palpatine. You know, there's no denial about that. Um, definitely not kind of, uh, just, just to the dark side. <laughs> Come to the dark side of ecumenism. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like no, it's like, no, it's like uh, it's like the haters made you strong. <laughs> yes, I'm a, uh, yes, I'm a Star Wars geek as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Jake uh, Green, yeah. Um, there's, no, there's no assumption. Okay, so there's no assumption that this is specifically talking about Israel. Like the third day, he restores us that we may live in his presence. Even if he is talking about Israel, we know that there's, the church is the spiritual Israel. That's evidently clear. Uh, because those Gentiles will be grafted in um, Hebrews 11. So, I mean, don't make jokes, mate. It doesn't help you. Um, read the Bible properly. Uh, stop taking the Bible out of context. But I've showed you the passage. So what does the third day mean? What does what does the two days and what does the third day mean? Uh, both you and Siraj are making the same comments. So you don't even know how to back it up. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to leave it there because it's a bit late. And I don't want to keep you, Sam. No, it's all right. It's been fun, though, isn't it? It's been fun. Yeah, it has been. It's been funny. I mean, any closing comments about that um, that uh, Bob White thing we did? Because uh, obviously the, we didn't really. Much I think I think no. I think no. I think that it does show also because you've got to keep in mind now the context of that video. I was a full blown papist. No, not an ecumenist, but I was a full blown papist. And you were like, 
you were still somewhat ecumenical at the time, weren't you? Somewhat. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I think you were start. But I think you were starting to like realize what was going on. You you were just wake up. Yes. Yeah, you were. Start- you were you were starting to realize what was going on and so that proves that like god can convict you and i think one of the ways he does that is through this through the scripture to be honest because like that was what convicted me in the end out of roman catholicism like don't get me wrong i remember the very first thing that got me thinking was reading calvin's institutes in particular his objections to the roman church don't get me wrong that got my mind ticking a little bit but it wasn't until i actually buried my head in the bible that i realized yeah i'm wrong on this i'm completely wrong on this mm. Mm. Uh, you know that, uh, so that that just proves that it can it can happen that's my point it can happen, it can happen. and for people watching that can happen the lord changes our hearts he indwells us and those who seek him will find him as sam has uh, seeked after him the lord is indwelled in his heart and the lord's not left him alone uh and if you are a catholic or a uh, Eastern Orthodox, or even an atheist, as you are, sharp keys. Um, obviously, seek the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I say. Um, British people are genetically, racially, and linguistically the direct descendants of the ten lost tribes of. The... Okay, I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Just leave it there. Leave it there, man. Just leave it there. Leave, no, it, leave there. it there, man. I don't know what. <laughs> My man came up with uh, porn, and I was talking about British people being uh, the lost tribe. Uh, yeah. Good night. Um, uh, see you guys later. Uh, I'm well, go. God bless. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> God bless, yes.